In the hood, no, we ain't had much, but we made something out of nothing. And I remember being at school and I ain't had no lunch, but I made something out of nothing. Me and my brother saved every little dime we had to keep the lights in the water running. But that's okay, cause sometimes in life, you gotta make something out of nothing. Something out of nothing. In the hood, no, we ain't had much, but we made something out of nothing. And I remember being at school and I ain't had no lunch, but I made something out of nothing. Me and my brother saved every little dime we had to keep the lights in the water running, but that's okay. Cause sometimes in life, you gotta make something out of nothing. Something out of nothing. Something out of nothing. Something out of nothing. Cause sometimes in life, you gotta make sense. 
hype on the track. track.
chase you down All I can find is you again Thought I finally shut you down But it was my reflection Today we hear from expert Samantha Bradshaw. What you threaten for?
have the guts anymore Hit me like a truck and I fell to the floor You don't get anymore I couldn't feel the hit and run if you settled the score I think I wanna punch you I really, really want to You talking at me like I know what you mean I made a mistake Could you give me something to respond to? You don't have the guts anymore You were playing with your gun sword And it door What's your best side? Give me anyone else I'll be your back but You can't get over yourself And you can set your function So can we skip the introductions? The only time that I'm the girl of your dreams Is when you're in your face There's another white boy with a concussion Everybody's dead and it's all my fault
Autonauta y amenaza, necesita volar. La estrella que tan lejos y le gusta gozar. Que le gusta brillar, me ayuda a olvidar. Que este mundo tiene miedo, no saben vacilar. Me dijeron que tú sabes, que tú sabes qué hacer. Que tú tienes el cerebro y tú sabes mantener. Que tú no tienes miedo de tener todo poder. Me da que necesito para llegar a otro nivel. Dice por la calle que te tiene un cohete. Vamos al espacio que la fiesta si comete. La tierra es aburrida, tengo nada de qué hacer.
free from the chains. So let's fly, let's move fly away. Move to the sky, look at that place where your dreams fit in and I'll on myself so free by the end of the day. That's all I pray. No karma, my future, go harder. I feel righteous, it's like armor. Cause I'm done with the devil in fraud. I see my design kindly.
We're coming to you live from Sao Paulo, Brazil, for the finale of the first major VCT event of 2023. I'm your host, Yingsu, and I'm joined by Mimi and Achilles on the desk. Guys, we've been in Brazil for so long, and this is the last day it's coming to an end. It's fantastic to get to see this grand final. We have the entire arena open for today. It's not even the show match yet, and already it is so filled up in here. I mean, they're just showing fan signs, and everyone's going absolutely crazy in the stands at the moment. <laughs> so once we get the players out here, even for the show match, it's going to be incredibly loud in this arena and then once the teams come out for the final it's gonna the roof is gonna get blown off this well, place as you guys mentioned there is a show match coming up between team Tarek and team frt and following that we're gonna be moving on to our best of five grand finale between loud and fanatic but first i think it's time to make this show match extra interesting because we're about to reveal a brand new agent and you'll get to see them in action on stage right behind me so without further ado do, it is my pleasure to introduce Gecko. Shoot. Yeah, yeah, Sick, right? They lose that.
Y el caos puede ser hermoso. Chill, chill. We're good. Ay, ¿por qué eres así de tenebrosa? Calm down, mijos. Soy yo. Mm, adoro tu cabello. Oh, yeah. Thanks, yeah. It felt like a vibe, you know? I kind of like it. I mean, it was super, super green when the first one in. Like, my mom was freaking out. So there I got it. What a reveal! I swear the devs, they just keep outdoing themselves. Achilles, he looks so cool. He does, and I just can't wait to see how it's actually going to be played. You can just run around playing Pikmin in Valorant. You got these little minions that can do things for you. I'm excited to see what the abilities are actually going to look like. Yeah, his friends look so cool. His whole aesthetic is awesome. I, I'm just so excited to see how it works. Maybe Reino back in the meadow with Gecko. I feel like that was a <laughs> bit of a hint there. And you guys mentioned the abilities. So for a closer look at Gecko and what he actually brings to the game, let's hear from Ryan Coussard, Asian gameplay designer on the Valorant characters team. Hello, everybody. Yeah, Brennan Saitro here, joined with a very, very exclusive interview of Ryan Kusar, the game designer behind the new <laughs> agent, Gecko, that's due to be released pretty soon. And yeah, thank you very much for joining us, Ryan. You know, I know you've just flown in recently straight into, into <laughs> Brazil. So yeah, thank you for your time. Yeah, no, it's, I'm, I'm stoked to be here. It's like I've always wanted to do some of the stuff with you guys, so it's cool <laughs> to be on here. Well, let's talk about the abilities. The first one I think that we want to talk about is Mosh Pit, right? Yeah, this, this, Mosh Pit. Uh, this ability, <laughs> you know, heavy clearance. It looks yeah. really, really Really quite powerful as well in the right hands as well. So there's going to be a lot of similarities to Chaos Fragment, um, but it's going to be more of an approachable, like it's going to be um, a very nice zone that it covers. It gives you a lot of time to kind of run out of it and a lot of yes, time to react, yeah. but it is going to kind of give you a, a pretty big zone. And, and so um, it does crazy awesome. damage too, right? It does. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's very similar to like um, Breach's Fusion Blast. So um, if you don't get out of it, you, you know, it, it's deadly uh, to the center. So. so that is one of the abilities. That is the only ability that you can't go and pick back up again as well. Well, Mosh is still trying to figure it out. Like <laughs> uh, the other ones, you know, they're a little more grown. He's just a, a little baby trying to figure it out. Right, right. OK, yeah, I see, sense. I see. Mosh, you know, it's for all, you know, listen, Mosh, we love Mosh, but <laughs> not the signature ability of Gecko. In fact, that's a that's a different ability, right? That's Dizzy. Right. Yeah, that's right. So so the signature that we have, kind of the bread and butter, the, the initiator tool um, is going to be Dizzy. So Dizzy is what you're using kind of round to round. It's more of like a versatile tool to be able to clear like mid, some short uh, and long range angles to compete with some of our other initiators. Um, but it, it definitely has like a lot of different ways to, to kind of counterplay to um, and different ways to kind of change how you take spaces compared to some of the other initiators. And, and it is kind of similar to some other abilities in that it blinds your opponent, but it works right. in quite a different way, right? Right, yeah, we wanted to try something that was a little less, um, like it kind of obfuscates your screen a little bit less, gives you a little easier of a time to kind of maneuver around. Right. Um, but it also has a lot of like downsides and a lot of trade-offs to it. Like, it, it can kind of get shot and mitigate a lot of the, the area there. Um, but the idea there was kind of creating like like, um, a breaking tool that's a little more approachable um, for, for like, you know, all, all players. Right. But talk to me a bit more about, so you're an opponent, you, there's a uh, dizzy coming towards you, right. you shoot the dizzy, it's now on the floor, and the gameplay loop is kind of that the gecko can go and retrieve that for right. another dizzy in like 10 seconds time. Right. Do, do you see a lot of the gameplay loop being around like fighting for those abilities, almost like people fight around alt orbs now? Yeah, so it's in a similar way that you can kind of like play around a lot of Killjoy's utility where you hear the turret, then the this, this strategy comes in. It's like, okay, so now we hear the turret, what do we what do we do next? Same thing with, with Dizzy. Once the reclaim, um, or once the globule is, is created, there's a couple seconds there where you really have to fight for it. It becomes like a mini objective, yeah, similar yeah. to some of the ultimate orbs that you see. Yeah. Um, and so we figured um, kind of creating a power space and kind of creeping your way forward and trying this new style of, uh, or this new pacing of, of initiative play was going to be interesting, so yeah. we'll just have to find out if it is. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so my favorite ability that we play tested so far Guys, has okay. to be the wingman, right? Because yeah. we, me and Josh are playing it. running. He constantly. is running, he is yeah. sprinting, but that is such a unique ability as well in terms of the way it plays out. Very yeah. similar to some of us in terms of Boombot and everything else, but yeah, I'll let you explain it and take it away. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, wingman is, is kind of your, your friend that helps you clear these faces, there's gonna be like the close to mid range, running runs forward, parkours all over the place. <laughs> um, as soon as it sees an enemy, it'll jump up and then kind of like 
clap its hands together and do this like huge concussive bark. Um, so there's like a cone of area that it, it affects and anyone in that cone is, is uh, concussed. Yeah, nice. But that's not the only thing that's special about, about Wingman, right? Because <laughs> there is a very unique feature. You guys are really pushing the envelope in terms of how the game is developed with the mechanics and that's Wingman who's got like this alt fire, right? Right, yeah. yeah. So one of the things we wanted to try, you know, and, and the whole theme of like power and numbers kind of thing, um, we wanted to uh, allow Wingman to also kind of steal the spike from you yeah. and also <laughs> run with it uh, and, and plant the spike itself. Yeah. You know? So um, as it's playing the spike, you can be covering it. Um, and on the flip side, on defense, um, if you're kind of in these 1v1s, these, these 1v2s, you can send Wingman to defuse the spike as well, and you can cover Wingman as opposed to, you know, someone having yeah. to cover you. It's a really unique interaction, but also, if Wingman goes down on his intrepid venture towards the spike, <laughs> he, he just abandons it in it's enemy gone. territory, right? Yeah, so yeah. You do have to be a bit careful in terms of how it's yeah, used. Absolutely, yeah. 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 The final ability, the ultimate that we want to talk about, which is the, you know, the big the big one, honestly, the big right. one. Quite scary to see it run at you <laughs> in the server as well. Yeah, that's yeah. Thrash, yeah. yeah. So Thrash is Gecko's ultimate, you equip Thrash, you'll see a cool little animation of it swimming around. Once you cast it, you possess Thrash. Thrash swims around and, and um, clears space pretty rapidly, as you guys are sure have seen. Once you explode or once you lunge and explode onto an enemy, there's a, a big radius that um, is detained. So any player caught <laughs> is detained. Yeah, it's it looks really fun to play. Yeah. And I'm just looking forward to seeing some of the content creators play it here in Sao Paulo, seeing people get their hands on it as well. You must be looking forward to it. Yeah, it's going to be a blast. I think there's only like so much we can do ourselves and, and kind of like, you know, when we're playing, there's only so much we can see. Yeah. Uh, and so as soon as it hits live and as soon as like the content creators really get their hands on it, you're, we're going to see some, yeah. some pretty cool videos, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's going to do it for the interview as well. Thank you very much. Oh, for awesome. Mine. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. it, man. Yeah. Thank you and, so much. Uh, and thanks for the time. Hope you enjoy Sao Paulo. Hope you enjoy the games as well. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Yeah. All right. We'll send it back. Thank you very much, Brent Saisho and Ryan Mimi. I can't wait to play him. What did you make of his abilities? It's going to be so cool. I feel like there's so much potential that you can do with all of them, especially the mechanic of being able to recover your friends after using it. It's so unique compared to the other agents we have in the game. Uh, you could defuse spikes and everything. It's crazy. It's, that's it's nuts. so cute. He's going to send out this little guy and just have it help, uh, have that happen. I, this is going to be wild to see in the hands of the pros. We get to have friends in Valorant, guys. Finally. <laughs> Finally. Uh, well, let's put this to uh, the audience. I want to know what you guys at home think. Which uh, of Gecko abilities are you most excited to see for me it is wingman hands down make sure you use the qr code uh, to scan it and cast your vote now and we'll reveal the result in a little bit and also make sure to use the hashtags vct lock-in and vct so we can feature some of your tweets on a broadcast and uh, your thoughts and so on we want to hear it uh, i'm gonna rig the vote towards wingman i'm not gonna i don't, I don't know think what you, you need think. to he's adorable <laughs> yeah. yeah i think i'd have to vote for for dizzy having to pick up your scouting utility in the flash it's gonna be really really Cool. Yeah, it's going to be really cool indeed. Uh, but now we've met Gecko. Uh, let's 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 see him in action in the We'd show match to. in a little bit because I know the teams are definitely going to play him. And speaking of the show match, let's check out the rosters of these squads. Let's start with Team Tarek. Of course, Tarek was one of the best in his game before Valorant. He won a lot of uh, tournaments and trophies. It's been a while, Mimi, since we've seen him compete on stage. But this team, they have two. No, three if you count Tarek, world champions. Yeah, there is quite a lot of experienced players on this roster, especially with Mimi, who just won Game Changers champion. CNET, of course, now competing with Na'Vi, some big players there. Tarek leading the charge. And then you get a couple content creators as well, who they themselves are pretty high ranked, I think, in the Immortal to Radiant range. Well, they're going to be going up against Team FRT. They were kind of bantering back and forth already, Seth, between yeah. Tarek and FRT. But this roster is also incredibly stacked. I mean, just look at some of the, the big names that you have here. As far as the, the VCT pros, you've got SK Rossi, you've got Pankata, you've got Sugetsu. There is so much firepower on this squad that I have to be a little bit concerned for Team Tarek because while they do have all of those champions, there's a hell of a lot of talent here for FRT. Yeah, back when Tarek was a pro, FRT was a pro as well. So both of these rosters, super stacked. It's going to be so exciting to watch. Who do you guys think is going to take it? Who are you favoring? I would favor Team FRT. I got to go for FRT as well. They got SK Rossi, especially if he's playing Duelist. Oh, oh, boy. We didn't get to see it in this match. I'm hoping it happens here in the show match. I definitely want to see it. Now, we've got a brand new agent and two absolutely clouted teams <laughs> ready to play and some world champions as well. So let's not waste any more time and welcome Team Tarek and Team FRT to the stage.
region, which I think the team captains uh, will be the ones to select it. Yeah, I'm really excited to see what these teams have cooked up with Gecko. Being able to see his uh, reveal there, did they have some kind of combination, some kind of strategy? It's going to be such a great first look. It's all going to be about who has the best initial grasp, because these guys have not had that much time to really get their minds wrapped around, and he's got a very different kit compared to every other agent in Valorant, so it's not like you could just very easily swap over to this and fall into it. So I'm curious to see who has the best read on how to pilot this new agent. I believe they've had a little bit of time as well with their teams to kind of practice what's happening, and it looks like the, uh, the map we're going to be playing on is Lotus. Mimi, there's going to be some techie stuff that you can do here. Yeah, initial thoughts on this one. On that defensive side, you have a lot of long control on both extremities, where I think that Gecko's utility can be really useful. You send one of your friends down to scout early on, like you can just like have a wingman run down, stun someone on the defense. <laughs> there's so much potential here. I mean, we saw that Lotus a couple of times in the highlights there of his ability, so yeah, I think there's going to be plenty of applications for it as we get into the Prime Gaming Agent Select. I'm really curious to see what these guys have ready to go against one another. Obviously, I want to see Rossi on that jet. Yeah. We see a highlight, but on Lotus, once so he shocked it, the duelist comes out for the race. <laughs> and okay, we're getting silly. We got to talk to Ryan a little bit. He was really big enough the fact that Harbor as well as Gecko could be a really insane combination with the Cove and Wingman. To They're doing it. Bike. That seems like Team FRT's strategy. Yeah, it does look like it. And we're going to get Sino versus Rossi on the jet. This is a cataclysmic clash of jet players that I cannot wait to see. This alongside Gecko, piloted by both of these team captains, should make for an excellent show match. I, I can't wait to see this and see what's going to unfold and introduce you guys to your casters for today. Doug and Bala are joined by Ryan to take you guys through Lotus. Hey guys, I'm Ryan. Um, you may not know who I am, or I don't look familiar, but I want to talk to you about my guests. I got Doug. <laughs> I got the, the guest casters here. I got I got Bala. How you guys doing, man? Good, man. I'm glad we're your guests. Thank you for inviting yeah, us. Thank you for letting That's us join you on this desk. The best of the best only for the release. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it looks so sick already. We got the crowd involved, and yeah. they're hyped for both sides. Yeah. I can't wait to see this because they were, I mean, just seeing the reactions on their faces while we were watching the trailer, it must feel really special for you and your team to see actually it get revealed today. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So it, it was like a, a whole number of people. It's like the biggest effort I think we've had sure. uh, on the Valorant side for an agent. And so I think it's like a huge team, a huge team effort to just kind of see all the stuff. And, and yeah, there we go. Let's get into this. And you know, the funny thing is too, is when you, when you think of a new agent, people often, even us who kind of have an inside view of things, have no idea <laughs> how much goes into something like <laughs> right, this. Right, right. And I'm right away excited to see how these guys use Wingman. I mean, that was what the dust was talk yeah. talking about, but like, can they get plants down? Can they actually make this thing work? They're gonna go for it right off the bat, I think. That's a, that's that's the wrong ability. There's Wingman <laughs> coming out. Uh, honestly, I just want to see him go try to plant. There he goes. goes. There he's adorable. The boop, 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 boop. Oh, oh no! no! Come on! Not play, Wingman. <laughs> Yeah, I, this is what I was saying too, is uh, Lotus is great for, you know, the B plants, uh, it tends to be a little scarier, right? Like, you kind of put your body on the line. With a couple smokes, and um, a couple smokes or a couple flashes to kind of help uh, Wingman in, the plant becomes a lot safer and um, you just have to worry about the retake. Yeah, I just love that they go for it right away. I'm Looks like there might be a little bit more tweaking to the strategy right <laughs> off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see him succeed though. I'm going to be really disappointed if he just dies every round. Oh, me? No, I think I'm gonna... Okay, Sino going through as well. It's 3v2 right now. They're trying to recover it, but uh, once that spike is down, you, you see the danger. You see how yeah. it's not just, okay, this guy can go plant and you get a free round win. There's a danger to it. Yeah, and Ryan, I know you mentioned this somewhat in the interview previously, but I, I want to just go ahead and talk about it again. This is perfect timing. So explain to me how that works. Wingman dies, and yeah. then I saw a little a little blob sitting out on the site. What, what is that? What do you do with that? Do you interact with it? How does this work? Yeah, so when, um, when Dizzy, Wingman, or Thrash, they die, shot, or time out, they'll turn into this little globule, like a dormant version of themselves. What a good word. Um, <laughs> globule. <laughs> I have to practice that one. Um, and yeah, so they can reclaim it, you grab it, you got 10 seconds, and you can cast it again. Got it. So you're really interested in, in I mean, trying to farm that as much as you can, surely. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, what we're going to see on Gecko is, there's a lot of different pacing, like I was kind of mentioning earlier. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of stuff. You see where the defaults become stronger, or you know, working with your team to re get those reclaims, the longer you can last, the, the stronger you're going to be. 
And you saw actually FRT there try to use Dizzy to clear some space out of A main. And it didn't quite work out. Speaking of Dizzy. Here he goes again. So is he, what is he doing right there? Is it, is it scanning? What's going on? Because there's a noise going on at the same time. Yeah, so as soon as Dizzy comes out, kind of activates, you'll see these little like uh, energy radiant, uh, radiant uh, tentacles come out, start scanning. Uh, as soon as it sees an enemy in line of sight, it will fire off the oh. plasma blast. So there's, there's a recon element to it. Sure. That's really strong, it feels like. Maybe. <laughs> that is really strong. Mimi's really strong, too. Let me yeah. ask you this. I also just saw as Dizzy was, was sent out into the abyss that round, he bounced off the wall. Is oh, there yeah. a, is, so there is some of that to it, right? You can bounce it off the wall to get cheeky angles? Yeah, yeah, you can um, you can kind of mix it up. It, it's so, uh, Dizzy is able to get shot, 20 HP, uh, almost any gun one shots it. I think everyone one shots it. Sure. Uh, so you kind of want to style it, you know, like you want to try different ways of, of throwing it, either like um, out wide or yeah. off a wall and just kind of like a pop um, or, you know, it, it, it's, it's, like, it's like a high risk, high reward. The, the farther yeah. you throw it, you know, um, the better the coverage. Let's see it again. There we go. Look at him go. Oh, there's, I don't think there's a flash that went out there. Yo, that play. Oh, he's coming back. They just traded both of the dizzies. I want to see what, the, what it looks like when you get gooped, when you get <laughs> globuled. Show me the POV of that. <laughs> That was insane. Sir, Sir Mata did the uh, Omen TP as yeah. Dizzy was going. That was sick. Yeah. Capitalizing on it. And, and he actually avoided Dizzy entirely, the enemy's Dizzy. Right, yeah. Yeah, we're going to start naming these Dizzies. Dizzy 1, Dizzy 2, or something. <laughs> Attack side Dizzy. Defense side Dizzy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting Dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, no, uh, no gecko action for the rest of this round. But FRT do need it. They need it. They need a round here. You don't want to get blown out in your first show match hey, ever. Mimi's still alive. Actually, two world, three world champions alive right now in this show match. <laughs> it's actually insane how stacked these rosters are. Ooh. Funny part is I thought we were going to have some fun with this show match. <laughs> they're too good, man. <laughs> they're too good, and I don't think you can with the crowd like this. See that? Oh. He's so weak. Two. Oh, but I don't think he knows where he is. That He's got the dash <laughs> proc, too. <laughs> they needed a round, and there you go. All because of the trade all the way back in a main. Also, very quickly, I know that this is supposed to be about Gecko, but I also just saw the Oni, the Oni Katana. Oh, there it out. is, there it is. And that's just so freaking sick, man. <laughs> I will pay Riot right now from this desk. I need, I need the Katana. Yeah, that, um, the team worked really hard on that. The Katana was insane. The Oni, you know, it's something that players have been asking for, and they absolutely killed it. They spent so much, so much time and love on that thing, and, and you see it here, you know, it's, it's so, so sick. I also realized we just trolled the, the viewers at home. They didn't get to see the katana they, just end the no. way we did. <laughs> Unlucky. Trust us, there it is. It's sick. Of course, Tarek jumps on the opportunity. So they can reclaim that now. And right. You can actually see a little red dot on the minimap as well where that is. Yeah, so uh, uh -huh. one of one of the strengths of Dizzy is you know taking some of that staging ground. You have Ooh. you have your other initiators like breached using concuss or flashes, and, and those don't regenerate. Yeah, right. you're able to take these staging spaces and, and kind of have plays like this where you can grab it. So I just saw I had a 10 second cooldown. Wingman just ran in to clear space for SK Rossi right there. Loop 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 loop. Here we go. Op's still in the hands of Cena too. He's got blades and SK Rossi's farming, bro. He's farming. Somebody stop this man. Oh, he's going for it. Overheat. Overheat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, he, that's a lot of discipline. Dude, Mimi. I don't think Mimi has lost a gunfight yet. No, I mean, <laughs> just in that last clutch. Yeah, one of the reasons why um, I love Harbor uh, match with Gecko is you, the, the cove is so flexible. You can either use it to protect Wingman from Planting, diffusing, or from um, or from like crossing, you know, you can cross space with it. Yeah. Uh oh. Bella again against it's CNET again with the Oppo. With the Oppo, 60 HP. Surely not. Now trust. Trust. Pros no fake. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that almost happened. And he's taunting across the stage too. Is he popping off a little bit? <laughs> 
things you love to see. That is so much fun. That's now two. We, we're going to have to keep tabs on that because that's two times that CNET has lost a clutch yep. in a 1v1. Yep. Back to back, too. Here we go. Here's the, here's the reclaim I was talking about. So taking that staging space and then like yeah. reclaiming it for the side take. Ten seconds on that cooldown is what I saw. Yeah, that, is, like that feels fast to me. That feels so fast. <laughs> I, surely you guys have stress tested this. How, how many dizzies can you get in a round? The most we had in like one of our gameplay analysis yeah. uh, games was uh, I think seven. <laughs> yeah, I counted. I, I asked them. I said, "Hey, can you uh, can you count how many you cast?" And we looked at the combat report. And it was seven. And caught it in trouble as <laughs> all of Tarek's team tries to take mid, and they harbor wall all the way through. Spike's not on Gecko right now, so you can't do anything with teammates passing the spike to wingman or anything like that, right? It's just only if you have the spike as Gecko. Right, so to actually do the wingman plant or defuse, or actually for the plant, sorry, um, you have to have the bomb equipped. He takes it right off your back yep. and runs with it. So he can't pick it up. He can't, like, walk over it. If it's down somewhere in no man's land, he can't no. walk over it, pick it up, and then plant it. That's the scariest oh, part. If you send there's three wing... players detained, sorry. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. What a thrash. I still don't, yeah. Oh, give him the ace. Give him the ace! Yes, Let's go! Out. The crowd's having a good time. <laughs> Pancada is, too. That's the type of thing you want to see. SK Rossi went for it. Pancada again. Yeah, we'll that see if they try to do some more of those wingman plants, because I think it is scary. You lose the spike if you're kind of, you know, yeah. sending it in. Um, so I think they're, they're kind of playing a little bit safe, but I'm sure we'll still have to see a couple of strats come in here soon. I can't wait to see one of these wing or one of these geckos get their their ults online. The thrash. Yeah, me too. Yeah. It's like it, I mean, is it? A, it's like a shark, basically. That's how I, yeah. what I saw. It was. Yeah, we just saw it. See, the the, the four uh, you know four player yeah. detail looks insane, but it, it, you do need to capitalize on it. FRT just got his online. Uh oh. That's the I voice want to see line, it. like too. That's yeah. Wild. Wait, what does he say? <laughs> Well, we're not going to find out this round. Mimi once again just farming FRT. Oh, that was my fault. It was the kill droid detain. That <laughs> what is the voice line? For which? The uh, Thresh. What's the goal? Do you oh, remember? Gosh. Oh, yeah. All right, don't toss, actually. Don't toss. <laughs> I, 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 I want to experience oh, it for the oh, first I time. <clears throat> Maz on the flank. Pankata again. I mean. Yeah, but he's weak. He's weak. He's weak. Penk I mean, Maz is good, but. <laughs> Pancada and Rossi, these guys are just playing in a tournament, Bro. okay? Let's see it. There's no trust, Bala. You've got to trust. He found him. Look at him run. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, that's good stuff. I respect the effort. I respect the effort. That I was an attempt. content attempt. <laughs> yeah, well, that was an attempt. Omen players be like... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Mimi is dominating. So many times I'm like, okay, FRT, you got a chance to do something. Mimi's just like, no. Pause. <laughs> All right, we may, get, we may get the Thresh here from FRT. We'll see. Oh, they're grouping. Tarek's team is grouping. Uh-oh. Oh, my please, gosh. Please, uh, please, please, please. Thresh gets five here. Thrash gets five. There he goes. Look at him. Look at him go. Bloop, 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 bloop. Clear space. So... They're stunned because Wingman just saw them, right? Right, right. So uh, there was two that were hidden. They didn't get, but the other two that were on the side of that cone did get concussed. So it is, it's a stun. Yeah, if, if, right, okay. right. Very similar to a, a, a fault line stun. Oh, there's exactly. Tarek. Tarek's yep. using Thrash. Tarek's using Thrash. Look at him go. Oh, my goodness. And there he went. He hit somebody. I think Vela's detained right now. How long does that last? It lasts five seconds. So they got away. So that's that's relatively short. I mean, in comparison to like bad. a lockdown. Yeah, lockdown I believe is 10 seconds. So yeah. about half the time oh, but, you but just have to follow up. Dog, on it. five seconds feels like an eternity when you're just <laughs> sitting there. <laughs> wait, <laughs> nothing you can do. True, but also wait. Uh, can you it. pick up Thrash? You can. <laughs> what? <laughs> you can. The the cat. Uh, the only difference is you can only do it once. Okay. Thrash gets tired a little okay, bit. Okay, 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 okay. So yeah. we're not talking about seven ults in a round. No, no like seven ults in a round. But no, that's no. still two ults in a round. That's two ults <laughs> that in a round. That is still a lot. That yeah. is still a lot. That's like Jet getting refreshes, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> 
except it's to Thames. I mean, Team FRT is literally playing close plant right now. <gasps> oh, the defuse. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, please try it. Do please it, try it, it, please it, try it. Where's the vision? He can't get vision oh, of the bomb. Oh, he can't see it. There it goes. Yeah, go get him, buddy. So what happens? Oh, the no. no. The pull. Poor guy. And just to be clear, we heard a defuse noise there from Wingman trying to defuse. Right. Oh. Yeah, that was unfortunate. So, no. <laughs> yeah, so the way that Astro, um, you know, when, when he gets pulled off the ball, uh, the, the spike, um, as long as he's off the bomb side, he, he will stop um, defusing. Yep. Um, and so um, he has to stay within the, the actual side itself to defuse the spike. So it's essentially like a regular player trying to defuse there for the most part. Right, right. Yeah. That's, I mean, okay. Somebody, oh, somebody oh, got to sub in for Pekata. Doug, like, <laughs> this is starting to get uneven right now. <laughs> I just, oh my gosh, he's 13 and five. Yeah. I saw him today, he was feeling really good. He was feeling good. I mean, how could he not with everybody literally rooting for him so hard <laughs> in this arena? That's got to feel pretty good to get an ace in front of a crowd like this, huh? Bala, that's just like you and your Boomerang League, right? <laughs> Same vibes. <laughs> All right. Oh, there you go. Did that's he hit? a hit. Oh, and Cena and Harbor the Sun. Reckoning, bro. Cena is so dead. <laughs> oh, oh, that was the goop. goop. <laughs> there's the goop. So that's supposed to be like a flash, right? Yeah. So it it obfuscates your screen, kind of like adds, you know, doesn't let you see it towards sure. the center. But sure. what it does is. It kind of gives you your peripherals, and that way you can kind of maneuver a little bit easier, yeah. and you kind of know where you're going, and you can kind of uh, hide from folks pushing you. Well, I think Tarek's team may be in trouble again, even though Mimi's up. Here comes she's Crash. gonna have to 1v5. Oh, it didn't hit? It did not hit, no. Oh, All right, they, so, they so, picked it back up there, by the way. Yeah, they. I think they farmed that twice. I, explain this to me, though. So how does, how does Thrash work? Does he have a, a, a fixed distance? where he runs and then he pops. Can you pop it early? Can you lunge kind of like yes, a sky yeah. dog? How does that work? Yeah, so um, as your thrash kind of swimming through, um, left click forces you to lunge and okay. you kind of do your attack. Yep. Uh, in the air, you can left click again after a small delay and kind of explode early. Otherwise, if you hit a player, um, a six meter explosion happens. So it's pretty decent size, you know. Um, so you can hit multiple people. You can hit multiple people. Good night. It's like a cubby size, right? Cu uh, yeah, cubby size. Roughly? I say like, sure. I think, um, if you were to kind of throw into B or anyone within that little, um, the stairs area, yeah. uh, okay. we we'll get hit. Got you, got you. Reclaiming Dizzy. Oh. These players are nasty. Yeah. I was, not, I, was, I was literally expecting to come into this and be like, okay, let's have some fun, get some wingman plants. Okay, FRT. Cena's the only one with a gun here. And he's making it work. Oh my gosh, he's going. So gets is literally trying to get back up towards Vela right now with the door. He's got a shorty. Ooh. Oh, he's got a shorty. Huge cascade. Oh, Mimi. Oh no. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Just ridiculous. What a round by Sir Mata. <laughs> All right, Ryan, we have some time. I'm, I'm going to get to pick your brain in a way I've always wanted to, but I've never <laughs> been able to. Let's do it. Right? How Can you talk me through some of the iterations of what Gecko has gone through? Give me, like, the most broken state <laughs> that you guys had Gecko in at one point. Um, well, uh, the reclaims had no cooldowns. You know? <laughs> oh, <laughs> no! Gosh. They, uh, you know. Kind yeah, of that'll do it. That's a good really. starting point. <laughs> and with, starting point. with any of these, you know, we, we always test a bunch of the sizes. We like to, it's like, maybe um, try the most extreme size or we we go crazy. They, sure, they, they sure. Say we go crazy and then start tuning it down to sure. what is the, the version where it just does nothing. Yeah. <laughs> right? And, and so if you can find nothing and if you can find extreme, you know that there's a middle that Some, works. Somewhere right, between yeah. there, yeah. <laughs> Somewhere the universal work, yeah. Oh, they're in Mosh right now. He's gonna get another. Oh my gosh. Tarek, okay. Yeah. He's heating up. Coming to the live. Yeah, one, one of the exciting things I wanna see, we kinda saw it a little bit there, is when we start to see, like, you know, similar to what Ray's has with that nade. Oh, wait, they're actually popping out here. <laughs> <laughs> you can't touch Cena with that op, though. Uh -uh. You were saying about the similarities. Right, right. So um, so you have the raise nade, seize combo from Fade. Yeah. It's a beautiful combo on Lotus. Um, 
you can do something very similar, right? And even if you have both, you can really clear that back area and, 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 and take some space. It's really great for taking space, and I think um, Fade's one of the one of the ones that I like playing with the uh, gecko. So, like, just visually, it looks similar to a Viper Snake Bite, right? A Viper Molly. Yeah. yeah. Is it damage over time, or is it more? Because usually initiators don't have that, except for shock darts. It's like right. instant damage, but it's not damage over time. How does it work? Yeah. So, so Mosh kind of grows and then starts to charge up. It works a little bit like um, Chaos Fragment, where it, it gives you a little bit of time and then starts exploding. Uh, okay. The big difference is the explosions happen all at the end. So after three seconds, charges up, Mosh gets angry. And it's just one boom. pop. Boom. Just yep. one pop. 150 okay. in the center, yep. 150 in the center. So you're right. Something Wait, with like a, a seize. Pop. It's deadly. Right? Like a seize uh, uh, Mosh put combo. It's the kill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're starting to learn how to use Wingman to clear space. Like, to use it as a as a boom bot, essentially. Right, yeah. One of our hopes was that Gekka would be you know, a, little, a lot more approachable um, and, and kind of like it, it, it's a low barrier That's to entry. That's true, right off yeah. the rip. That's right, true, yeah. more approachable. Um, but we still wanted to keep a lot of that, like, learnability and that, that high mastery. So um, we, 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 I think we landed in a pretty good spot, but we'll have to see. So far, it looks like it. I mean, I, I definitely see improvements in how they're using the ability so far within 11 rounds, so. These executes are beautiful, by the way. Yeah, this is going to be a 5v5. Did FRT? Did we give them scrim time? Like, this is ridiculous. This, this, I, think that, I think this is like one of the first or second times they've played the game this, um, uh, with this team. Yeah. <laughs> it's the lockdown again for Mimi. You saw how dangerous that was last time, but the ult comes out from Vela. Look at how far back he gets he's playing as well. He's just able to cut off any rotates in. No wingman shenanigans here. Yeah, go get him. Ooh, double knives pop. Anime oh, battle. Oh, nothing? SK Rossi gets the best? That was a tough angle to play, so. Yeah, it was. I'll give it to him. That's good for FRT's team. They were they were starting to look like Tarek might, they might let Tarek come on a comeback, but. No, uh, they have three partnered players on their team right now. <laughs> All right, Tarek has his ult again, too. Want to see if they do anything fun with it. You know, you mentioned, uh, Ryan, you mentioned some of the synergy with Fade. It, was there anything else as you guys were developing Gecko that stood out as far as, like, agent synergy or, you know, some cool stuff like that? Yeah, we found, you know, um, I think you can kind of see it here. <laughs> we were talking to them, but uh, some of the Harbor um, Wingman stuff was, was very good. Um, double initiator. One of the things we were saying as a group was, um, you know, um, he's going to operate as a single. There's oh, here's Thrash. Let's just see Thrash here. They just broke it. So yeah. nothing happened. <laughs> Actually, no, it looks like one player got detained. Yeah. Yeah, it was tough to tell. With that ult no longer in line, I don't know that Terra can get to a place where he can pick the orb up again, but he yeah. does have a Dizzy. I wonder, I mean, it's not really, you don't get the same, like, pop flash, right, out of a smoke or anything like that. It's just a little delayed. It's a little <laughs> delayed. <laughs> you see his reaction? No. I did. Oh, my goodness. Pulling this one before is tough. Round 12. Got to go for it. All right. Let's see it. All right. SK Rossi down. Not I don't with the know. Tag, not with the flank. Yeah, no. man. I don't know that we're gonna get the same antics that we got at like Pangata's ult. Yeah. I don't, or uh, Ace, excuse me. I don't think we're gonna get something like that again, unfortunately. Although CNET is quietly 13 and 8. Oh yeah. my god. I mean, he's 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 he's, he's doing his thing. He's farming. Yeah. Pangata here, 197. All right, we are actually going to throw it down to the desk, have them break down all the gecko stuff that they saw. Yinsu, what do you think? Broken? Uh, under strength? What do you think? I think a little bit broken, uh, but I feel like the game is a lot closer than the scoreline dictates. Yeah, I think it is. And for me on the new agent, I feel like this is going to be insane in ranked when it comes out for the first time. Not sure about pro play yet, but yeah. I think people are going to have so much fun with his abilities. I disagree. I feel like this isn't close at all. I feel like this is actually that more. I feel like this the, this scoreline should have been further apart because I just feel like after those initial two rounds, Team Derek have just get, been getting ripped apart. Lil Brony's to wake up right now. Get the team rallied back. <laughs> get them into this game if they want to pick up some rounds. Well, Mimi mentioned those abilities. Earlier we posted a poll on Twitter and asked you guys at home, what
what gecko ability you were most excited about. Let's check in and see the results. I voted for Wingman and his overwhelming majority Wingman as well. Mimi, we so nearly saw some great moments, but it just kind of fell apart in the end. Yeah, you saw it started off on the pistol round there where like they try and do the Wingman plant into the cove, but immediately uh, they got shut down. I think Team Tarek identified, okay, we have one goal, it's to get rid of Wingman. But still, there was a lot of cool stuff seen throughout. I loved watching the teams kind of adapt to how to use Dizzy. Yeah, there's been a lot of great repeated use. And I mean, one of the craziest things is just hearing Ryan talk about how many times you can get that in or around. Seven? We've set up to seven times. We've also seen two, you know, a double thrash ult coming through here. So it's been a pretty wild display so far. And I think that just, you know, obviously with more and more time invested into really learning what you can do, the boundaries that you can push with Gecko, it's going to be fascinating to watch. I mean, like that early round that we just saw there where you're able to, to send out Dizzy to clear the first corner and then you get yourself into the site with either the with either Thrash or uh, with Wingman. Also, the ability to defuse and with it, it, it's just there's so much cool stuff that you can do with this guy. Well, I actually have a question for you, Ryan, as I throw this back to you. If Wingman is defusing and the Gecko player dies, does Wingman also die or does he just carry on defusing? I haven't seen it yet, uh, but Ryan, I want to know. Yeah, I mean, Ryan, I, I, that's a very fair question. I'll give you the floor to answer what Yinsu is prodding at. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, Yinsu, if if, um, if Wingman is planting or defusing and Gecko dies, um, Wingman keeps going. He keeps going. He keeps going. Yes, keeps going. So oh, n not only do you have to kill Gecko, but then you have to take care of Wingman as well. Right. In the 1v1 scenarios, um, if if Wingman's all alone, yeah. he gets a little scared and he dies. So if it's ever a 1v1 <laughs> he and he's scared, oh, okay. he this gets is scared so and adorable, to go bro. Back to <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> yeah, he gets a little too scared and dies, but that's only if he's a lost Oh, line. they tried to grab well with the mosh pit there. That would have been sick. I think they're listening to us. They have yeah. us on comms. They heard oh, what we're trying to do. Bella, that was nasty. Just double shark seen it. I do hope we get to see, though, I mean, just how strong Mosh Pit is. Because, I mean, we can hear it and go, okay, instant kill, whatever. But seeing it is an entirely different story. Right. I really love what Paula's doing here. Um, so the Sky is kind of, uh, they're helping uh, Tark with, with the uh, the reclaim on these. Mm -hmm. um, you have a lot of support. You have you have Omen, you have Jet to kind of take the angles um, and, and Sky to, to really piggyback a lot of that initiator utility to, to get these, these reclaims. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which again, you know, we were kind of alluded to, uh, alluding to it earlier, but it really feels like Gecko's built in such a way that you players are rewarded for taking space that they have occupied with utility beforehand, right? Right, right. So his signature is Dizzy, right? His signature is Dizzy. Okay, so Tarek right now has the spike and has Wingman. Right now has Wingman. So let's see it. If you don't pick up the orb, what's the cooldown? On Dizzy, for example. Uh, you don't get it back? You don't get it back. You don't get okay. it back. Yeah. Here it goes. So does it's he, just. Does he have the spike? Does he? Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and here it goes. <laughs> Look at him go. Don't, don't do, do it. it. Come oh. on. <laughs> we just want to see the little guy succeed once. <laughs> That's just not fair. I like the pinch idea, though. 1v1. The, from Team or Terry. it's 1v3, excuse me. Oh, oh no. no! Oh no, 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 no! Go, Paula! I think that was a katana, too! <laughs> oh, it hurts. Good sportsmanship, though. <laughs> Pulls out the knife. Yeah, that's true. Pulls that out was the true. Knife. That's very I good point. Like shooting. I think that was going to be an easy 1v3 for Paula, so they had to... Yeah, yeah true, actually. You had to, you had to yeah, nerf somehow. Yeah. Right, right. It's right. only fair. She's Team FRT is like, please, knife! Please! <laughs> please. We want the knife, please! <laughs> So how do you, how does that mechanic actually work? Like planting, is it a is it a bind? Are you clicking? Are you what are you aiming at? Yeah. So there, there's two commands here for wingman. Left says go find some friends. Right click is uh, plant the spike. So only knows two things. And look at so now here they're they're protecting wingman with a couple things. Smoke yeah. here, um, dizzy to kind of protect the plant. Yes. And here it is. He did it. <laughs> Let's go. Once he plants the spike, he's done, right? He's done, goes okay. to sleep. You can wake him up again in 10 seconds. I mean, it's well-earned rest. <laughs> Poor little guy. Yeah, I, I really love the iteration, too, of how they're taking B. I think I, we were talking about earlier, like, 
Um, B's tough to take. Um, tough to get the oh, plant oh. sometimes in, but FRT. Oh, no. Uh, thank you, Tarek. Thank you, Tarek. Yeah, sorry, continue. <laughs> no, uh, um, yeah, so the iteration, you know, throwing the smokes down, really protecting wingman yeah. um, and helping them in allows you to kind of flex how you play it. You know, like we saw the first time, sent it in by itself, all five played out. Um, the second time they did it, sends a bunch of smokes in and played with it, dizzy to protect. And here it is, you see again, um, plants the bump, goes back to sleep, Tarek goes to grab it. So that's why you're excited about the Harbor play, right? Because of the Cove? Right, the Cove, yep. Yeah. Would you prefer Harbor or Sage to synergize with this agent? We played both. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, it, it's good. <laughs> yeah, we, we've been really liking um, Sage or Harbor on Icebox. It, it's been really fun. I know, like, you know, some of those, oh my god. So I, I'm, I'm a Sheriff fan, and that was gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I became speechless for just a sec here. Hey, let, let me ask you this. As far as Dizzy goes, so, all right, you throw out Dizzy, right, and you tag uh, you tag somebody on the other team. Right. Do they do they show up on the mini-map? They do not. Do you have any uh, uh, any sort of confirmation that you have flashed somebody or yeah. gooped somebody? <laughs> yeah, so you will see, um, you will hear the audio that it fired. Um, oh, okay. And, and sometimes you'll hear how many it fired. Um, but the big difference is you kind of have to put your body on the line to really see where Dizzy shot. Yeah. Otherwise, you won't be able to see where it went. So you'll get some confirmation that it happened, but no real idea where. Look at him go again. There you go. Look at him go again. And the spike is down. Thank you, wingman. I appreciate Tarek being a man of the people and yep. helping us out here. <laughs> That's two in a row. All three rounds, too, he tried it. Yep. All right. This might be another round win for him. Oh! oh. The wingman fakes are going off in my mind right now. That's twice that they've tried to flank because wingman has taken so much attention against right. the plant. That is, that is a cool idea. Yeah. And FRT here has thrash. Curious to see what he does with this. I, I think, especially like with with like a, a fade or something like that, with some some noise obscuring or maybe like an omen ult, like obscuring the mini map, just some sort of information denial paired with. Wingman planting could, right, right. could be real dangerous. So they're going to try to get aggressive here. Here comes the Mosh Pit. Mosh. Oh, this is going to oh. work. Oh, Grab gravity wave. Yeah, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Almost got him. So, but that entire time, it didn't do any damage. It, it did just, not do any damage. Does, okay. it, does it slow? Does it vulnerable? Does it anything? Nope. Just Nothing kind of, at all. Okay. It makes a really big zone, which is yep. a little different from some of our mollies. Um, so it's huge, huge zone. Um, three seconds, you don't get out, you die. Tarek's failed himself. Yeah, he is. No thrash this round either from, from FRT Unlucky, but Tarek does. One of the things we started seeing as we were doing, again, these, these, these play tests was um, the, the reclaim on thrash started to play really well for, for attack in a way that, was, that felt really good, where, um, you know, if you use it for the take, um, grab thrash after the spike's down, you can use it again for post plan. You know, so it, wow. it, it, it has a lot of strength on the attack. Uh, where you'll see, you might see some weakness on the defense, but yeah. on the attack, it, it, it's great. It's great for being able to do both. I'm also curious, just like, there's, there's, feels like two different identities with the agent. There's what feels like three information <laughs> abilities, right? With, with Wingman as yep. a drone, with the flash from Dizzy, and then with the thrash as well, which is essentially just a, a, a drone in and of itself, right? So that's three information abilities. And then there's the plant. That feels <laughs> somewhat dissonant and distant objectives, <laughs> if, if right. that makes any sense. Right. Yeah, a lot, a lot of, um, as far as kind of like the, the reconnaissance that we have on Gecko, a lot of it is, it's high risk to get that recon, or you really have to be out there with Dizzy to see the information. And same with Wingman. Yeah. And what we wanted to achieve with this was more that if they were to see somebody or if they shot someone, it's really clear what to do next. And so, you're able to really work with your teammates in, in these games. We and, just saw, push them. I mean, some insane team play. Actually, they use the Sky Dog on the right side, the Trailblazer, and then they use the He's doing Wingman it on the other side. He's waiting the five seconds here for the plan. Oh, no, it didn't. A lot of ultimates online here. Yeah, I mean, uh, an infinite amount, it feels like. <laughs> Especially double, double detain, potentially, here. Right, right. With the lockdown and the thrash. <laughs> It's a flash. He's going again. I want to see the ult used. <laughs> oh, no, you didn't expect that. Beautiful Sheriff shot by FRT. Flash over the top, a little cheeky. 
they just can't find a way in, man. Yeah, I mean, they, they all funnel through spawn, so, yeah. so even with Tarek just sending it into <laughs> spawn, that's kind of easy. You know, I was, I was just thinking earlier, I said something about how Dizzy really doesn't have the same pop out of a smoke mechanic, but right. technically, I mean, if you time it right, because I'm right. assuming there's a wind-up period right after you throw him where he cannot flash, right? But once he hits past that time window, he can pop whenever. So if you hit the timing right out of a smoke, it's an instant. Right, yeah, so um, there, it's like, it's the same as uh, some of our other flashes where it's half a second, but um, there's a wind up and then it becomes active. Once it's sure. active, it starts to scan, half a second, it fires. Got it. Uh, so you can technically do similar things like a pop flash. Yeah. It's really strong out of smokes. You saw there right over and you can kind of like hide the, because it can get shot in the wind up, so you hide the wind up and it, it's and active then popping out of the smoke, right? That's very dope. Go get him, little buddy. All right, what was the inspiration to the little buddies? Why, 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 <laughs> why little guys? I think we wanted to, um, we wanted to create something or, or kind of really push that thematic of. I'm sorry, uh, what just happened? <laughs> sorry, you can continue. He just wall banged him. Wall -banged him. <laughs> no, that was insane. <laughs> so the, the the thematic of. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Wait, can you spam that? Can you can you spam this? Oh, he tried. <laughs> that was a nice try. Wow, Team Tarek's feeling it. Yeah, I mean that was uh, a number of ridiculous things that just happened right in a row. So I. <laughs> no, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll yeah. pick this up in a moment. Absolutely. FRT is old. I mean, they're even adorable when he's holding them. Oh, jeez. Spike's this not down, so this is tough for them to work with. Pat Caddis said, hold that. Oh, I got this. <laughs> Paul's, got, Paul's got some room, though. Paul's got some room. Here we go. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Ah, uh, there you go. All right, so, yeah, talk to me about the, the, the intention, the thought behind right. the little guys. I think we wanted to create some type of incentive to really want to grab something. Like, let's say if it was, like, scrap on the ground, like, <laughs> you might want to leave it there, right? So something that's like, hey, that, that's my wingman. Like, hey, I'm yeah. not just going to leave you there, bud. You know, like, you so pick it up and go. You intentionally are making us emotionally invested in these little guys so that we'll go pick them back up again. Yeah, that's the best hope. I think just the visual of wingman with the spike on top of their head. Yeah. Running forward, squishing yep. with the noise is <laughs> yeah. going to captivate people. The yeah. sound is so good. You're seeing here again, taking that staging space, that, you know, this little mound area. Awesome. Able to pick it up pretty safely here. Paula spent. Oh. oh. Paula had the read. <gasps> oh. Unlucky. And they didn't really get away with, like, Tarek reclaiming there. They stay on the entire time. Like once they once they fall, once they get used, they stay down the entire time. There's no disappearing time or anything like that. Oh, this combination is fantastic. He threw the wingman in. Oh. They have about 10 seconds, and then um, it's uh, 20 seconds before they expire. Okay. Oh, so they do expire if you they don't do pick expire. them up quickly yep. enough. Yep. Okay. That was such a beautiful play. The, the uh, thrash going in to protect wingman. It's always cool to see Dizzy protecting Wingman or yeah. Thrash protecting yeah. Wingman, yeah. you know. And when you're when you're reclaiming these globules, uh -oh. oh no, this flank is. Oh, the defuse! Oh, the He's defuse. gonna get it! Oh, Tarek is on it! Oh, oh my goodness! That could have been awesome. I was excited too. Oh, the defuse! I mean, imagine we got one of those. <laughs> I was thinking to myself, especially as we were you, you were talking to Brennan and Josh. There's no way. If it can be taken <laughs> down, how much HP? 100 HP or something? 100 like HP, yeah. Yeah, there's no way that the defuse is ever going to happen. Right. right. That feels very <laughs> unlikely. Did you have it often in playtests? We did. So uh, what, what you notice here, though, is was, was we had to start really protecting the defuse. And I think yeah. Canada did a great job of putting that smoke down, popping it as it started diffusing. I think Tarek just knew what was happening there yeah. and he got the read. But that was a beautiful play. Oh, they did it preemptively this time. Get out. I like that they're committing to, to this to this attempt. I mean, it's just one of the main ways to take that space on Lotus. So use use the tools you got. I think Wing or uh, Gecko definitely has the ability to do the same type of thing. Right. So he he casts Dizzy to take the space. Another Dizzy to take the site. And here comes the plant attempt. Protects the plant with Ooh, Mosh Pit. And here we go. Nice. 
just denies that space entirely. And also, you have to leave that mosh pit no matter what. Right. After a certain point in time, you can't just stay in it. Oh, Tarek wants a knife. <laughs> knife Come on, me. Sugetsu. Come on, Sugetsu. <laughs> Showing off the Oni here. <laughs> it was all oh, a ruse, they're feeling it. They're feeling it. They trolled them. I love that A play, actually. You know, they, they played for, to control um, a lot of space on the take, yep. Yep. and they were able to, to plant it in a way where they were able to cover it. Um, I thought that was a great play. And they also don't take the risk, right, to walk into what will be further crossfires from the defending side. Right, right, yeah. Like, yeah. Especially if you take tree or anything like that, go through the, the rotating door. Like, you right. have to take more space in that case. Right, and, and you you know, if, if you can get that, um, that, that spike plant down, um, you know, if you can get Wingman 2, get the spike down, you are five guns up, right? As yep. opposed to the four. And Dart getting a little bit of info here. <laughs> no. <laughs> he's, just, he's just picking up right where he left off. Come on. Does this feel like we've had more smoke spam kills than any other tournament before, Bala? Oh, in the overall turn? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Including the show match. Yes. This is just silly. Check PCs, check PCs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you checked that, right? <laughs> oh, that was almost so close for her to peek with the flash. The the, the dizzy. Does that flash your teammates? Because it does not. So as it's scanning, yeah, that's one of the great things about it is it, it scans. And although you can shoot it to kind of mitigate all five getting shot compared to some other flashes like that. That was so right. cool. That's exactly it. Yeah, you push in with your team. You're able to kind of follow Dizzy in and really yeah. like, take that ground. Oh, and even the, the sky flash to conceal and to keep Dizzy alive was right, very yeah. cool. And you can't, it didn't, look, it didn't look like that was in line of sight. I think that was behind him. And oh, it, still, no. it still gooped him. <laughs> well played. I mean, wow. We've gone from FRT kind of stomping in the first half to all of a sudden having a close <laughs> game in the show. A hell actually. of a game, yeah. With Gecko involved, this is crazy. This is what I was talking about, the, or what you were talking about there. The flash concealing, and he was looking at him, okay. I'm really curious how, like, Yep. Playing against and what the counterplay is to, to right. avoid getting flashed, because you're going to have that multiple, especially in, like in coordinated play. Yeah. Right. Maybe not in ranked, but in coordinated play, you're going to have to deal with that multiple times in a round. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So, so um, one of the biggest trade-offs, though, is uh, if you shoot dizzy, dizzy dies. None of the rockets go off. Right. So uh. compared to some of our other flashes or off, you know, screen obfuscation. Woo! Oh. Yo, that might have been it. <laughs> Boy, they've got money. They've got money. <laughs> yeah, sorry. So I was saying, yeah. Also, well, guess it what a great round. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you love to see that. The, the, the double controller popping off, you know. It's just what happens yeah. with guys like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, so I was saying, yeah, the, the, the big trade off here is, you know, as you throw Dizzy, if it gets shot, it mitigates the whole effect. Sure. As opposed to something like Sky, where if you pop it, there's nothing you can really do. You kind of yeah. turn it or, or, or uh, run away. Yeah. Um, so. If, if I say one person turns it, you can't turn the other person's screen, right. your teammate's team, right. they get flashed, you don't. So it's like singular, almost like sure. isolated counterplay versus this where you can hit it to, to stop it from teammates. Oh, look at this combo. And they invested a lot. If someone was there, that would have been beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> if, if. Let me ask you, if, if Dizzy is behind you and pops and you don't see it, like it's directly behind you, will it still yeah. goop you? It will, yeah. Okay. So if it's behind you, it will hit you. Ult used. Cena dancing around the Reckoning with the blades, and he's not able to find anything. This may be it for Team Tarek, man. Yeah, I don't see a way out of this. No, <laughs> dude, they had a crazy comeback, Seekers? but I mean. I I'm saying it's 12-12. Oh, oh, I think we're going 12-12. No, <laughs> 5 bro. 3v5, let's get it. No shot. I I'm think oh, Paula definitely. 1v5? 1v5. 1v5? Let her win it. This would be, yeah, extend the match. Oh, they're going for the knife, yes. She has oh a God. chance. Oh, oh. God, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> knife. Oh. <laughs> Look at Pankata in the back, just op angle. Up. He's just waiting. He's way too disciplined for antics like this. At this point, this is Gladiator. Send one person at a time. <laughs> yeah. Dude, she's going to do it. Don't do the shorty. No, 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 no please no, not the around shorty. The corner, here you go, here you go. The shorty, no, I can't watch. Paula takes this. I can't watch. Just spray the smoke. 
<laughs> Look at him, he's smirking, he knows. No, don't no. push the smoke. Don't push the smoke. There's a shardy on the other side. Oh, oh! Jesus. oh no! No, 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 no! <laughs> what a game. Oh. That was awesome, that was so awesome. That was so cool. <laughs> I mean, just moments like that, but getting the first chance to see the Asian team, yeah. what a good time. And I think we got like a good, I, that was a, like some games, especially like sometimes I've been a part of like pre agent previews yeah, or something yeah, like that. Yeah. You get the first game, it's like, nah, nobody really knows how to use the agent. Yeah. These guys knew, we got some good insight. We yeah. got some strats, we got the double controller strat, trying to really protect Wing Man, looks like we knew what they were trying to do there. And you have the, the uh, Tarek's offensive group, really trying to take that space, so yeah. oh, pretty cool. It was, it was yeah. really, really awesome. That was a lot of fun. They picked up on it very well, very quickly. Again, a dope comeback, but Pankata dropped 30, bro. <laughs> he dropped the 30 bomb. I, I talked to Pankata. He said, I'm not going to lose on that stage twice. He's like, I, I need to take this one. He's like, I'm taking this home. So, you know, he showed it. He showed he wanted That's it. That's why he pulled out the show. <laughs> That's why he did it. Yeah, he showed he wanted it for sure. Unlucky. But yeah, FRT winning the very first VCT show match. Yeah, very Dope. cool. Dope. In front of a packed out crowd. Let's we need to go. do more of them. Yeah, more stuff more like this. Them. Yep. And I think everybody's starting to get hyped for the next match, the the main event here. Yeah, this was a warm up. It was a good warm up. <laughs> it was an appetizer. Yeah, this is unreal. This crowd is booming. This crowd is booming. Now, it is well, Ryan, let me ask you this. We just saw Gecko in a full map. Everyone's very excited. Everyone wants to play with these, you know, little buddies and see how adorable it is and whatnot. Yes, yes. When when will players get their hands on this guy? Um, if all goes all well, it's going to be uh, next Tuesday. Next Tuesday, oh right. baby, y'all won't have to wait very long. That is. Yep. It releases with um, 6:04. Yeah. A lot to be excited about. Dang, that coop really is. It's hard to work around. It is. It, you, it, you can maneuver, so you're able to kind of see where you're going. You're able to kind of see, like, how do I sidestep? How do I get out of the situation? Yeah. It's a lot easier, and it lasts uh, less than some of our flashes. Um, so it's. I think it's about, like, half a second less. Sure. Uh, with the, with the, I can't wait to. Yeah. I just can't wait to get on Twitter after this and see the reactions. I bet <laughs> yeah. you they're going to be so polarized. <laughs> yep. There's going to be people who are like, oh, my God, that's crazy. Yep. I can't believe they put in this game. <laughs> and the other side is going to be like, oh, my goodness. How can you use this? It's so cute, but yeah. my goodness. I love that ultimate. That's yeah, the great. ultimate's dope. The ultimate's very dope. This was such a fun thing to go through. Yeah, the dizzy out of the smokes. It's strong. I'm telling you, it's strong. Here it is. You hit the timing right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, she had a run at it too, man. She was close. Yeah. Very unlucky. But again, Gecko. We've seen him on, on stage now. Bala, initial thought. Strong, too strong? What, what, what is your take? I think it's a nice, nice little middle ground. Yeah? I, I think in the lower ranks, maybe it'll be fun and strong. <laughs> Higher ranks, maybe a little weaker. But sure. I think just a good agent overall. Sure, this is sure, like sure. one of those agents that I just have to smile. Yeah, it. <laughs> it's adorable. Congratulations yes. on debuting Gecko. And thank Absolutely. you so much for letting us join you That's on your desk. <laughs> yeah. uh, we're going to throw it down uh, for an interview.
Welcome back. We've got a winner's interview for you, and unfortunately, I hate to do this to you, bro. There's a loser's <laughs> interview as well. Wait, I, I do need just very quickly, I'm going to give you the floor because you just won. Chirp off a little bit. Give, give him a little trash talk. Let him know. <laughs> Yo, I told you I would win. I told you, bro. Feels bad. It feels bad, but uh, you know, uh, it was a fun time, and that's what matters the most. Hell yeah. And, uh, we got to show the new agents. Hell so yeah. That was dope. I love yeah. it. What a good opportunity ahead of the finals here. What did you guys think? Just first impressions overall. Tarek, you can start. Um, I think it's really cool. I think he's actually overpowered. I don't know if we did a good job of showcasing it, but uh, I think as time progresses, we're gonna see uh, what he's actually potential or his actual potential. So I'm excited to see what the community comes up with. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel the same feeling as him. It, it's like amazing. Everything is crazy. The game was, you know, but it's fine. In the end, we had fun. Yeah. Everybody, everybody was smiling. So I, I guess, yeah, we loved it. Oh yeah. Very quickly, I wanna, I wanna give you a little love because you were so committed to having Wingman plant and defuse the spike. And we just, as for the content, we appreciate it. Yes, I, I was very committed as well. I uh, also I remember one time on, I think it was on pistol. He, he was trying to play, and I, First I jumped on him, and I died for it. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's, it's really cute, and I think just the mechanic is so creative. Yeah. So props to the devs. How long did it take you to figure out his tech and his abilities? How Actually, I knew what he did uh, before because the dev showed me. But the, the thing is, they knew we would throw the little guy there, and they jumped <laughs> into the little guy. I jumped into the little guy. I was like, little okay, let me do this. Out. I'm planning this spike. <laughs> they pissed around, and I like, I throw the little guy, threw the little guy, yeah. and then everybody was jumping the yeah. orb. It's like crazy. I tried. At least I tried. Good shot, though. Yeah. I, I want to know about Thrash, because that thing looks really good. With the opening of the lockdown, people, was that a significant, like, was it easy to dodge? Was there anything that was tough to use with it? Yeah. Uh, I actually didn't get to utilize the ult as well, but it's pretty powerful because it's AOE, and on top of that, you can pick it up after you throw it once, which is kind of ridiculous. So I think uh, my prediction is there's a nerf coming in like the next six months to this guy because he is juiced <laughs> yeah. up. He's juiced yeah. up. Trust me, I know it might not look like it, but he's juiced up. Yeah, the first time I saw that guy, uh, they, they pick it up stuff that you can throw your, your like flash, yeah. stun, and ult. You can pick your ult as well. It's crazy. So good this mechanic is crazy. Yeah, he seemed like a lot of fun. Congratulations. Thank you. Sorry. I hate it. We had fun, though. It's okay. And I've done a lot of these loser interviews. It's not a good <laughs> thing, but it happens. <laughs> it was a ton of fun. Friends, we have the moment you've all been waiting for, the grand finals here at VCT Lock-In. But before we get there, we have a special announcement for all of you at home. Enjoy. In 2023, the VCT is more global than ever. From the loud, dazzling streets of Sao Paulo to the neon-lit skyscrapers of Tokyo, all these roads lead to one city where superstars are born. The only place we could have held Valent Champions 2023, Los Angeles. These hallowed halls have been home to some of the biggest names in entertainment and sport. From Kendrick Lamar to Rihanna, a million magic moments. This is where legends, no, nope, champions are made. Welcome to the Kia Forum. It's been seven years since Riot hosted a championship in our own backyard. And what better way to usher in the new era of the VCT than with a house party? You know, Brazil knows how to throw a good party too. You know what, Leo? You had your chance at a hometown show. Now, it's my turn. Fair enough. Well, lucky for you, the entire tournament will take place right here in Los Angeles, beginning at the Shrine Expo Hall. From August 6th to August 20th, the 16 best teams in the world will battle it out for a chance to make it all the way here, our biggest finals venue yet. Then, on August 24 to August 26, we'll close out the 2023 VCT season with the crowning of a new Valent World Champion right here at the Kia Forum. Home to Hollywood. Home to champions. We'll see you here in Los Angeles this summer for Valent Champions 2023. Wow, you just heard the
the big news champions is coming to LA this August. For more on that announcement, Gecko and many more, I am joined by Leo and Anna. Welcome to the desk. It's great to have you guys here. I've never been to LA. I'm really, really excited oh, about this, we'll Anna. Yeah, uh, but why LA? You know, this is the first time we're heading there for Valorant in a major international tournament. Yeah, well, I mean, we're finally in a position where we actually can host an event in LA. And I think, you know, with Riot's headquarters being in LA and a lot of us being from LA, maybe, um, you know, we were really excited to bring an event there. And um, it's been really, it's been really hard to keep that maybe not quite a secret, but as much <laughs> of a secret as we could for this long. Well, let me say, first of all, it's just incredible to be here. I can barely hear myself with the crowd. Oh my God, it's so, it's so <laughs> incredible. But that we are loud. so excited to go to LA. We've been for the past two years. We brought our events mostly to EMEA for a number of reasons. And this year is all about bringing Valorant to other places around the world. We're going to now Sao Paulo, of course, in Tokyo. And LA just felt like the perfect choice. It's the capital of entertainment of the world. The community in LA is amazing. So we're really, really excited to be in LA. And the forum as well. You guys were like inside the actual venue we in that were. video. We uh, were. Oh, yeah. yeah, tell me about the choice of venue. Okay, too. look, so I, I don't know how they chose a the venue. Maybe Leo knows how they chose the venue. What I'm going <laughs> to say is I went to my very first concert as a teenager at the forum. And when we got to record that video, walking into that place and feeling like I. I don't know. It's like dreams come true in this moment. Who, who did you see? Who did you see? I saw, I've seen so many bands. I've seen you too. A Weezer, Death Cab, Depeche Ooh. Mode, Elton John, Muse. Like I, just a million. Uh, so many. Oh, I've so seen many there. my favorite band of all time multiple times. The Foo Fighters over there. And you know we were Great just taste. geeking out. We're just geeking out the whole time <laughs> filming just, that video. So. I, I will say you guys are kind of bringing up bands, singers. You know, mm -hmm. in the past, champions. We've had some songs. We've had some spectacles. Like, is are we going to expect that as well from this uh, tournament? I well, mean, I yeah, you go ahead. I, I just want to say, Champions is supposed to be the biggest moment of the year. That's where we pull all the stops. It's always supposed to be a spectacle for every Valorant player. So it's going to be a big fest. It's going to be a celebration. Yeah, yeah. And we're definitely thinking about Champs every year as like a moment for the entire community to celebrate all things Valorant. So yes, obviously the eSport, but also just everything going on in the game. So I think you'll see what we've been able to pull off in Sao Paulo, but even bigger and better at Champs. Oh, I I'm looking forward to the song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to take that as I a mean, confirmation. We are also looking Let's forward to it. Oh, OK. Well, you guys mentioned Sao Paulo as well. And Leo, I know this is a big moment for you. Oh. Now now you've experienced the desk, the venue, the crowd. Uh, what do you make of this event? Look, while we don't write the script, having loud in the finals really helps because yeah. the crowd is insane. But it's just really nice to be here. We've been looking to come to Brazil for a while now. It's really special. The community is incredible. The energy in this venue right now is just amazing. So we're super, super yeah. happy to be here. Um, and now I'm looking forward to the grand finals match. Yeah, totally. Yeah. We get to go to your home turf soon, but <laughs> yeah, Anna, what do you make of this away venue? I mean, this is like getting me so hyped for, for LA, but I mean, I think this has been the, one of the, we've had a lot of amazing host cities so far, but this has been just an absolutely incredible host city. We've been here for what, about a month now? And just, it's such amazing energy in this room and it's going to be ridiculous <laughs> as soon as we go to the games. Oh yeah, when Loud Walk House going to be crazy and oh, I'm baby. assuming you're back them to lift the trophy, surely? Look, I cannot be biased, <laughs> you know, but I think it wouldn't be bad if they went in front of their home crowd. I'll say that. Okay. But Fanatic's looking really strong, so. Anna, we'll see. Help, help me out, help me I out. I mean, you know, I love you, Yensu. I want to see Booster Game. Yes! <laughs> okay, I'm Team Anna all the way. Uh, but don't tell this crowd because they will literally murder me. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Thank you so much, Anna and Leo, for joining us. Thank you so Thank much you. for having us. Thank, Thank you for you. the announcement Absolutely. and I cannot wait uh, for the next events. But I'm getting ahead of myself because we still have a grand final best of five between Loud and Fnatic. We're going to take a quick break here, but don't go anywhere because you definitely don't want to miss this.
Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Lock In. We are finally here. Today is our grand final, a best of five between the winners of our two brackets, Alphas, Loud, and Omegas, Fanatic. I am Dash. Joining me on the desk today, it's Mimi, Achilles, and Bala to break down all of the action. This arena is packed to the brim. The showcase, a show match already delivered, and now we're just hoping our best of five does the same, Bala. You know, it's funny, because I felt like up there when I was casting the show match, we got a little taste of what the crowd is going to deliver, but we know how much louder it's going to be once the players take the stage and once we get into that map. 3x the decibels, at least. We've already seen so many incredible matches here over the past few weeks, so many memorable plays and clutches. Before we get into today's matchup, I wanted to ask the desk to relive a few of those top moments from throughout the, throughout the tournament. So, Bala, I'm coming right back to you to kick us off. What was your favorite moment from Lockin so far? I think just continuing with the crowd theme, right? <laughs> it was when Loud beat DRX, okay. when they took the grand finals, uh -huh. because it was just such an electric moment. I mean, literally, as soon as as soon as RB with these shots, sorry Seth, uh. as soon as RB with these shots, Loud took the last two kills. It was crazy in here. It was just such an electric atmosphere. You could tell everybody was so happy. It just meant so much. There's such a chance here for a Brazilian team to take the crown on their home soil. Look at that. I mean, so well deserved. The entire crowd behind them. My favorite moment of lock-in was you making Seth relive that moment. Um, <laughs> Seth, Seth, what Thank about you. you, buddy? What do you brought to the table? Surprisingly, it's not a DRX wow. moment in here because I'm still a little bit scarred from the things that Bala just brought up. But it's actually the series between EDG and 100 Thieves because it was one of the most hyped ones that we had had oh, yeah. up until we got into the semifinals. EDG, remaining. especially on this final map of Pearl, were pushing 100 Thieves to the very limits. It did, I mean, it took everything. What? Stellar. Just being able to spray through the smoke, finding two kills to be able to get them back into this one, to be able to take this map, get into overtime, and then run it from there. EDG put up a hell of a show. I'm really looking forward to seeing what they and 100 Thieves can do in the future events. An incredible series, to say the least. Mimi, what'd you bring to the table for us? I want to narrow down to one specific moment. This also kind of centers around the crowd, but it was King when he won his 1v2, and he stood up and had that moment where he just, like, <laughs> embraced yeah. the crowd in what he was able to do. Uh, again, this is kind of a taste of, I think, what we can expect today. I'm sure there will be some insane individual moments, and I'm sure that the players will be popping off, just kind of feasting in the moment of being in front of the crowd, as King did here. And when it comes to personalities popping off in front of the crowd, I feel like we got lucky with the two squads that we have taking to the stage today. Plenty of players who would be willing to take opportunities like this to show off, to throw that smack talk across the stage yeah. to their opponents. I mean, especially the likes of Boaster. I'm expecting to see him. He's got some <laughs> crazy moments. He's going to be standing up. He's going to be receiving those boos, and he's just going to be thriving in it. So I'm excited to see what happens. Before we break it all down, let's take a look back at how we got here. For Loud, it's been a fight. After a three-map overtime banger against their old foes at NRG. They had to go all the way to map five to take down DRX. It was such a close game here. It was incredible that Loud was able to come back because they started off, looked incredible map one and two, but DRX did what they do best, made it a comeback, made it look possible. And then we got to map number five, we got to Ascent, and Loud, they did not crumble. They proved that despite being tested so heavily by DRX, that they can still come back, come up with new ideas, and close out a close series like that under the pressure of this insane crowd. And for a team with two rookies on it essentially the two team or the two players that came in they're the guys who actually made the clutches against energy happen they're the guys who led the charge again to stop drx from coming back yep. it's those things that are so impressive with love now achilles on the other side you've got fanatic right always the bridesmaid never the bride choke natic they've heard it all before but this revamped squad here has had a perfect run so far in sao paulo yesterday they delivered a 3-0 over navi and this was something that we had never really anticipated i mean across the board on the desk we were all expecting navi to be able to take that Myself, Mimi, High Pock. It just remaining. felt like Navi weren't able to find their footing whatsoever. Not sure if it was an off day or if it was Fnatic really just kicking them off the back of their heels. They were completely on the ground the whole way through, whereas Fnatic never really gave them much options or many chances. Two close maps, one blowout, and of course that blowout was on Navi's map pick. Fnatic just looked fierce. To me, it just felt like Fnatic being incredible. That was the moment we expected them to crumble. That was the moment we expect them to fall flat. And it was probably one of the most dominant games that they've played this entire tournament against Navi of all squads. I mean, I Fnatic that. really is the EMEA super team. Uh, they're making people double, uh, you know, to think and rethink their predictions coming yeah. into today, I'm sure, with that performance that they had yesterday. Another really important 
know coming into this grand final. No matter who wins today, we will have our first ever two-time champions in Valorant. We've been hunting for this for so long. Every single tournament we think, okay, the defending champions have a chance to do it again. Are they going to be doing it? Because they look so good winning the tournament. But there's so much turmoil in terms of teams going into the next tournament. So to see 100% getting a second trophy for one player in Chronicle or three players in Aspa, Sadak, and Les is just incredible. It's pretty cool to know that regardless of what happens, we're going to witness history today. Let's talk more about Loud, the hometown favorites that are coming into this grand final as returning champions, but with a slightly different lineup. Yeah, Loud does have the chance here to find the first ever back-to-back -back in Valorant history, but I think it's made even more impressive because this is not the Loud from last year. This is a Loud that came in, picked up two new rookies that most people doubted would even be able to match what the former players on this squad could do, but they've been able to not only break through that expectation, but make it to another grand final in front of their home crowd. And now for the first time ever, it could be an organization winning two in a row. Run it back. Now I'm just hoping that we get a Phoenix on one of the maps. <laughs> <laughs> We've had every agent played at the event. Reyna was the last one to make it through. So hey, you never really know, especially when you have a good amount of tape at this point. You're in the grand final. Both teams have been able to study each other. Maybe something like that Phoenix throwing a curveball. Oh, no, that no, that no, no, not no, 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 no. Maybe yeah. it could happen. Put the it's kibosh probable. on it, it before, yeah, before it even happens. Ball, if we're going to start working through individuals on that loud roster, you start with none other than Sadak. Yeah, I think you have to because this is the guy who built, rebuilt this team, right? He lost two star players, two players who you really expected to have a say in this team in this in this year that continues. And he's just insane. He's IGLing and he's still frying at the same time. He even took up some duelist rules this time. I mean, remember the turmoil that happened when everyone found out that this, the loud squad that won champions wasn't going to be staying together. Everyone said, oh, that's it. This org is done. Yep. They lost Sasi. They lost Pancada. That was two of their best players. Sonic's just big jelly. He's like, I don't care. I've got these, <laughs> I've got these rookies. I'm going to train them up. I'm going to make sure that this works. And so far, it is looking great. And so much of 2022 Loud storyline around building up that roster was we have Sadak, we have Saucy, you have the coach Bazooka. But this roster was just Sadak as the leader, having to rebuild, find new talent, and form something new. He's been able to do that, something that I don't think any other IGL has been able to do at the same level. Achilles, it's going to be Sadak making the calls. It's going to be Aspas looking for the duels, though. Will he yes. pop off today? That's one of the big questions. He had a really rocky start in the first couple series, you know, versus NRG especially, a little bit of a slow beginning, but then the guy just has been building steam, and then from the outset against TRX, he was crushing. If he has another hot start like this, then by God, they could be looking at a 2-0 start against Fnatic right off the bat in this set, because Aspas was absolutely tearing DRX apart initially. Yeah, that he was, and this guy is the big match player of all big match players in the grand final of Champions 2022. This guy is what pushed Loud over the line to win that. And here again, he's coming back into the fray, putting up similar numbers, has a fantastic team behind him again, and it feels like Ospas is on the verge of repeating history. All right, Ball, let's move on to the other side of the matchup. Fnatic, a team that hasn't been to the grand final in quite some time. Feels like almost two years at this point. Exactly and two years. And having another chance is great for them because I think a lot of people, finally, when we saw the roster get put together, we thought, this is a chance. This is a chance for Boaster and Durka to finally do it again. They've had opportunities that, where they look like the best team in the EMEA, but they just weren't able to make it through. So for them to have this opportunity is huge for them. It was Masters Reykjavik. The first time they found themselves with the opportunity to take a title ended in tragedy, 3-0 defeat to Sentinels. But there's a weird amount of poetry going on here <laughs> with their own run at Sao Paulo. Yeah, I mean, still to this day, Sentinels, the only team, this original iteration of the roster, the only team that has made it into a grand final and taken a trophy with without dropping a single map. Fnatic could do that today. I think it's very challenging, but oh, I yeah. think rather than replacing the immaculate run, they'd just be happy to get the trophy itself. Yeah, and for the core of this team, the, the guys that were playing on that Reykjavik stage, Durka, Boaster, their coach, Mini, this means so much to them because over the last two years, since that happened, they have been through five different main roster players, have been trying to find the right mix. But here at Lock-In, it seems like they have the perfect recipe. Pick up a star-studded duo in the offseason of Leo and Chronicle. Keep the great strategy and ideas that you've always had, and it's just working, Paul. Yeah, and I think as well, something that's super impressive is Fnatic has gone through pressure stages multiple times. They've beaten Sentinels, crowd favorite. They've beaten Furia, crowd favorite. 
Then they go up and they face Navi as well. And it's just ridiculous what these guys are able to do because that was the narrative coming into this. How are they going to maintain and go up against the pressure? I think the super team has helped Boaster and Durka do that flawlessly. Trying to do to loud what's been done to them. Let's talk, though, about what this Fnatic squad is doing differently than what we've seen them do before. What is their game plan here at Lock-In? I think what's, uh, what's been interesting about their game plan at Lock-In is that they've stuck to what they know, which is coming up with really good ideas and having fantastic game plans. For example, you look at their fracture. They're really trying to optimize things, grabbing orbs constantly to have these really cool set plays around ultimates, always buying half armor. They've always had that nerdiness, but in this tournament, they've also been able to show the adaptability and the, the ability to perform under pressure like you were talking about. Now we put a bunch of focus on Osboss already. We'd be doing a disservice to the Fnatic squad if we didn't also take a look at Durka. I mean, it's just another star-studded player in Durka, somebody that you can rely on to have those pop-off moments. I mean, similar to Ospas, we have seen Durka starting off really hot. Then when he moves over to something like the Raze, he's widely playing entry. He's still gaining information for his team, but he's not putting up the same kind of figures. But when he is on that jet especially, this man has to be respected. He demands it. I think the parallels that we actually put on Fnatic and Sentinel's run to have an undefeated record so far in maps, yeah, maybe we won't get that today, but Durka is on, on uh, pace to actually have a similar Similar performance to Tense, which has been held up there Ooh. as a benchmark best of all time tournament performance. And Durka is there. Durka is there. What a title to steal if you can make it happen here today on the grand final stage. We only got about a minute or so left before we get down there. So it's time to put it all on the line. Predictions from the three of you down the line. Mimi, I'm starting with you. Who takes it today? I know that this is Loud's home crowd, and I know they have a lot of advantages going into this one, but I have to predict Fnatic. It seems like they are unstoppable right now. 3 0 Navi yesterday convinced me. Okay, Fnatic call over here. Seth, who are you going with? I'm going to differentiate. I'm going to go for Loud here, honestly, and that's because I was browsing Reddit. There's a nice little post there. It turns out <laughs> that the team that has eliminated an all right event since 2014, the team that has eliminated Cloud9, has then gone on oh. to lose to the inevitable winner oh of the this tournament. This man put his Cloud predictions in the air. Right here. Right here. What Cloud you got? What you got? It. Fnatic, and I think this one is probably the toughest match to predict the entire Ooh. time, but I'm going to go with them for specific reasons. Their adaptability, they've already played up to the pressure. I think they can take Loud with the home crowd still here, and Boaster's going to lift a trophy. Couple converts from yesterday's series, but we do have a split destiny today, which tells me we've got a great matchup ahead of us. It's time to get the match started. 30 teams have fallen, and after this best of five, only one will remain. Today, we get our champion. It's Loud versus Fnatic, the walking grand final starts right now. Eu nunca senti isso na minha vida. Nunca me imaginaria numa final assim tão rápido. A 3-0 for Fnatic. Stunned. Every day since then, we've been clawing and trying our best to make it back to that. To be the first team ever to lift two trophies in Valorant. It started out with 32 teams. And now it's down to two. Loud. They're the favorites. But we're coming to win. This time. We'll try to end it. Fnatic ain't here to mess around. We're here to play. I want to leave the Sadak with orgulho. I'm here to be an example. And this example will be legendary. Ashcock, give him a chance! Unreal performance in favor of Fnatic. Taking the trophy in Istanbul from Alfia. So we're gonna have to return the favor. Essa é pro Brasil, rapaziada. 
Faiso él. Y vamos para esa final. Fnatic with a second chance. It all comes down to this. Three map wins stand between our teams and being crowned king here on the stage in Sao Paulo. And there is no preparing yourself for the biggest crowd in Valorant land history. And it is so fun to see not only the players on loud play to the crowd, but also the crowd to be ruthless in their approach to how Fnatic walk on. Out for your 17 years old, they give the most moves out of anybody. Fnatic has played in front of big crowds before, but this is something different. This crowd 
does not want them to win a round. It is so heavily swayed in the favor of Loud, and for them, it would mean the world to win here in Sao Paulo. I mean, the swings in volume in this arena, depending on how the rounds are going, depending on how the maps are going, is going to be completely and utterly stark. Yeah. One round taken by Fnatic, a singular kill, and this place can be silenced in a moment. Louder looking to prevent that. They want to crank it up to 11. Not that I would suggest this, but I'm pretty sure you could watch this series with your eyes closed and you'd still know the way it's going based <laughs> oh, on the yeah. crowd noise. We're diving into the map. Vito's Bala, I'm coming to you first as we wait for the reveals. Yeah, I'm super interested to see what Loud Vito here should be Haven. They've not been playing this map. And also, Fnatic should be sticking to Pearl. Yeah. I think that's such a big advantage for them throughout their entire tournament. Every single team has been relying on Pearl, Loud included with that Harbor Viper comp. That's a big advantage. It is, and both these teams will ban away their opponent's strongest map in, in one way. Haven out for Fnatic, Pearl out for the side of Loud. We head to Ascent as our first pick here. Loud, this is interesting to see them choosing into this one so early into the series. I almost expect them to maybe try and show something special in the Lotus, something they had cooked up, but not to be. Fnatic go fracture the second. That they do. I mean, just fresh off a victory. This was the final map of the series just yesterday versus Navi. Granted, it was a little bit closer. 13 to 11, they were able to get that win. They're still feeling confident in the fracture. Pick and split now going to be coming through as well for Loud. That one's a weird one for me. Split is a, a double duelist for both sides, and I really don't know how those compositions go up against each other because you put so much into your stars. So that's one that I think could go either way. Lotus here, we haven't seen Loud play it yet. Fnatic, we had a chance to see it yesterday against Navi. It looked pretty solid. It did. There's big question about what Loud wants to play there. Map number five, we will land on Icebox. Fnatic, historically one of their best maps. But here at this tournament, we've seen Loud come out with that harbor composition and look fantastic there. I think Fnatic is super happy that even though Icebox has historically been one of their best, this is the place where they had Harbor Viper. This is the place where Loud can lean into the strengths that they've been working on all tournament long. So we start with a set where they get that Viper, but we still don't get that Harbor. It's a little weird because, like I said, they're getting out of Pearl. Loud has been using that to their advantage the entire time. And I love this Viper composition we saw from Loud last time. The ideas they had combining the snake bite with other utility, it was fantastic. But Fnatic has seen it now. Map one. Ascent, Prime Gaming Agent Select. Let's see what the teams have brought to the table. They've seen it, and that's why I'm curious to see if they continue to run it. We'll find out in a moment here as we get ready to go into Sonic's pick. And yes, they are going to be sticking through with this. I thought maybe they would change it up, flash it once, get that win over DRX, then swap, but no, they're sticking through. I think this comp select right here, this agent select sets the tone for the entire series. Both these teams are not known to be switching up comps too often. So to see this right off the bat, maybe that is a sign for things to come. Maybe we won't get any agent select changes throughout the entire series. It's going to be interesting to see, but we start this map on Ascent. Fnatic on the defense. This is a map where both, uh, or excuse me, where Durka can feel so incredibly comfortable to take space to op on this defense. And for the side allowed, they're going to have to shut him down. Yeah, for me, it's still all going to be about this Jet V Jet Durka versus Aspas. Let's see who comes out on top. The teams are ready to load into the map, so we're about to send it over to our casters. As we do, we're sending love out to Pansy, who can't be here with us today. And as we do, we send it over to Brandon Sideshow for the call. Gents, take it away. 32 teams whittled down to just two right here. And the stage is set, Josh, for a grand battle between Loud and Fnatic. And without doubt, no doubts in my mind, we are going to see history being made here today. It's guaranteed. There has never been a team to be able to acquire two titles in Valorant. No player that has lifted two trophies. But at the end of this match, we will have somebody, either Chronicle on the side of Fnatic, or that loud core of Sadak, Les, and Aspas, who won champions in 2022. And what a way it would be. The crowd are looking forward to it. The desk has set it up. That jet battle is what I'm going to be keeping my eyes on, too. Loud and no slouches on the attack side. And it is a long way to earning that trophy for both of these squads. Long way indeed. Five potential maps. For both sides eager to write that next chapter in their history books. But a pistol round is where it begins. And this is a very cautious approach for now, but an explosion. Dog's going to be leading the charge. Aspas following right behind it, and nothing in their sights to stop it, but Nana swarms at his feet. Aspas moves one of them. Alarm bot spotted. Turret as well. That's going to be clearing the backside of Jenny. And you're going to see Fnatic in general on this map go for set retakes. 
They don't like to flood in as the plant is going down. They like to be very structured, make sure there's nobody tree, clear out anybody that could be backstabbing. And they're going to realize here that all five players are towards sight and A main. So peace of mind towards Cat. Knife against it, flash up the top, can't detonate it though, suppressed. Fragment Nade going to be clearing a part of that one, and now here comes the waterfall right down and out. Fragment Nade finds it, and the fight's being taken. Fnatic laying claim to the map, laying claim to the site. It's all down to this. Less with the most to do, trying to spam it and boast the starting things up. Man's going to need a security detail with attempts like that, but a pistol round one nevertheless. What a way to approach it. What a mentality that that showcase is heading into round one. Boo's echoing out in the arena, but oh my. that speaks to me that not only is Boaster dialed in, but he's willing to get up in Loud's face early. Fnatic are all, you know, laughs and jokes, smiles when it's outside the server, but you can tell in those interview pieces, when Boaster's talking, his whole Valorant career, his life for the last few years has been focused on getting this title. And the trophy now is within touching distance, but like I said, the journey there to earn it is going to be an arduous one today. So close, you can almost taste it. Okay, crossfire setup. Lovely opener here for Loud, but a return from Durka. Paranoia. That's onto his face, might have been friendly fire, but okay, Aspas completely separated from the rest of his team now. It's getting a little bit awkward still. The spam through the walls. You've handed the rifle over to Aspas with the Bulldog. This guy can make short work of many targets. Awkward for Chronicle, too. It's a good zero point. It finds both of them a close mid. But Chronicle, if he had committed to that fight, would have been in dangerous territory if they had turned on him. It's a weird situation with Boaster committed. Everybody weak on Loud, but you can't afford to give this round away if you're in the Fnatic camp. All it takes is that one reaction. Crosshair onto the head to be found, and Alfie has missed advantage it. Advantage turned around. Yep, and the timing is missed. Alfie, none the wiser. Contact is the name of the game, and well, the angles watched. Alfie falls, and it's up to Chronicle. Turned up, bites his time, waits it out. Here's the plan, but denies. Now he's got backup teammates helping him. And it should be safe hands. So much to do for two years. Spike in his hands with six seconds remaining. Absolutely unwinnable, unless Boaster gives away his life, but no. Scurries away, tail between his legs. But it is that round win that he was hunting for. And what a difference. Boaster immediately forced to make an about face on his mentality from round one to round two. Goes for the knife swagger kill in the pistol. And like you said, Brent, forced to just escape with his dignity intact. Look at that record all time from Loud. I said no teams won two titles, but Loud are different. They've only ever lost to two squads. The old crew, the current NRG core. They've only lost four series ever. 34 and four, the record. Here comes Durka. Tiles crunch play, but no one to receive the brutal end of that one. Instead, it's gonna be up to Leo. Here's the trailblazer. This is an instant response. Dash forwards on top of generator now. Cuts up the angles. And who's that? Bunker down and to the back of the site in hell. It's Alfier and up close and personal, just the way he likes it. But a trade nevertheless, that's going to be the return of fire. And do they want to try and get aggressive? Doesn't look likely. Paranoia might have set something up, a bit of spam now. Equal damage exchange on both parts. Less is on the lurk as well. Ooh, He's got a pinch goodness. coming from Catwalk. And Boaster might not be ready for this. Pulling down so low, this. Last layer, final element to it. TP into the site, though. It's a faster play by Fnatic still. They want to try and take this one before they can set up. Loud, anchoring the positions. Kawazin, unknown. Did not know where the players were coming from still. Doubled up in hell. Here comes Les. And Loud are just demonic. Great backstab play by Les there. And Fnatic committed to the round. That is not a bonus in round three. Look at him coming through the pinch. I love what Boaster does on these retakes, the way that he always is teleporting into the smoke. But that means that he's not there to watch the pinch coming through, the backstab, the lurk play. 
Less is good for it, and that applies pressure early. Fnatic dropped down onto an eco. That's all of the damage that was done in round two, coming back to bite them. So answered in kind. Fight trying to be taken here. You can see that Util once more clearing the way. It's a louder feeling quite comfortable. Grabbing that orb. Steady as it goes. Loud love to put a focus on these A-site hits. They're very drilled with them. Even when Aspas didn't perform his best, their attacking protocols and the set plays, the teamwork, it's all really good. It's their bread and butter. And look at this. Three of the players are loud, just funneling onto the one side of the site. They always have multiple players facing. It's very difficult to anchor the A site against them because when you swing from dice or generator, you're going to be facing two, three players from loud, all just slowly getting into the site and watching for you. Here's Les again. Oh my goodness, shots going a little bit wide, but swarm in the position. Doesn't clear the corner. Oh, Leo, double spray down. Tries to pick up a bit of an upgrade, 18 bullets, and my goodness, it gets hairy, but eventually closed out. Safe hands from Sadak, the IGL of this squad. A small limiter onto the economy, but nothing that Loud can't shake off quickly. And this map, of course, the first one in the series, is favoured towards Loud. They've looked better, and it's one of the teams that's been the best of all time with the former roster, and they don't look like they're slowing down now, versus Fnatic's ascent that was really dodgy in the past, but has just been slowly refined with the addition of Leo and Chronicle. Leo fighting here with Durka in mid, looking to break a dart for him, perhaps? This Viper Orb that gets bloomed is really tough for Durka because it can drop at any time. It is not like an omen smoke, and he just oh my. just gets out the way. They seem to know, though. He know the position and the dash into the wall. What a blunder. Loud quick to capitalize, and look at the squeeze that's occurring. Leo has to back up, has to back away, and he does claim the one. Still, Seekers now. He used to try and take that market position. Loud wondering what's going on, and Leo goes for it. Okay, Hunter's Fury up close, and a flash play. What is that? Fnatic cooking up plays out of nowhere. Incredible coordination. That's such an unorthodox position to ult from, but that's Leo to a T, isn't it? Always doing something new on Initiator. And now the pressure on these final two players from Loud. Barely any health between them. Spike in hand, that's about the only saving grace. What is going on there? Clear. The players are low still. Leo just not quite ready for it. Maybe looking at the mini-map or looking towards tiles. Communicating, not focused on what's going on in front of him, and it's opened a gap. Oh, and it cleared their way through. Look at that. Viper wall up still. The angle's not watched for, and Alvia this time will not be caught unaware. Great stuff. Very diligent. And what a set play from Fnatic. They were throwing those out many times in the semi-final against Na'Vi. Not necessarily on this map, of course, but on Fracture, we saw such awesome set coordinated aggression. This team has now taken all of that set play excellence from Boaster, from Mini, and added to it the intuition of players like Leo and Chronicle. It's a dangerous mix. It's working so well for them at this tournament. The ability to cook up plays like that on the fly. No hesitancy. Well-earned round for Fnatic now. So Chronicles moved his way over to B, playing with the Odin there to look to deny Les's lockdown, I would assume. A bit of a uh, bit of a passive setup too from Alphia, but it's the A side of the map that's getting tested, and that is really common for Loud. They're going to end A frequently. Mid-control, A splits, A bursts. They always have enjoyed that side of the map. Feels to me like that's where Sadak is the most comfortable. Given two years in an advanced position, he has his ult to reposition at a moment's notice. So not too worried about him just watching that, but it looks like setting up now for bit of that tree control. Trailblazer. Once more, Aspas is the one who's making sure that he can claim and vacuum up all that space. Revealed though, still has to hug the wall. Paranoia goes so wide, Durka. Tries to go for a bite of the apple, but he's pushed back nevertheless. Now we see it. Viper's Pit dropped down. The strength of this composition 
comes from this big ultimate. We saw DRX getting faulted time and time again, but this time Fnatic are not going to be deterred. They want to try and take this one, jumping down onto the site. Up top, and as Durku claims the first, that jet head-to-head -head manifest. Tuiz has ulted behind them, and the spike is not inside the pit. But it is chaos. It's anyone's game right now, anyone's rounds. Tap of the spike, seeing if they can force the positioning. It's Chronicle, unaware of any sort of players in his sight lines. The pit dropped down, down two to two v two. And Bose is taking it, half of the defuse, gets out of his life, and Leo, what is that? Three in a round, and he just closes it out. It's more than safe hands at this point, Josh. The man's pulling them ahead. He's unbelievable. This 19-year-old player, the prince that was promised of initiators from EMEA, has just made such a difference to this squad. He's their best player. He's the best player in this tournament from Fnatic. And that is a very, very tough bar. When you're playing it with players like Dirk, Alfie, Chronicle, being the best player on the squad is absurd. 11 and 4 currently, dominates Haven, rules ascent. 35% clutch rate in the tournament, by the way. Ridiculous. Almost unheard of. And what is the answer going to be from Loud? This is bold from Durka. The Viper Wall makes it very difficult to challenge this position because if it goes up and down, anyone could be Creeping behind it. And they're crawling. A lovely one claim, still. Shock Dark Chronicle, bit of a bailout. Hold down a mouse one, and they all come tumbling down. And you saw there as well a gorgeous Shock Dark. Ooh. To be able to knock Kalanzine out of his trailblazer. I mean, Leo's got it all, the utility, the game sense, it's all there to match. And what does Two E's do in this position? The arena holds their breath. Praying for that miracle. Not handed any easy ones. Alfie here, quick to shut it down. Fnatic have so many ideas on the defensive side. Leo's frequently going to be throwing these really deep darts that inform rotates. And when you have a team like Loud that loves stacking on one side of the map, running a lot of 4 1 executes, those darts get really good value. And so far, too, we've just seen fantastic coordination between, especially, I want to point out, Bren, the two new players on Fnatic. The Hunter's Fury and the Flash, that's Leo, that's Chronicle. That's not the core players on Fnatic. This round too, the shock dart to cancel the Trailblazer and then Chronicle spraying everybody down with the Odin. Those are the two new guys. And when I looked at this Fnatic squad, and to be honest, the Loud squad too, I thought both teams would need more time to win a trophy. Because each team had made two roster moves in the off season. But I've spoken at length about Leo. Chronicle though, I want to wax lyrical for a second about this guy because he has been so close to winning two trophies before. He was widely regarded as the best player in the world at the end of 2021 when he won Berlin and almost took champions in the same year. But his 2022 season was just miserable. He got denied that land by two milliseconds, if you remember that game. Dreams crushed under the weight of political forces out of his control. And he was just left as a loose end after LCQ. But his individual impact is insane for Fnatic and he's close to being the only repeat winner in Valorant history. Chronicle has an unreal story that it feels like he's close to a culmination of some kind of arc in this tournament. Wow, are going to be doing everything to deny that. They've got their eyes also set on a similar goal, that back-to-back -back title, a trophy lift for them, especially with this loud core, early presence. Smores, a similar approach. Loud, they do this time and time again. If you've been watching their games, they love to play heavy and hard here for this A main control. Suppression onto Kalanzine. They're normally going to follow the Trailblazer if they do hit A. So that's going to keep three players from Fnatic on this side of the map. Durka's operator doesn't really have a great way of being cleared. Seems like a good position to play, in my opinion. Off to the side, the Trailblazer, a wider swing from Sadak, lucky to get out alive, and he does a decent amount of damage. Bruising Durka, but not dissuading him, going back for more. Darlighting him up, how does Sadak claim that one? But it's an even fight, made a bit less so. Fnatic are returning fire. And a bit of a pause in the round. Boaster teleports behind them. That's with the jump peak, he knows. He's gonna be aware of this. Kawazin's alone on the 
just on the side planning. There's no backup. Every angle has to be watched for, and it's just looking now impossible. Doors closed in their face. Lockdown is going to be pushing them deep into wine. It's a Sack heavy positioning known. Heavy commitment of an ultimate, but that just shows you how determined Fnatic are to break the economy again of Loud. Look at the layers of smokes here. Weapon out, flash connect. Oh, trying to return it. Spray down. Boaster with a backstab. It's amazing stuff. Two ults used, but they're both perfect. Boaster never overstepping, never overflanking. Just causing chaos in the ranks. Pulling less back. And then he's exactly there when his team needs him, playing anti-flash, ready to swing. What incredible value Durka got with the Operator, too. It's one of the major factors here that other teams haven't punished Loud for. There is no Sova in this comp, right? Nice. There's no drone to be able to go in. There's no recon dart. The Opera can hold that angle for a long time. Yep, certainly. Trailblazer's not going to be pushing you off that angle. Now emphasis placed. Look at this. Durka wants to take the fight straight down mid. Now this is, this is harder, because he's going to have smokes in his face, guaranteed. Indeed he does. Loud not messing around, though. Knocked down to the weaker weapons. And here we go. Anything but patient. It's fast. It's rapid. They want to take control of this one. Stun onto Poster. Where is he TP into? Cuts across the angle. There's a smoke in his way, and they are none the wiser loud. Getting silenced here. The tap of the spike rotates around. It's a little bit awkward, but guess what? It's a triple for Poster, Durka. All reliable. And two at the end, that's the cherry on top. Fnatic looks so good. This was supposed to be Loud's best chance of being able to start the series out on a good footing. They're insane on Ascent. You saw the stat earlier. Nobody ever beats them on this map. One loss all time. It used to be Fnatic's worst. But they look so prepared. And the teamwork has just kept building on Ascent with the addition of Leon Chronicle. Everybody else looks so much better too. Louder, steadily running out of room here in this first half. Three more rounds going to be standing between them and the end of it. And their defense side is very good. Their defense side is normally better on Ascent, but Loud still needs some breathing room. It's right now leaving no room for error with the start of this best of five grand finals here in Sao Paulo. Same play as before. The dog to clear, counter spam from Aspas. No rewards gained from that one still. It's now a contact play and this is incredibly risky. Thought he was looking to inquire about pushing that smoke. No, backs away. I think something like that might be a good idea, though. From Loud's perspective, they need to break down these defensive protocols by Fnatic. Throw something new in there. Trying to reclear. Posts on a high ground angle here. Spots just Kawazin. Now the Seekers. Great spam. Again, Boaster. It's good for it. Knows that there could have been a player pushing up behind it still. He'll going to be active now, the Seekers. One after another, layering that Util. Pushing forwards, and they want to fight for this. A bit of running gun, Lovely job done, still need to deal with Leo. Ready and waiting, he's been performing miracles. Jump in, hop in, round the side, but Les is that extra guy. And he's making it so damn hard. Still, the jiggle with the movement, out the air, traded. Down to Chronicle, and how does he want to play this in a 1v3? Odin's not ideal for it. Money in his back pocket, though. Could play this if he wants to, but so many angles watched. and. Cautious tail from him as he tries to clear it, but Loud to get that additional round. And that is what I wanted to see from Loud. Make the pathing unusual. Pushing up there towards heaven is great, because those players on site don't quite know how to react. Two players in heaven, Boaster didn't realize they were pushing towards him. He assumed it was an A split. Throwing in a little curveball there is excellent from Loud. It gets them back in, build an economical cushion, and now you can hit them with some kind of fast A hit or an A split that ends in a Viper ult. And if you manage to get four on the board, this isn't a bad attacking half. But are they going to be aiming to stop all of that and more? 
Durka keeps looking for these opportunities in mid, despite the fact he's got the Viper Orb in his face. And Boaster, what a bold play this is. Oh, this. Surely, oh my, timing is everything. Didn't quite have the window of opportunity. It's up to Chronicle to see if he can again push them away. And the unforced errors creeping in here from Fnatic are going to let Loud back into the game. Leo, anti-flash position, Tara. At his back, broken though. Now the Util dodges it to the side. Leo though cannot withstand it. Up to Alfie here. Two players swarm his position. Claims a second. Not too bad. But it's loud all day long. Sailing away in this round. Pop flash play, Chronicle not allowed anything additional. Well, after the misstep from Boaster, all the rest is excellent from Loud. Sending that flash in and dealing with Leo, who's normally good for one in that situation, but it's the punish onto Durka that I really love. The awareness to know that off Leo's contact, Durka's gonna updraft and go for some kind of knife play. I think that's an excellent idea from Fnatic, and Loud are already one step ahead, and they have turned this. Round 10 and 11 have made this a good half. They'd be loving it if they can get the final one. Five rounds on a scent attack. Beautiful beginning. Look at how difficult it is for Durka to be able to get any space in mid or B main. These are normally areas where Jet Oppers thrive, but as the wall fades, it gives him the sight line. Durka quick to meet his match here. Lockdown going to be placed. Hunter's Fury from the back of the site means that is taken care of. Answered in kind with an ultimate over the top. That's fast, fast dashing. Once more, Leo's there. And it's a bit awkward, it's a bit strained, but two years, he's out on an island. No help from the rest of his team, down to just two. It's looking all but sealed for Fnatic to get that eighth round. Tadak, reset, lovely job. Is that a bit of an overheat from Leo, perhaps? Tries to find it, but it is just left up to the IGL, and he will be denied any opportunity of making the most of that. Eight to four, that's going to be that score line. Very good half from Fnatic, but I do think Cloud recovered it. It's back into winnable territory here. Having said that, Cloud are expected to win on Ascent. It's their best. Has looked a bit dodgy in the past from Fnatic. It would be a fell blow for Cloud to lose their home ground early. Pistol round is going to mean so much. Absolutely will, but the first half locked up here and hopefully a very long grand finals. Let's send it down to Yinsu, who's down on the floor. Thank you very much, Brent and SciShow. I'm joined by Buzz from DRX. It's great to have you in the venue today, Buzz. What did you make of the first half we just saw? Um, I think Fnatic played really, really, really good, but I think the Raul showed their uh, weakness because they play with the two smokes comp. Uh, so the, the attack over two smokes is not really good, but Fnatic really played well. They retake well and everything was good, but. Let's, I don't know how it's going to be in defense, but the Viper is one of the strongest uh, agents in defense, so I don't know how it's going to be, but I don't know, yeah. But well, oh. Laudu could win this, I think. Oh, well, obviously you played against Loud already and in front of a crowd that was very similar. They were not cheering for you, they were cheering for the other team. So what was it like to play uh, in front of the home crowd here, and how much pressure do you think the Fnatic players are under right now? Um, honestly, I, I really enjoyed a lot with the uh, Brazilian crowd, a uh, crowd, even they, even though they are not supporting us. But it was a really good experience, and it was really funny. Even though we lo we lost, I, I was I was enjoyed so much. But I think the uh, Fnatic players, they they enjoy enjoying as well. Like, so I don't I don't worry about them. How difficult is it, do you think, to just ignore the crowd? Like, what did you do? I, I I didn't ignore the crowd, but I just enjoy like even they are not supporting us. Like, but I like okay, they are supporting us. They are supporting us. Yes, you know. Oh, you, you gotta pretend. You yeah, gotta yeah, pretend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, uh, you guys heard it from Buzz here. He thinks loud. They have a chance in the second half as they move to their defense. Brandon Saisho, I'm gonna throw this back to you. It's always been their stronger side. Now loud gonna be in comfortable territory as we look towards that second half of map one in our grand finals here in Sao Paulo. The defense side is unusual with this composition as well. Sadak uses these snake bites extremely well. 
And that is exactly where I was going to go with this too. Fnatic are yet to drop a map at lock-in. They have been perfect so far. We'll see how the pistol goes, but I'm pretty sure everybody expected this finally would be the time where oh. Fnatic met their match. Brave from Aspas. He almost looked like he wanted to take the fight to them. But no. Dodges around, plays around their own Viper Orb. And it's a strange setup here, actually, from Loud. They only used this Viper Wall a single time in the game against DRX. And they ended up losing that, losing that round. Obviously quite difficult to get through, though, if it is an A split. Alex seemed to have the read of this one, though, still. Look at this setup. Potential trap play, less if you're going to be taking contact, or at least the turret is. There's yeah. going to be a flash on the backside of this one. Turret sees it, flash play, and it's a double swing. Collapsed! <laughs> Two fall. Fnatic left to scramble. What a great trap. I love that play by Loud. Adding something that we didn't see throughout the entirety of their game on Ascent. A brand new play that Loud bring out for the pistol round. Snake bite relieves that. The spike is a boaster. Wow, that's an important fight to win. He's still here, he's still waiting. What is occurring? It's pandemonium. The knife kill from Sonic, and he's still alive. He's still kicking. Time running low, though. 12 seconds. It has to be fast, it has to be loose. Paranoia, not going to have that tool in their back pocket for this one, and the plan has to be stuck inside the smoke out here, covering. They don't have control at the back of the site. They don't know if anyone's here. That's why they're trying to clear it. Still, seem to be a little bit more comfortable now. Sadak so low. One stray bullet would have found him. Could have evened up this battle. Could have evened up the fight. And Boaster, maybe a little bit too overexcited there. Alpha here. How much can you do? Viper's pit around the side. Flash blocks. Paranoia though. The layers on layers. Loud recover that. What did I just witness? An insane trap play off the rip to make it a 5v3. And then this. <laughs> Sadak's bringing a knife to a gunfight and Catwalk who comes out on top. Unbelievable. Leo's left rattled. Boaster should have done enough to equalize. But that is an absurd round. And Louder back to their classic defensive setup here. The Killjoy utility will pivot from A to B, but you see the Viper Wall used for flood retaking, set retaking over on the B site, and these snake bites are very difficult to get through. That's brutal. What are you going to do? Disrespect it? Sadak is up close, holding the angle. Backs away, though, just in case there was any sort of presence. And the whole reason that Sadak is close there is to check and see if Boaster has TP'd across. Dark Flash reclearance. This setup, though, from Loud doesn't have a great ability to retake A main in the mid round. There's no KO there to be able to reflash it. So now that Fnatic have taken A main, they probably have it for the rest of the round. So they can leave, and Loud will probably never have great information about whether or not Fnatic could re hit A. I like how Boaster's playing this one, but you've got to remember Fnatic is still at a fairly heavy gun disadvantage here. Absolutely. Not favored when it comes down to any of those duels, any of those gunfights. Game plan seems to be just farm up the orbs, take control of main, make sure that they can build up these ultimates for a future battle where they're going to be a little bit more even. And Fnatic have been very diligent about that. Mimi on the desk was talking about it when it came to their Fracture gameplay, but they do it on all of the maps. Armbos there, triggers. No play off of it, but it's just that spam. It's Down a fake. 20 seconds. It's it going to be fake. an A split. Spike is leaning towards A, but they've got to deal with Sadak. Dart at his back still, he's cool, calm, and collected. Removing the util, and they're running out of time. This could be a disaster for Fnatic. Overcooking this one. Can't be saving these pistols, not into this round. And Sadak will answer kindly. Very clean round from Loud. Prime game of Flawless. Puts them into a position to start this comeback. Have they got some kind of bonus round cooking here? You know, it's not like Sadak was able to build up to his ultimate there. 
even with the eco kills towards the end. So there's nothing major to craft a game plan around. Okay, we're back to the A Viper wall, favoring it a lot more than they did against DRX. Possibly just worried about Fnatic doing their homework. So this lineup from Chronicle is going to clear out Wine really heavily. And what I noticed watching the Fnatic attack is that they are so lineup reliant. All of their players have lineups for everything. But it means that they start their executes a long way away from the site. And that gives the defenders just a brief extra moment to react. Drawing through a timing. The potential is there for Boaster. Looks like he might want to go for this one, but no. Viper Wall in his face pushes him back, jump spotting from two years. No one in his sight line. It's so delicate from Fnatic. Waiting around, a bit of presence shown though. Alarm bot's cleared. Knife in, Boaster. How do you win this one? Well, his team's going to be helping him out. Choke point contained, doubled up position, Aspas. How do you bail yourself out? Dash active. A bit of help for them, but already the damage is done. Fnatic have claimed this site, gonna start to get this plant down. Still, play to be made. Dashes forward, cuts it up, they know Alfie is here. And he loses the battle. Handing over a rifle, Aspas is deadly. Vandal in his hands. Flick at a wrist, dodging, weaving. And buckling underneath it, it's Fnatic though. That Come out on top. Decent round from Fnatic, creating some mid-pressure by breaking that alarm bot. And economic damage against Boaster's team it doesn't really do too much. This Fnatic squad is so committed to running light armor in pretty much every round to avoid having to eco as much as other teams. Definitely something to keep your eyes on. Maybe you can spot those moments where a Phantom Headshot potentially does more than it's it otherwise would, but overall, it means that when they come into rounds like this, even though it was a decent bonus from Loud, Fnatic is still looking pretty. That is Obvious a big push. push. He's alone, he's isolated, stunned up, ah, that is disgusting. No right to win that one. Could barely rattle off any bullets, yet still he does. It's a massive opener. Kawanzin using one of his flashes and peeking behind it to clear tiles. Three players are still going to be leaning A on the defense because of all of this information that Kawanzin is getting. But at Push some deep. point, he may overstep. I mean, look at these players from Cat. They're going that to see him. All about that fight. Overstaying is welcome in tiles. Kawanzin, he did get good information, but pays for it with his life. Fnatic, massive advantage heading into this round. And a stampede is going to start rumbling its way over towards the B site. This has got to just be a save from Loud. You can't get the B retake working, especially with Sadak's wall committed on the opposite side and the IGL himself in the spawn queue. Fnatic are going to get a freebie here. And Chronicle one away from the Null Command being online. There's a few errors creeping into Loud's game here, right? Aspas is not having a great game himself, 5 and 12 currently, and looked really timid in round 15 when he was taking that fight with the Spectre. Just dancing around, not willing to really fight anybody on even footing. Of course, with the inferior weapon, but I normally expect Aspas to be more confident and aggressive than that. Brimming with it. And now in this round, you know, you should really be able to take Alfie out like that. Fnatic's individual prowess, the EMEA super team, the brilliance exuding from each of these players is carrying them over the line in moments like that. Raw skill. It's been a clear difference maker, as we've been mentioning before. Fnatic seems like they broke barely a sweat at times. Listen, don't get me wrong, pushed here and there on a map or two, but not dropping a single one to make their way all the way to this grand finals. The weaponry is not great here. Kawanzin with the Guardian, Sadak with a Spectre. Aspas still taking the Operator over to A main. I would imagine here that Chronicle is going to want to claim this ult orb at some point in the round. 
But the A main setup is difficult to break with the one way, with the snake bites. Risky Ash. for Kawanzin, but he does a lot of damage thanks to the Guardian he's got on board. Goodness me. Yeah, Alpha Year walking away, a bit wounded, limping. Dash though from Aspar, starting to fade. Seems to be aware. Boaster's up to no good, and he's lurking, creeping, crawling in mid. Is that a fight that's about to be taken? Smoke to block off some sort of angle. I mean, this Still is going to held. This looks like it's going to be a B hit here with Boaster going down. It's all up to these players in B main. In that 4v5, Seekers instantly. Dart lights him up, and well, an easy target. Less. Basically, you have paper mache standing between him and the bullets. He's no longer living. Plant's going to go down, no command, pushing him back, so no abilities to go, to go for that fast flood retake here. Yeah, but here's, here's where we get to see the Viper Wall in action. How do Fnatic set up in the post plants to still support each other? Oh, alarm bot. You can see them trying to get the Warbang kill. It's a cute play. Alpha yet spotted. 42 health. And now he can just bide his time. He can wait it out. He can be a bit of a nuisance for them. Still loud, looking to try and take this one. Players are low, though, and another dart revealed. Leo set up. And how do you clear him out? Just absolutely bunkered. Time running low. Spike. Barely any time left to play with. What is that? Sadak making the most. Leo, how do you hold on? 33 health, but he's done enough. The players are loud, trying to vacate, trying to save their weapons. They will do just that, but purely consolation, Josh. It's Fnatic who win the round. And Fnatic get themselves up to an 11-6 lead. Knocking Loud's economy back down again. And two rounds away from taking Loud's home ground. I think Alpha Yet does so well in this round too. Once he gets spotted in mid to just delay because it burns so much time off the clock and eventually the clock was Loud's biggest enemy. Fraud is gonna have to have some words with his team here. They're giving up early picks, losing those initial battles. And then not quite able to hold on to the site. We were taking a look at the Jet head-to-head -head early. You expect Aspas to be able to get into more positions where he can control the map. It feels very much like Fnatic are choking him out. Six and 13 here. Didn't play incredibly on an individual level when Loud went up against DRX, but that time Sadak's calling, the game plan bailed them out. It is going to have to be a masterclass on the defense side to recover this. And it's a big blow. It's a BO5, so a long way yet. But Loud should have been the favorites in map one. Oh yeah. And things only get more difficult for the Brazilian hometown squad after this. Not a great start to their hopes and dreams of trying to grab that back-to-back -back title. To lift the trophy once more in front of that hometown crowd. Fnatic are going to be joyous, though. This is a great lead for them. 11 to 6. Knife at the back. Kawazin, no way. No chance of him using any UTL. This is fast. Okay, Fnatic. Not wasting any time. Moving forwards, though. This Viper Wall is awkward. How do you. Maneuver your way around this one. Still two players anchoring it to the back, so Loud comfortable for now. Still hot flash play, and there's the response. Chronicle there, Judge in the back line. Fearless from Boaster. Seven, Takes eight, the fight eight. anyway. Doubled up though, that is gonna be nice. Making it easy for them. And Leo, a minute left. But the game plan has crumbled. Whatever timeout Loud has taken. Paying dividends. Leo's ice cold in these situations. It's a very difficult one to win. But you can see that he's happy to be patient, disciplined. See if Lauda going to make any mistakes and give him a free one. 30 seconds off angle by two years is far too good. No way. The movement from Leo doesn't make himself an easy target. And now he's found it down to that 1v2. Spike in his hands. And the defenders spread out. They didn't realize the spike was down. One less problem to deal with, but a swing off the turret. That's discipline. Well played there by Loud. 
a necessary round to get themselves back into things when their economy was looking poor too. Only a judge on Sadak, but he still made things work. Sadak now with Pit too. So getting that into a crucial position, maybe this can, this can be leveraged into a little, a little run, a little spree of rounds here. With how disciplined Fnatic are in the first 30 seconds, usually, you know, all of these lineups to clear different areas and give them information, it, it does feel difficult for the more aggressive players like Aspas and Kawanzin to get their value early. Trouble as he used, sets him up on the angle, Alfie is spotted. But a smoke from Boaster, really nice to bail him out. Yeah, relieves it. Free to cross. Now you start to see that Vipers peel. We were talking about this earlier. That is a difficult one to bypass. It's horrible. But at the same time, Fnatic could group up and go for an A pop or a B pop, and they just don't have to deal with it at all. Drone use close. Aspas. Disrespect shown. There's no shot, man. He's still got the dash, but all that util. Lobbed at his face. Has to back away now to the rest of the site. Lockdown placed. Not in a spammable angle. Nothing to all this one. Hunter's Fury leads the charge, leads them in. Jumping, skipping, straight past the Nano Swarms, but Durga's taking so much damage, and wow! That's was trying to avoid it. Anchoring into the back of the site. It's a lovely collection of utility, but it's still loud with the edge. Plant down, though. B main control held by Leo. Boaster, a close corner. Now they're going to have to clear this one. They have a flash, but do they decide to put it in that place? No, Tiger doesn't one. quite catch him. False information potentially. Does Sadhak still clear this one? Knife against them. He does. Runs out. No trade in sight still. Less is there. And Leo's made it dangerous. But down to Chronicle. 1v2. Can he do it? Time is ticking. Time has been bought. No util in his hands. Back of the site cleared. Finds an easy fight. Down to two years. And this is so dangerous. Has to stick it. It's the percentage play, but the running gun forwards. And Fnatic find themselves on that map point. Incredible stuff there from Leo from Chronicle. Just the amount of pressure that Fnatic are under and still able to generate these rounds is absurd. First of all, great ult combo there, right? Baiting Aspas into the corner, knowing that they'd left a gap and punishing. Love to see that. And then Leo tucks himself into the logs, gets a snake bite at his feet, and still manages to get value from the position and set up Chronicle for the 1v2. Loud now with a massive ditch to dig themselves out of. Durka, he's not wasting any time, is he? Overstays his welcome towards main, though. That was contained nicely. Still, Leo. God, man, this guy's util. He almost got two. He's knocked him down quite low, hasn't he? Nana Swarm. Moving forwards, Boaster, that's a TP close. There's a lot of it. They're all going to be closed now as well, so the site given up, but Louder setting up for a faster play, and it has to be a win. What is the what is the plan here from Fnatic to counter the lockdown? They must have known that it was available in the round, but they didn't have anybody backstabbing towards Catwalk. This round feels a little rushed from Fnatic. Yeah, they don't have the foresight quite. It's given Loud this opening. Spike. Being defused, half on it already. If your plan is to spam, it's not a particularly good one. Two years already gained half, still. He gets taken down. Flank as well, well coming through. down, and here's that reflank out for you. He might be the difference maker, he might just shut it down, but no. Kawazin, the trust in his teammates, extends the play for but a moment. And that is a classic loud retake. Very aggressive, leave one player on the spike. They did it with two years, and then Kawazin to get the other half. But that one's brutal. Everybody on Loud Falls, their economy is in no better spot. Each one of these rounds is blood, sweat, and tears just to get one point on the board. Steal one round away from Fnatic, who has sat still at map point with four future rounds, future opportunities to convert. No room for error. That's what Loud are dealing with. But for Fnatic, too, they can't rush things. That round was sloppy. Durka just looked like he wanted it over. He was already, already thinking about Fracture. So this time it is Fnatic who are taking their time with it. No funny business, no. 
Hard fight towards A main, loud instead. Just waiting, three players anchored onto A. Kawazin jump, speed, uh, jump spotting as well, getting that information in the mid-round. Now, why do I get the feeling we're about to see something silly from Boaster? He's picked up the ult orb to get his omen ult online, and the spike's headed in the opposite direction. Is this just him controlling a main and applying some pressure and meeting back up with the rest of his team? Very possible. Seems likely. Pixel angle. Sadak doesn't have the gun for the job, does he? Spectre, barely even a tickle, no damage done. But backs away now. Not from the rest of his team, TP in play, and there's that ult that he picked up. Dash forwards, cutting it across. It's a coordinated play, it's a coordinated strike! The Fnatic turning the arena into a library, but Loud have got to do the most now to try and upset that. Knives in Aspas's hand, what is the queue he's waiting for? Dashing to the side, spots a player, pings it out. One kill found, still got the Knives. An Let upgrade in the weapon. Less has cleared out B main as well. But it's a 2v3, make it a 1v3, Aspas. Just nigh impossible to keep them in the map. On their favored stationary ground, still held down. And that 13th round is claimed. Fnatic off to a fantastic lead. First blood in the series for the EMEA Super Team. Showcasing here in Sao Paulo that home territory means nothing. Home ground advantage means nothing. They battled against the crowd, and they battled against Loud's favorite map pick, and come out on top, still undefeated. Still yet to drop a map. Remember that they got 3-0 the last time that this team went to a grand final. This is their first opportunity since our inaugural LAN in Valorant for Boaster to lift the trophy with Durka. All the way back, 2021 of Reykjavik. They've got their sights set on that trophy to lift it. Is that dream come true? But obviously, any more maps left to be played before they even start thinking about it. And I think you've got to give such incredible credit to Leo. He's been their best player in the tournament so far. My bet for tournament MVP. And he was the difference maker in so many of these rounds. Top of the scoreboard, that consistent factor over and over again. These highlights just iterating it. Fnatic have come prepared for this fight. A little bit bloodied, but still looking comfortable. That's going to do it for map number one. We'll see you just after this for the continuation of the series. you wings
fly, I'm in a different climate. I'm a diamond, one of a kind. Cut ten face like a Gemini. I shine when I'm in the light. Catch a night, fly, I'm in a different climate. Hello and welcome back to Sao Paulo, where Fnatic come away with a massive map one victory over Loud in 13 and 8 fast. And we're going to break down all the happenings of that map. But I'm sorry, can we start with the fact that Poster went for a round one knife in the <laughs> grand final? What is wrong with that man? Trying to put the fear of God in him, you know? I think it might have worked. I mean, what a way to set the tone for the entire matchup. But what a game from Fnatic. They keep their flawless streak. They send Loud to have their second ever loss on this map. And the way they played it was absolutely fantastic. I think this Viper comp is definitely something that can be a little hard to play around, a little bit hard to think about. But Fnatic called against it perfectly. Yeah, the only other loss was against Optic in their very first Grand Finals appearance. So this is their third now. And you really did expect Josh and Bren were mentioning it, the fact that they should be favored on this map, but I think Fnatic came out with the exact same ultimate prowess that we saw on Fracture on this map too. This round five from Leo was phenomenal. I'm surprised that Loud is giving them the space to have this sort of opportunity. The pause in the approach was really what killed them here, but Chronicle and Leo are working so well together. And that was what was fantastic for Fnatic this map. They came in with a good game plan of how to counter out this fight where you wait for utility to go down, you pop with these faster takes, but they also had great calls on the fly, particularly with Leo with Chronicle, like you're talking about, that coordination was on point, and the quickness at which they come up with these plans is so impressive. Yeah, Fnatic playing with fluidity from the very early rounds, Achilles, and uh, taking a look at one specific matchup, we've already said his name plenty, Leo, but we also have to talk about the other side, Kawanzine, yeah. putting a big focus on this one because Leo feels like he's in his comfort zone. No, he absolutely has, and I mean, the prince that was promised, as, jo as Sideshow put it there on the cast, this guy has been an absolute treat, a front runner for MVP, and he kicks off this series just absolutely crushing. 329 coming out on this initiator, a 3.0 KD. Kawazin on the opposite side. We didn't see the same sort of impact performances from him, the same plays that we've seen from Kawazin in the past, but Leo was all over this map. I think part of it is because this game was not, rel I mean, not relatively close, and I think Kawazin sure. is the guy who is able to actually help Loud when it's in chaos. For Leo, his first Grand Finals appearance here, he does that, 23 and 12, top fragger on the server. 19 years old. It's finals MVP level stuff if Woo! he continues this type of run. And he's already had a tournament. Yeah, he very much is on that course. It is incredible to watch this guy play. And for Loud, it puts him in such a tough position because even when it felt like they had these good ideas, when they found the key back in, Fnatic has that star power. They have Leo, they have Chronicle clutching up in those late rounds. I think the biggest concern for me is that in addition to Kawanzin, obviously, kind of getting blown out of the water there compared to Leo as far as just those individual players are concerned, we weren't able to see him setting things up for Aspas, who ends up bottom fragging in this lobby. This is a scent, this is that jet stomping ground, and unfortunately, Aspas was not really able to step up to the plate here. I, I think one of the uh, pitfalls of that comp is just having a sky. They don't have a Sova to sure. actually drone in Aspas. Like Josh was mentioning, they don't have as much tools to get through. All you really have is to flash Durka off an angle, so yeah. you're really reserved to doing that, and I think that is where Aspas struggles as well. Another note as well on the sky compositions in general, Loud actually has been struggling against Ops. Early on on that defense side, Durka did start to get going, and I think they need to start fixing those issues, and I'm not sure where in the map pool they're going to be able to do that. They really will have to work on that, because they are very much dedicated to these double controller comps, the harbor to the sky. It's one of their main game plans thus far this tournament, and I think it is a worrying sign that Fnatic has found that, uh, that solution so early on. On top of that also, throughout this game, what I was impressed with was Boaster and the way that he was playing. This guy has wanted to lift a trophy for so incredibly long, and the plays he was making on Omen, it's clear that he wants this to be the final. Looking for Loud to step it up in this second map, but it's going to be a difficult thing when you've got Fnatic firing off the way they are. We had him being a difference maker yesterday for Fnatic. The question is, will he be the same today as we take a look at Alfayer warming up in our aim lab a shoot around a little bit earlier. Uh, this guy uh, didn't have to do too much work, if I'm being honest, on map number one, and that's the nice thing about the way the Fnatic's playing, is, uh, is that now he can look to step up map two and really shut out loud. Yeah, I, I think uh, not having to do much work is maybe an understatement because I think his role allows for him to just 
do what he needs to do, and that gives room for Boaster. That gives room for Leo. That gives room for Chronicle as well, and Durka as well to just be there as an anchor. Leo, I mean, uh, Alfier, I think, did quite well. I think the flanks could have been a little bit better, though, on a set. Yeah. Next we go to Fracture. Mimi, talk to me here, because we already have Fnatic taking Loud's map choice. Now they go to their own. This is a map we have seen from both these teams, and it's looked good thus far, but I am a little bit worried about Loud. This is uh, the second map out of both Split and Fracture that they're going to be playing, or at least we expect them to play into this double duelist composition. And I think we saw in their semifinal appearance versus TRX, a lot of the, the weaknesses of that composition get exploited a little bit. And Fnatic thus far, the way that they have been playing, it seems like they've been doing a really good job at giving space and then going in for these really well set up retakes, which I think could continue on their defensive side here on Fracture. Yeah, I think one of the weaknesses, even going back to the semifinals, that I thought throughout the first stage of that alpha bracket was Sadak leading on that race and how he actually has to get impacted with that too because he is not a star player. He is a very good player, but he's still the IGL. As we hop into the Prime Gaming Agent Select for Fracture, Achilles, one of my concerns here for Loud is that this was the map we cited when we talked about Fnatic's coordination, their control of the old orbs. And so it, it feels like they're even more so in exactly the place they want to be. Yeah, but they did just play it yesterday, so plenty to watch there from the side of Loud, who, you know, granted, did suffer a loss to DRX on this map. DRX are incredibly well drilled at it, so I don't think you can excuse it. For me, the big people to watch here, still, it's going to be Cowenzin, and then it's going to be Chronicle on the opposite side. The Breach is determining what the tempo of these pushes, these attacks coming into the sites is going to be. If Chronicle and Cowenzin can have a similar impact to each other, this could be a really close map. In this first half, I'm looking at the post plants and the retakes. Fnatic, fantastic in these posts, but Loud plays forward in their retakes. They're great at them. We're ready for map number two to get underway, can Loud strike back and bring us to a one and one as we send it back to our casters of Brennan Sideshow for the call. There lies the question, doesn't it? Fnatic striking that first blow in this best of five grand finals. And yeah. we'll see if Loud can answer in kind, returning fire on a map pick that's not theirs as we head into Fracture. And I think this is the moment where those players that have been to two grand finals before, I'm looking towards Sadak, I'm looking at Aspas and Les the veterans of this squad to really step up and act as examples and role models to Kawanzin and Tuis to show them how it's done and how you perform when the pressure is on. Especially for Aspas in his role from going rookie to veteran. I think he's been great in these high pressure moments, but this is how he's having to shift. No longer the rookie superstar of the team, now he also has the responsibilities of leading his team mentally at times. Early presence there from the utility. Nade up close and look at that. Swarm in the position, Les is in trouble. Leaps and bounds away from the side and barely gets away with his life. It's a faster play, still loud. Look to try and fight them. From the back entrance there of Arcades. That was in so low. Leo still holding a close corner, that's lovely. Util responded with though with the flash. And they do deal with it, two years. Fantastic play, still Durka, traded. 2v3, Fnatic players doubled up in tower. Vital pistol round, really getting down to the bare bone elements. Aspas, do you want to try and take this fight? A bit of damage, Molly at his feet. Space to the fuse, out for year. Pressure from the back, don't want to go for it. No time being played, running forwards, out for year. An absolute madman. No health left, but no time either. And it's Loud who will be shut down. Big opener for Fnatic. Starting out strong here on Fracture, their map pick. And I thought that Loud had an opportunity to win that one. When Fnatic had sent all of their players arcade, and you saw Les be able to wiggle out into stairs. Tuis gets two, Aspas with the trade. Both teams playing that pistol very well but just not quite able to apply the same pressure and get somebody on the spike to defuse it. And Fnatic's positioning rewarded. They are looking unfazed. They command that first map lead here. Starting things off on the right foot once more. A pistol round for them, looking to see if they can convert. And it is really interesting that Loud picked defense side, because that was where they were struggling so much against DRX. When DRX shut this down, this double duelist idea, it was because they couldn't really contest enough on the defense side. So there's got to be a different idea here, maybe some kind of anti-strat coming out from the mind of Sadak. 
Maybe just some heroics. The weapons aren't good. Loud forced to try and take some unfavorable fights. Alpha here is on one right now. Bullet through the wall leaves Aspas very injured. And Alfie is very close to his ultimate too. It's another big thing to keep track of when you're watching Fnatic on this map, and frankly any oh. map. Bit of sound bait yeah, draws three bait. players to A. Nicely done. But yeah, keep a track of those ultimates. You heard the desk talking about it too. But they are very good at being able to fight for space. And it's Leo who's trying to sell this one. <laughs> He's dragged them all towards him. A lightning rod. Attracting that ire of Loud, he will fall, and he does hand over the gun, but the space was gained. Fnatic, that was their goal. Yeah, and it was only a stinger, right? So it's not like it's a major weapon for two to use. Should be, done. should be easy cleanup here for Fnatic. But they're going to try and keep as many players alive as possible. They've got two Bulldogs and a Vandal to hold off into the next. I, in his face. I think another big thing here, though, Brent, to keep track of for the people at home is that it's not just about them picking the alt orbs up. Oh, hello, two E's. I get a bit of confidence back, why not? Yeah, that's that's decent. It also takes one of the Bulldogs, presumably, out of the hand of Fnatic. They're going to keep a Bulldog and a Vandal into the next. But what I was saying, Fnatic are not just going to be able to get alts online, but the plans that they make with those alts, the the machinations of Boaster's <laughs> depraved mind at times <laughs> are truly unfathomable. If you're going into a ranked game and you see, oh, there's a Killjoy ult, or oh, there's a, there's a Brim ult, normally you have a good idea of what the opponent's going to do with that. Against Fnatic, they have so many unique ideas. You saw it in the pre-show, the desk showing you the Cs into Boaster's ultimate that they ran to trap players over defending Sand. They have so many unique ways of being able to combo them. And it makes coming up with a game plan to prevent that very tough. Even weaponry. It's Loud who looked to try and fight back. They have the guns, but do they have this idea? Look at this, creeping. Uh -huh. On the north side, a drop, that's Fnatic. Sees over the top, latches down. Quite catching these players, wow. Durka, fast engagement, dives forwards, taking point, low enough still, now you see the orbital strike, and what is that? Kawazin, the absolute difference maker. A triple, when he really should have got nothing. Spike, in the hands of Chronicle, looks to make a play, pushing into the spawn. Loud doing the most, no way, not a chance in hell. Leo, he can't be doing this. And indeed he doesn't, but listen. God, he made it precarious. What a round from both of those players, Kawanzin and Leo. <laughs> that was the head-to-head, -head, actually, that the desk was highlighting. As two players that had varying amounts of impact on the first map, but my God. Whenever I watch Kawanzin here on Fracture, it seems like he gets 3Ks constantly. This map is certainly going to be a battle between the two IGLs in terms of game plans, but there are plenty of opportunities for individuals to make their mark. And Loud look like they want to try and push out Dish. This is removing one of those alt orbs, clearing one side of the map, giving them some useful information. And Loud are now going to realize there's probably people under tunnel or pivoting into B. Yep, it's the re-clear through Arcade because they anticipate this. The lockdown play in tunnel. Do they go to break it? Looks like they're just giving up the site. The yeah. entirety of Loud are grouped up here on the north side. And the Nana Swarm there to defend it as well. Still. A little bit bloody there, Boaster looking for the right angle. And here is the go button. Rolling Thunder cuts across, but stuns on stuns. No one can really gain any ground. Boombot is there. Durka pushed back away from the nade. Boaster's got his ult online. How does he want to use it? Right here, right now. Catching, connecting, Stinger as well. Let's it rip and wrangles the beast. Left into the 2v3, loud. Armbot place, they know nobody's pushing, but waves of this utility are now going to start to come through, or at least. Chronicle, stun, out in the open, Leo. A swing to bail out his teammate. His compatriot, three to one, Fnatic taking this lead. 
it is very difficult to beat Fnatic when they have alts online. The game plans are just immaculate with it. And over the course of this whole tournament, I have been mightily impressed with Boaster. The addition of Leo and Chronicle seems to have freed up the IGL to not have to macro as much, to think more about his own game. And Boaster's decision-making, ultimate usage, and fragging has all gone up as a result. I'm constantly impressed. A play like that where he uses his ult, swings around, grabs another. He wants this trophy. You can see it in the way that he plays. He can tell the time is nine. He has the best opportunity he's ever had. Never been closer than this, without the exception of that first LAN event. And listen, he didn't get a map then, so this is already closer. Starting off much better. Spike stuck, second guessing themselves. There was Util sent flying, Loud were looking to disrupt, but they guessed incorrectly. And these are dangerous moments because Fnatic have two players close to alts again. Durka and Chronicle, you don't want to be feeding them. Loud would love to try and keep the economy in check, but it comes at a cost. It's Loud who are looking to try and fight this one, but listen, never favored. Slight angle, Crouch still Durka, snaps to it. Shuts that one down, two years. Then just play, looking to see if he can at least take away a rifle or two, but yeah, I mean, Fnatic are not giving him anything, man. No scraps, no crumbs. No. And Fnatic chaining all of this economical advantage into an ultimate advantage. Sure, Loud have players that are close as well and have some big ults online. But as the attacking team, Fnatic are normally going to be able to take command of the round early and impose their game plan upon things. Unless you unless you see large, you know, breach out into spawn or Sadak doing something crazy with that. Fnatic at the end of this timeout, called by their opponents, are going to be able to concoct a strategy that revolves around Durka taking space with a showstopper, maybe Leo's ult combined, Chronicle for a post plan. There are just infinite varieties of things that Boaster can cook up here, and he's been given even more time to do it now with this loud timeout. We're looking right now at a very off balance loud. Off kilter, looking to regain that balance any way or form. That's what the timeout's for, but it's just so difficult. Just to reiterate what you were talking about, Josh. Listen, Fnatic, there's no one who does it quite like them so far at this lock in event, at this lock in tournament. When it comes to coming up with those cheeky ideas, anything to just throw off your opponent. And isn't it absurd that this team has only been playing together for the last two months? <laughs> it is. They look insane. They played some show matches and stuff over the course of December, but after talking to Mini, their coach, they weren't even practicing seriously for those. They were just turning up and playing them because, yeah, it was just a bit of fun in Japan. Why not? Yeah. Oh, they are looking like they want some more fun in Japan in a couple months' time. <laughs> you saw the flash of the trophy there. This team is on a war path and Loud stand in their way. Many more maps potentially to be played in this series, but Fnatic are in command currently. Oh, here we go. Similar play that we've been seeing from this Fnatic squad. That's a seize. Only so that Durka can't be punished. He's leading it in with his showstopper. Rocket, will it find it? Guesses incorrectly. Lester the re-swing. Narrowly escaping, but he is being threatened. But the crosshair placement is immaculate. Leodo, how does he do it? Raw potential made manifest. The backside of Halls there, still the spike is out in the open. Like a little gift from Wingman, isn't it? Dropped into the laps of Loud. And a pretty big breakdown in terms of the coordination there from Fnatic. Had a long time to talk about how the ults were working, but Alpha Year was not tight enough to Durka. What is this with 50 seconds left? Calling the long rotate. Heavy All rotate. the way through spawn. And look at this, knives out, not worried that anybody could be lurking. Why would they be? The spike sat in front of them, no omen ult to worry about. Two E's is watching for it. He knows there is a slim chance this play has been made. I believe the turret might spot them as well as they come around this corner. It does. Two E's is ready. Does he expect a second? He hears it. Leo, jiggle of the movement. Once more left. He needs the ace, so much to do. Spammable, less in that position. Shot not found, oh my goodness! And it's down to this, time pressure is there. Nightfall, no more sound cues. Tap of the plant, Leo, he's struggling and he just can't collect it. Asma steps up. 
And he finishes it. I cannot believe that. I thought he'd done it. I thought Leo had that. So much damage done to Aspas. In some sense, the duelist for Loud is lucky to get away with it. This 2K to start things out. And then all of that damage done while Aspas was up a drop. Literally one oh HP. My. A single bullet. It would have done it. But Aspas stands strong and delivers when his team needs him. That's what I mean by being the difference maker, by making a statement. Oh. Being an example. Oh, no. Is it Loudy want to take the fight? It is indeed. Rocket went flying. Sadak will pay for it, though. One for one at that. Aspas still. Sloppy, sloppy from Fnatic. Yeah. Ulting Leo as Aspas finds a pick on the north side, too. Loud definitely feel like they're an, uh, applying enough pressure so that Fnatic, the stacks, sorry, the cracks are starting to show. Struggling. This no is now this one, Josh, two running. rounds, two rounds in a row here where Fnatic themselves have been making the errors to allow Loud an early advantage. Positioning known, still sight not getting cleared here. So down and out, Post has worked himself into a very advanced position. Smoke found, tries to take the fight. He doesn't wait it out. Punished nevertheless for it, still. Rough timing. Bats crossfire. Leo making sure nobody can find him from behind, but it's Loud who are converging onto this position. Four players, and look at it. It's meticulous. No gap left on Sand still. Reset no away. And just like that, shoes on the other foot. Kawazin, you can't even handle it. How did Fnatic do it? How did they pull themselves from the brink? Leon Chronicle continue to put the super into super team. Fnatic look insane with these two firing on all cylinders. Any round is winnable. The plant out in the open is awesome there. Just perfect territory for them to set up crossfires. The look on Sadak's face says it all. Yep. Mini's not needed in some of these rounds. <laughs> Pure brilliance. Been singing the praises of these Fnatic players over and over again. Loud can't catch a break. Molly at the feet, anchoring hard onto the site. Despite the pistols, looks like they were able to get that kill. Rifle drop down, knives, Aspas, quick reactions. Meets his foe, the opposition that is Boaster. Lockdown's being used here, this has to be pushed, Loud know it. They move forwards, looking to try and fight this one, right around the side! And it gives it the perfect angle. Chronicle. How does he remain calm in these situations? Two years, weak, gets out of his life. Spike reclaimed though, 50 seconds still, left to work with in the round. Do they want to slow it down or do they want to take it? Looks like the plant will start to go. They're weak though, and that spacing is not good. Alpia trying to play directly on top of the body. And Kawansin looks to shut it down oh again. Oh my. Four in the round, a thrifty as well. It's all of the new players to the grand final, isn't it, Brent? They all are desperate to write their own story and add a new page to the history of both of these teams. Loud are going to be pleased. Momentum was shifting in this map. The scales tipping in the favor of Fnatic, but they respond now just two away from that even scoreline. Fast again. That's the play. Spammers also catching. Alfie is so low inside the smoke. Boom, we're going to be spotting this one. It's a battle on multiple fronts still. Oh, the timing and Aspas doesn't let it rip there, but a rolling thunder will catch him stunned up. There's no way he gets away with it, and indeed he does not. But look at this, Fnatic. Fast to try and bail him out. They don't expect the backstabber two years. Flash in the face of Leo. Reaction's not there to dodge it. Boast has made it winnable with that kill. He knows where the last two players are. Spike down, obviously, but a minute to play with. He can threaten misdirection in a lot of different ways. Does he still want to take this to 1v2? 
Spike dropped down, it should be favoured for Loud. Kawazin and Tuyas, the two newcomers against the man who's had his eyes set on that long-term goal. Open yourself up! And Kawazin, there's no re-swing, there's no readjustments, but a misstep. Kawazin, always the closer. Great recovery in this map, isn't it, from Loud. Three of the last four rounds going their way has brought things almost level. Definitely some shakiness in Fnatic's play. They're kind of patching it up with the individual brilliance coming out from Chronicle and Leo, but overall, I think this timeout is absolutely needed because Loud are looking like the more diligent team. And I was saying that I was looking towards Aspas and Sadak to really step up in this double duelist role and show the rest of the squad how it's done. But Cowan Zin, he hasn't been to a Grand Finals before, but he's got that Latin experience from his time on NIP. 17-year-old player, showed incredible promise when he played at previous global tournaments. And just think about this, this 17-year-old guy was asked to fill the gap left by Sassi, the most <laughs> veteran presence in Brazilian Valorant. Yeah, the right-hand man of Sadak. And I think Cowan Zin's brought his own spin to the role. He hasn't just filled the shoes directly. He's been playing Sky and Breach, fragging and supporting, I think, in equal measures. And you're, you're seeing it demonstrated here on Fracture. He's helped them out in so many moments. And I think you're right. He's still got that same flair where it feels like he can be that safe pair of hands, but he's willing to get active in a lot of spots. Sometimes you need that. Somebody to fight dirty. Throw a bit of a curveball at them. Why not take a swing and a fight? Loud, steadily regaining their footing. And Loud have been fighting aggressively for an area of the map at least. Pushing dish, pushing tree, making things easier for them on defense. Fnatic haven't been great at stopping that so far, but they've thrived in the chaos. The goal for them now to try and play into this. Prowler. Oh my goodness, a bit of a misstep there. There was an open opportunity. Aspas could have really put a stopper to that one still. Satchel up to the high ground now. How does he manage that? Rattle off the shot. Woody up in his hands. This is a call to be made. Look at this from Fnatic. Three of them grouped up in this morning. Four of them actually. I correct myself, leading for that late lurker of Alpha Year. They've completely flipped the map. Does Tuis have any idea about this? He's got to get the call, and he's forced to take a risky approach and clear out tree. It's an injection of chaos, Fnatic. Looking to see if they can really start to drive a wedge between the rest of them. Still, they contain. Kawazin, so disciplined. One kill, backs away, doesn't give away anything else. Very diligent cloudburst there, actually, for Aspas as he repositions to get rid of Alpha, yeah. Can Durka make magic? It doesn't look like he's aware. Doubled up, rifle spotted. And louder in control. What can Boaster do? Four players meeting them. It would have to be a monumental play. Blinded up, though, spam at the box, right to his back. And the man's going to file it underneath him. Deep breaths. And that round, it felt chaotic because of the decisions that Boaster had gone for and pathing Fnatic through spawn. But actually, the responses from Loud were really good. Two E's adjusted to it perfectly. The rest of the Loud players coming through had a nice backstab play. Uh, and even Sadak was ready to get the punish on the Durka. They dealt with that chaotic round very nicely. They've come back into Fracture looking Super strong here on their defense side, making nice adjustments after the DRX game. Quite sublime. Five to five, two more rounds, two more opportunities. Again, that narrow lead. Boombot in the corner, poster. Dodging, weaving, seeing if he can avoid it, but he did end up having to break it. Durka has his ult online. It's Durka and Chronicle over at Dish, with two ults to work with. And how will this fight get taken? I mean, I think Loud just have to give the sight here, right? You can play back in. I don't really think you want to be using Tuiz's ult to deny the plant. 
Oh, that's a long range man. one. <laughs> Sailed across the map. No kills found, those. Taker was dropped down quite low. Plant now, orbital strike, and a stun, Chronicle. Goodness gracious me, man. B hopping away, survives for now. Now the Rolling Thunder, and it's a collapse. Fnatic want to fight. They don't want to make this easy. Taking back their space, Nightfall on line, and Plant will go down. Not too many problems. Molly missing. So many angles to watch for, so many angles to watch for, yet it's Aspas, consistent. And where is the layers, where is the play? Two years holds it down, defending the lockdown to his dying breath, but he will not fall. Left up to Leo, and he just cannot maintain. Loud looks so in control at this point, baiting Fnatic into the A setup. Uh, and I thought that they were going to use those ults to go for some elaborate retake, but they just squeezed. They applied constant slow pressure until these Fnatic players were forced to take unfavorable fights one at a time. Look at the reaction there from Fraud. His team's got life in it. And this is why you can never count a team out even after they lose on their map pick, it's a BO5. There are so many moments for teams to go back and forth. A final like this is often such an emotional roller coaster. And Aspas holds his nerve this time. That is pure disrespect. Just fully confident. Waits to see if somebody would peek behind it. Fnatic spam. Oh, they know. And that probably gets used. Leo brought down to a sliver of health. Double satchel, though. Durka clearing out the site. But look at where this util is. Panic. Ever so slightly. Nana Swan popped off, but it's a closer plan. So Poster won't be pushed back. But guess what? Pace injected. This is loud. Looking to try and take the fight. Is Leo fast. Leo? Closer to the corner. Leo! Real difference maker! He can't get the third, but maybe he's done enough. Certainly made it very difficult for Tuis and Aspas. I'm not sure they know about Alpha's position. And even if they do, how do you break this crossfire? The plant position's so good. Util cleared, over the strike wasn't even waiting for the tap. More time being purchased. 3v2, Aspas in two years, you've got to make the most of this one. It's the last round and a half, a tap of it, forcing the fights. But look at the discipline, look at the patience. Fnatic not giving them anything, not a thing in the world. And they've got that extra element. Alpha year in the back pocket, that's six to six. And it certainly feels like both teams are fighting tooth and nail here for, flag, for Fracture. Really diligent post plant play, but Loud have also shown us some excellent stuff over this half so far. The double duelist comp has just got to find value on attack. Maybe they've done enough, but before we head into that second half, let's send it down to Doug, who's down on the floor. Thank you so much, friend. I'm sure you can hear it. I'm sure you can feel it. This crowd is electric. I'm standing by. Please, to get to, to get to. I, I gotta ask you about this double duels comp from Loud on Fracture. Do you like it? Do you not like it? What are your thoughts on it in general? I mean, uh, this combination of agents is very good for attack side. Like, I can't imagine what they will do on defense. Like, I have no uh, thoughts about this. But on attack, it's uh, strong. Half. Six, Should six. be pretty good. It's not good. It's not good at all. I think I think they will like uh, counting like they will like you know eight four maximum. And uh, on different they pull two something with pushes probably like to side push city side map. I mean uh, city spawn uh, push. You know. So I don't know. Yeah. Weird. Weird. It, it, and it's been a very good match. Again, it's a six six half. I want to ask you about Fnatic in particular because you think about their history and they always get to big moments and then they fall apart. But yeah. it feels like this team is different. It, it seems like they have more confidence. It seems like they're far more level-headed. Having played against them, what makes them so good? I mean, uh, we were always losing to their uh, new roster. Like, they were creating new roster, we're losing to them. After uh, we're, like, taking revenge, uh, we can say. Um, so, for me, this roster is, like, kind of the same as they had, like, two times. So. Even if they will, uh, uh, basically we need to see uh, when they will lose uh, at least one map, how they will go, like in, in Fuser. Yeah, last question, it's got to be quick. Who do you have winning this match? Um, 
Fnatic. Fnatic, <laughs> yeah. you heard it. He's full on Fnatic, EMEA all the way. EMEA, let's, let's throw go. it back down uh, to the caster's friend, Sideshow. She's all yours. Well, confidence from Sagetsu in his EMEA brothers. And why wouldn't he be confident? Fnatic's defense side obliterated Na'Vi, and I did not see that one coming. They had so many set plays. But this whole map is going to play quite differently in this match, because Aspas and Sadak are playing the double duelist, looking to get up aggressive in people's faces. And we look towards Sadak to be that guy playing the raise. He's got to have some of that impact. Currently sitting at 2 and 11. And the IGL Sailors team to a win here. Now to find out. Second half beginning here. Lovely bit of pressure. Fault line. Loud force to give up that space that they gained. Bit of a jiggle. Oh my goodness, Boaster. Lucky, lucky man to get away with that. 13 health, still alive in the fight, but a dash forwards. Now the plant will start to go down. No clearance in tower. Not a worry in the world, tonight the plant. Great nade, beautiful nade. Just bounds right into the arc, and now you see it. Fast re-clearance, B-Main wants to be taken. Fnatic, they're not wasting any time, but the call is made. Aspas, Sky, running, skipping, hopping all the way through Canteen, stun. Re-swing, not expecting it. And Boast, oh my goodness, damage being done. He was really being pushed to his limits. Aspas. How does he want to fight that one with his teammate up in tower? Sticking all the way. You gotta contest this, and they don't. Fnatic. Once more, the arena. Sounded more like a library. They have stunned and deafened. Such a good pistol round from Fnatic there. Being able to control that, but I think the crucial one is just that Boaster doesn't get cleared. The push deep into spawn should have gotten rid of Boaster, leaving Aspas healthy and Sadak alive. I think it's a great call from the IGL, but Boaster gets away with murder. Doesn't get cleaned out on 13 health. And that puts just a difference maker. That puts crazy pressure on Loud's shoulders here. Whoops. Bit of a miss there from Leo, and cheers fly out from the crowd, but. <laughs> Massive economical disadvantage here for Loud. And I think some time for Sadak to think. Think upon the game plan and what he can do to be able to bring this map back under Loud control after a pretty good first half. For Sadak, I keep thinking back to the quote that he had in an interview after the NRG game. That game that went to OT and pushed Sadak to his limits. He said that he almost broke down and started crying, trying to think of a solution. So what was going on there? The pressure is just so immense for these IGLs to come up with the answer. And especially when you're on such a heavy frag and roll and you're supposed to be delivering big kills and space for the rest of your team too. So much that lies on his shoulders. The mantle of responsibility. But now it's loud, looking to claim anything they can. I'd be happy with a couple of kills going into this one, but steadily making their way forwards. Ground gained, but they want that spike down. They want to get into that post plant. Difficult to try and reclear this. Straight shot to the body, Leo. Lovely trade, still less is there. Watching his teammates back, and time running low. Shouldn't be able to get this plant down. A couple of players ready to push him. And he walks into Bostu, who's holding a very safe angle. Eighth round on the board for Fnatic here. And these are the kind of moments where Fnatic were cooking stuff up. Pivotal economic swing rounds like this, they went aggressive. With often ultimates, although there's none on the board available for them now, but often going for some kind of, you know, Durka showstopper push into or through Arcade, doing a collapse on the south side that destroyed Na'Vi. All of this defensive aggression, and if you look at the minimap, Fnatic are planning it here at Tree. A massive clash on our hands. Clash of wills, a clash of that util. Push forward, Sturka. Oh my goodness, this guy is unrelenting. Haunt at the top in the tree. Does reveal the players, three of them there. Now Fia close, spamming it down. I was hoping for the second, but they don't quite walk into it. Durka's so fast behind them, though. Fnatic unrelenting on the flank. And look at this, you have to try and play this poster. 
Will he stay alive? And is being corralled, contained in the spawn, but post plant setup looks quite ideal. Two players deep onto the site for Loud. What can they do? And this smoke is difficult. Bit of spam just in case. Taking every precaution. It's a lovely. Loster. It's a lovely reposition. This fight, Asmus. No way. What was Asmus looking at? He had the timing. He had everything. He misses the easy kill, and it's Fnatic cleaning it up. They're eating it up. But the Killjoy lockdown, this is what I was talking about. The reposition from Les is gorgeous. Up into Dish. One detained. Flash misses. Off to the side, time running low now. Oh my god! Rifle's not doing too much, but it is time that is the biggest enemy. Nana Swarm dropped, and all Les has got to do is survive. He knows he's claimed the round. Fnatic look like that could have been a round one for them. But it's the crucial reposition that Les goes for, recognizing that if all of these players are flanking from the south side of the map, Dish is going to be open. A bold move, a good ultimate. Online in round 15 as well, very early to get the lockdown online. And it makes all the difference there. Puts pressure on the loud economy though. Bulldog and a Guardian bought up into this. North side crunch perhaps? Looks like it. You're still waiting for some sort of contact, maybe off the boom bot, but holding it, there's the stun, two years. Unfortunate position he's been forced into, but a smoke at his back. A bit more peace of mind, knowing that really Fnatic would have a tough time trying to get through it. But all of that fighting forces Loud into a passive spot and gives the ult orb to Durka. And now he has his ultimate to deny a plant or go for a retake. As everybody on Loud, apart from Les, coalesces in Arcade. Grouping up. Updraft, Ash, Aspas missing it. Aftershot making sure nobody can swing, yet it is equal trades. And even fight. And Leo, all the more powerful for it. Players weak enough. Oh my god, this guy's looking snappy. And two years. He knows what one of the players is, but that was that 1v2. Can't keep putting these young guns in these positions. Pressure is mounting. Can he come up with it? Not going to be handed an easy one. So much to clear. And Leo. He's say everywhere. It once, say it again. Man's everywhere. Save hands. Again, pulling them forward. A two round lead. You just can't give him those opportunities. He's at 21 kills already. This is absurd. In 16 rounds. And it's not like Loud played that perfectly. Leo was offered opportunity after opportunity to take 1v1s, and he wins them. But Loud got snarled up there. Really big communication problem. Maybe the pressure or the nerves getting to them. The weight of being one map down and losing control of Fracture, perhaps. But the timings were all off. And now they're just going to group and hope that Aspas can fly them through. All five of them, Util sailing right over the edge and a fight to be taken still. Fnatic unable to give up any ground, unwilling to give up any ground, but it's afforded them the ult. Rolling Thunder clears and cleaves, but still there's layers to it. The Molotov at their feet, Kawazin burned to a crisp and a risky play indeed. Watch for though. Attracting the ire of Alfier, never really a comfortable position. And they know exactly where they are. This is Fnatic with such a commanding lead. Now momentum behind them. Looking to try and seal it and claim that second map here in our grand finals. You just saw their ladder gonna take a timeout after this one. Another attempt at a thrifty. So their economy is still in an all right ah, position, but they just can't get value from the Duelist players. Against so much of the rest of the field, against everybody other than Fnatic, it feels like you're getting huge moments coming out from Aspas and very solid fragging coming from Sada. Bala's right. Sadak hasn't been a star, a superstar player on the race, but he's, against most teams, been very solid and putting up decent performances. Here, he's getting himself in good spots. His brain's working, but 3 and 16, not able to find the duels. Against the individual talent of Fnatic, at the moment, he can't hold a candle, and Aspas isn't quite dragging them through these rounds with his brilliance either. Louder in a really difficult spot. Just being outclassed when it comes to those individuals. And what a statement that is. It might sound superficial, but 
Loud itself is a Brazilian super team. Maybe that would apply more to the former roster, but even so, Cowan hot prospect, Tui's star duelist player. Adding these guys all together with the Argentinian IGLing of Sadak. Some of the best the Americas has to offer. The best in terms of lock-in. For them to be losing on an individual level is absurd. Speaks volumes. The expectation. Oh my God. Here, and that's what you've got to be careful of. Wow, that's so close. Oh so my close. God. It's the same kind of stun alt play that we saw take out one of the Navi players previously. So good for it. No kill claim, though. Sadak like lucky, honestly, as well. Still has a bit of armor intact. Chronicle, this angle is so goddamn cheeky. And they trade one ult for another. The Brim ult being used for Chronicle to get an orb. And they maintain the control of holds here for 40 seconds just based off their ultimate gameplay. And Loud feel like they're just struggling for answers. They use an ult in kind, look to try and take some space towards a horde, but they're shut down before they can even grab their footing. It's a noise fake. You can see them. They were charging their way over towards B, and the goal of this is to try and drag those rotations from Fnatic. And it has opened a gap. Chronicles looking back towards the north side of the map, dropping down into a very safe, Anchor position with Alpha, yeah. Unless they get caught in transition here, just jiggle peeking. They're still going to be able to put up some resistance. Now he has spotted them. Watching for it. Flash through. Forcing out the cloud burst. Blocking the line of sight angles. The players flooding in, but a Nana Swarm. It blocks them. They can't follow up. And they're left stumbling, grumbling, faltering. Right before they can even get through the choke. What a shutdown that was. Fnatic are so quick to call for help and so diligent with their multiple setups. Look at how immediately this response was. Leo throwing a haunt down, Boaster there ready to kill Aspas and cover that angle so that everybody else on Fnatic can just face the choke point. They are destroying Loud. Toying with them almost in some of these rounds. It's a word we use frequently actually over the course of this tournament and describing Fnatic as that dismantling, making some of the best teams at this event. Just look like they don't even stand a chance at times. This is loud. Listen, they didn't have an easy path to get here to the grand finals. Theirs was full of issues. But there has been that raw individuality that sometimes sails them to Karma Waters. Can they do it again in this round? The buy is weaker. Aspas was good to claim the first opening, but it was that instant response again. Left into a 4v4, top of the spike. Hoping they can force out the util. There's the seize and the nade. And this looks like a cancel from Sadak. Getting fed information by Les. But he's got to know that Alphier is still around here. He, he can hear the turret and the alarm bot's still up. It's Ooh. a great shot, but just too far away. Alphier survives on 5 HP. And that brutal. could be pivotal. Absolutely brutal. Backs away, survives. Bit of spam, Les has worked himself into the angle, and despite being so low, making plays! Skipping a hop through, Fnatic are so quick to plug up any sort of gaps in the defensive protocols. The help comes instantly, and Aspas, on a bit of a lurk play, left to pick up the pieces with 20 seconds left. Has to be the most. No time to waste, spike out in the open, spam angle, seven bullets, and he just doesn't anticipate it. Clearance is there, but as soon as the shot's fired, Durka, confidence in bounds. And this is Fnatic once more crawling their way to that map point. Steamrolling their way to that map point. There has been no chance for Loud in this half. Defense side, they put up some resistance. On attack, Fnatic's ability to control the map has just proved far too much for them. The ultimate cycling, again, always in favor of Fnatic. And a reminder, Fnatic obviously have still yet to drop a map at lock-in. And I don't think it's happening here. It would have to be five rounds from Loud. Try and get a semblance of OT, and they just can't quite come up with the answers, because how can you against this man? Look how many different defensive setups there are. How many trap plays and layers. This team has only had a few months together. 
They look so well put together. The firepower, the strategy made manifest here on the brink of winning. Second map in the grand finals. Night four, only tags onto the one, pushes them back, but it just feels like loud. Are hoping for anything, an unforced error. Someone just gets into their sight line. Aspas is the man to watch for. Pressure applied, though, onto multiple areas. Door opened up. They're going to be able to hear this one. So Fnatic still uncertain as to where this is trying to land. Spike finally being picked up, though, and Les has got himself into a forward position. Could be a real thorn in the side, but he's cleaned up nevertheless. Spike has to go down here. Lockdown in play. Fnatic might be looking to try and close up this map. The right pretty bow, oh my goodness! It's a good nade though to take out the lockdown. Three players left standing, loud, trying to hold on. Any sort of grip they can get onto this series. Aspas is good, he equalizes it in a three on three fight. Flash, dodged. The Fnatic are scaling, taking that space onto the site now. How does this get taken? It's done across, Chronicle! Too fouled, Aftershock pushes them away, but it's all too little. And all too late. Alpha year with all the time in the world, and that is just brutal. Second map claimed here in this grand finals. A warpath being carved out. Scorched earth here as Fnatic bully their way through. No resistance from Loud in that half, none whatsoever. 2-0 up in the series and one map away from Chronicle lifting his second trophy and the rest of Fnatic finally getting that sweet title that they've been going for for years at this point. The job's not finished. It's a best of five. The tide of battle could change at a given moment. Loud still in this one, but they've got to claw their way back from an unbelievable deficit. And once again, Leo, the best player in the server. He's got to be on for tournament MVP at this point. Mini's reaction to some of these plays from Leo from Chronicle are all absurd. Loud have to step up to start to match this. Fnatic, firepower in spades, strategy book seems to be bigger than the Bible. That's going to do it for map number two. We'll see on the other side of this break just how far this series will really go. you wings You knew that this was coming
Welcome back to the Valorant Lock-In Tournament where Fnatic is playing the Librarian as they reduce Loud to a whisper here in Sao Paulo and putting us on series point. I just love how the crowd are They're know, instantly loud. It was loud. poorly timed. As as did that. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, <laughs> this is still, though, a very dangerous spot for Loud. They are now in a position where they themselves have to reverse sweep. They were the team to shut down DRX, stop them from being able to be the first team in the you know the big VCT circuit here to be able to do that. I don't know if Loud's going to be able to do it, though. They need to be able to run it back, and it has to start on split. Yeah, it's going to be difficult, especially after this map number two. Fnatic came in, and on their attacking side, they played a similar game plan to what we've seen in the past. Put an emphasis on getting those orbs, have great preset executes around your ultimates. And I felt like Loud was going to have some preparation for that. I thought they were going to be ready, and it looked like they were. It looked like they had ideas on their defense to shut that one down. But Fnatic still had such great plans and such good decision-making on the fly that they were still winning out these rounds. Yeah, they have it all. And they have the old coordination, they have the decision making on the fly, and I think a big part of that goes to Boaster. This guy is on the verge of getting his first trophy, which he's been trying for so long. You saw the lockdown, you saw Loud stay out of the lockdown range and retake this tower position fast, but Boaster gets the plant down, ults them out of tower, so they have time to hold on and he gets a 2k for it. That is really just prime Boaster, and he's in his element. Yeah, that's the exact situation, right? Because Loud knew what was going to happen. They were ready for it, but still, Fnatic win that one out. Yeah, I think not only is this the best iteration of Fnatic that we've seen so far, I think it's the best iteration of Boaster. The way that he's having impact For right now in sure. these games yeah. is just utterly phenomenal. Well, speaking of it being the best iteration of Fnatic that we've seen, it was round seven that will be our Verizon high-speed moment for the day. Leo and Chronicle linking up Bala together to prove their worth and then some as a duo. This was a 2v4. This was the moment where I'm like, again, this is such a big super team. But for me, Leo is the initiator prince that was promised, but now he has the patronage of the once and former king of Chronicle. It is so good to see these two play. The duel and the way that they actually approach situations like this and their old coordination, their utility coordination, you just see it over and over and over. It's so amazing. It was the second layer that Fnatic has needed for so long. And I mean, you can see Loud <laughs> cannot believe some of these rounds that they were pulling off. It was miracles for the side of Fnatic, but that's what shut Loud down. That second half, Loud only won a single round. The way that they cycled between different calls for Fnatic was fantastic and every individual was performing to such a high level. I just love that when we go, if we go back to that, that post-match interview that we had with Chronicle, he just said, like, 
I'm not bad, guys. I'm still good at the game. He is absolutely <laughs> proving that right now, definitively, that he still has what it takes. Now, Fanatic's sitting pretty at 2-0, so let's talk about what needs to change here for Loud if they want to get back into this series, Mimi. We asked in that map for Cowanzine to step up. He did top the leaderboards for the squad, but it wasn't enough. Yeah, it was a fantastic game out of Cowanzine, but what struggled, I think, was this double duelist composition, putting Sadak on the raise, putting uh, the Jet in the mix as well here. I think that, well, it has been a good idea. It's worked for them in the past. They were really getting shut down on this one. The defensive side of Fnatic knew when to play back, give that space, and pinch back in. And they were also doing a great job of when they did take those early fights, shutting down Sadak in particular. And this worries me, because we go into split next, where Loud has to perform a reverse sweep, and this is another map where they play this double duelist composition. Yeah, I, it was my concern coming into this map, and I don't think the concern got super alleviated, but it definitely wasn't the lowest point for Sonic at all. And I think the lowest point for me when I watched this was on split. So that's where the concern continues. It was on split against NRG that was like, oh, he's really not comfortable yeah. here. He's really not comfortable calling. And I mean, they went to map three off of that one. It was really difficult for them to actually even do anything. So yeah, yep. it comes down to that. And if there was any comp to change, I think it'd be this one. And guess where we happen to be going on map number three. It's going to be split Achilles. It's got to start here for Lab. It really does. And I'm right there with Bala. The, the, the raise right now from him is not inspiring that much confidence. but. I do at least favor the Ray's Jet on Split as a double duels compared to on Fracture, but it's still going to be rough around the edges here unless Sonic can level up his performance. He cannot be hovering down around the bottom of the board. This map is going to be wild, too, because Fnatic also play a double duels composition here, and that's going to be the first time that I think we're really seeing these two comps really match up against each other in that mirror here at Lock-In. But what's difficult is for Loud, it is going to require that reverse sweep. We've talked a lot. It is a very, very hard thing to do. And for Fnatic, I'm sure they are feeling so invigorated. One step away for the first trophy for this core. We eagerly await Prime Gaming Agent Select to get some answers to the questions that we have when it comes to what compositions each team will bring out. Will it be the double duelist? Loud, it's important to remember, is starting out on the attacking side. A lot of times people cite double duelist most effective from that attacking half, but it means they need to have a hot start if they go for it. Yo, it absolutely is. And I also think there's threats for Alpha Yer here uh, as the Cypher. He could really get a lot of lurks off on Loud. Uh, not only on defense, but also mostly on attack, especially as you get those double cages going. So that's definitely a threat for Loud. There right we have now. it. We're matching the double duelists across both teams. Yeah. Right now, for the side of Loud, if they want to get themselves back into this game, they need to start off hot. They need to clock Fnatic in the mouth, catch them off guard, get that momentum building, because they need to swing this around, not just in this map, but in this entire series. It's all or nothing at this point for Loud as we turn our attention towards map three split, which means it's time once again to send it back to Brandon Sideshow for the cast. Map number three now entering the turning point of the series. Joy and horror is going to be across both stages. A swirl of emotions for both of these teams, Josh, as they edge ever closer to the potential goals. And you see the trophy between both of these teams, both metaphorically and literally within touching distance here of Fnatic. And what a long road back from Loud if they want a chance of being able to lift this and become that back-to-back -back title winner. I'm right there with the desk. I'm looking towards Sadak. I think the comparison between the two IGLs is so apt. Boaster, everything's working, so he can focus on his own game. Sadak, 0-6 and six in first kill to first death on Fracture. He just simply has to do better. Has to do the most for them, Durka! Just an absolute menace to society with a shot like that. Scattering the hopes and dreams of an easy execute there into A Heaven. Still wants to take the angle, still wants to take the fight. Damage being done, rattled across. The bullets fly. And it's Fnatic once more laying claim to a couple more bodies. And look how happy Fnatic are to rotate four people onto A defense. Holding for it. Two years, less. Crossfire watched four, turning it into that three on three. The Viper Wall doing so much there, allowing Loud to stack up multiple players and breaking Fnatic's crosshair placement. Now the pressure really does get applied to Fnatic. It's a sound bait, though. They look like they were trying to fake towards that presence in mid. I like this push from Alpha, yeah. I think repositioning here catches them if they rotate back to B and lets him help A. Still, almost getting your head taken off there. Boaster has to back away. Leo returns the fire. Does not get out unscathed. Spike has entered the side. It's up to them. Kawazim with the plant. Dweez has a start, but he's got to fend off Alpha Year. And this is it. It's all about the timing, which Alpha Year, he knows exactly. It's handed to him on a plate. 
that 1v2. Fnatic, the potential is there for them, and the crossfire just immaculate. This team is sailing their way. Obviously, they've had some rough waters to navigate over the course of their entire history, but taking this pistol round one step closer to the hopes and dreams. Four out of five pistol rounds going the way of Fnatic, playing these situations so well. Incredible stuff. And as we get closer throughout this map, I mean, that is what's going to be running through Bosa and Durka's head for sure. They haven't had to do the most in this series so far. Leo and Chronicle really stepping up for them, the new additions, but the history is just going to come to life as they take these steps closer and closer to lifting their first trophy together. Yeah. Sage wall planted in mid here. Really good on the anti-eco, going to take a lot for Loud to be able to break that, but they do very quickly. And that speaks of a heavy commitment towards the middle of the map for the wall to be broken so early. Just one portion of it. Smoke to plug up the gaps. Close angles, that B-Main control still being held for now, but look at this, Turka, he's not shy, willing to take that fight, but he's being met face to face there, classic right click doing a lot of damage, and claiming that kill, but it's responded with, and the cam, so many of these setups by Fnatic, well thought out. Yeah, really good, Afi has got many of these where the cam gives information in B-Heaven at the same time as B-Main. Dash away, nade against the wall, rebound, slow as well. Gonna be a pivot here into Boaster, but he's full health with a Bulldog. Oh, and maybe even a cancel. Okay. Well, I don't have too many chances of winning this round. Fnatic are surrounding them on all fronts. Nothing left open. It's gonna take a miracle and more. Lovely crossfires by Fnatic. Noise being made with that jump down. 20 seconds left, and these trips have not been dealt with. Alfie doesn't even wait for the timing, doesn't even wait for it before he strikes. Three in a round, a triple claimed. It's Fnatic. Lights out performance. And Alfie is going to be very crucial on this half of the map. Fnatic got to choose the defense side, and the trips are going to be useful. I mean, often going to be broken, though, by Sadak with his blast packs or updraft dashed over. But that little mind game of how Alfie decides to anchor the sites, whether it's A or whether it's B, and where he gets information with his cams is going to be crucial here. We've seen before, actually, the way that Loud ended up losing this map was hard anchoring a site and then flooding retakers in. Now they've got rifles in hand, though. Favoured here, but only ever so slightly. The buy's still good for Fnatic. Exchange of fire, straight down mid. No casualties. Damage was done. You're going to see a delayed wall here. Good discipline from Loud to break that. Look at Les taking his time with him. Nade going to be used in response again, pushes them out of heaven. And Loud. Really finding it difficult to get anything done. This cam position, Alfie maneuvering his setup. Really good pressure in B Heaven has pulled Durker away from the A site. It's only Alfie here. Yep, he's alone, anchoring. The cam position is still really good. It'll give him enough time to react and pop his cages and play hard anchor back site. Seems like Fnatic have got a read on this in one way or form. Nade at the back, though. Util, will it get cleared? Skipping a hop straight over the trips. Cages, though. This is throwing so much into the mix. But eventually, he is dealt with, cleaned up. Still, the Neural Theft was able to get online, and Poster, he collects a kill because of it. Crosshair placement, not ideal for Turka. And a good kill from Sadak. That's going to get some confidence going. Nice shot hit. Game plan working. Tui's in an awesome backstab position. Everything left to Poster. So much to do, one fight taken, and one. Sees the second player, guesses incorrectly. And so loud answer back. That's a very good round by Sadak, and I'm not just talking about the flick shot that he hit, but the manipulation of the defender rotations. Fnatic were just starting to get the read that it was heading into A as he decided to pull the trigger and execute into the site. He gets the spray down on Aspa, uh, onto Alfie, yeah, sorry. 
So they trade two duelists for the one side anchor. I think that's, or rather, one duelist for the one side anchor. I think that that is exactly how Loud would like to play things. And they seal it up. I'm looking towards Durka here over towards A ramp. He's not going to find many opportunities to get aggressive. But depending on how bold he is, he could just try to ego this Viper setup. Kawanzin in the previous matches was always oh. using his Trailblazer here. And now they're just contacting. Here we go. No Q given. Durka left so unaware, but as a paranoia and a need. And Sadek's left reeling from that one. Still, it's Aspas. Carving his way forwards, cleaving into the top site. At least the top of A, a path has been found. Very nicely done. Plant for heaven, too. Barring any heroics here from Leo. The round should be sealed up. I mean, two ease is also just the final line of security if they even need it. I don't think there's any chance Leo's going to see this one coming. They're going to hunt for these guns. Definitely. And it's going to apply serious stress to Fnatic's economy. Loud have looked good on their attack side playing this comp. The only team to punish them for it was DRX. Playing that flood retake style with a very heavy single sight anchor. But if you think about how this round worked... <laughs> all of the anticipation of the crowd just dissipating in a moment. Exiting but returns. Both of these comps are really quite similar. You've got the double duelist, but it's almost like the 2021 version played by Fnatic versus the 2023 version played by Loud, where you combine it with the double controller and the sky flash. And it's it's quite singular in its purpose. It's going to burst into sight to overwhelm you with utility and aggression on both sides, honestly. Whereas Fnatic's is a little, a little more able to play the slow game despite having two duelists. Maybe a little more labored on the burst plays once we swap sides. Loud grouping up in B main here. They've got Seekers, Vipers fit, pit for post. Alphier is not here to anchor. Everything on Boaster with only a Stinger in hand. Yeah. Paranoia, push back, and an aid, and the slow orb. It's bored in time. Critically, moves forward, a closer angle to be found. Sagewall hasn't been broken in mid, so none of these B players are worried about a B heaven backstab. Kawanzin reflashes, spots the wall. Got to break this, but they could always still go for a B re-hit. They're actually leaving that area, though. So it is possible that Alpha Yez is going to once more be tested. That's the complete opposite. The Seekers are going to be so useful here. Aspas and Sadak can follow them into sight and just essentially spam them as Alphier plays inside his cage. And here we go. Seekers offloaded, Durka stays alive, but he's bloodied, he's bruised, and he's got the most to do! What? Shuts down Sarak under so much scrutiny. No a re-swing! The confidence. Oh, it's boundless. It's all the way there, and it's crumbling beneath them loud. They just can't quite do it. Magnificent by Fnatic. An instant response, weaving in and out, playing off of each other. And Durka gets away with murder there as well. After taking, I think it was 140, a phantom dink to begin the round, he's down to one, one health, health, one HP. There's no shot. It must have been a 124 at that distance with only light armor online. He's still able to pick up two kills. I feel for Sadak, he's having a really rough finals already. And to spray and pray like that, and your praise be denied, the deities of Valorant spitting in your face, it's got to feel dreadful. Script writers have got something else in mind, it seems. Today, Fnatic laying claim, laying waste to the opposition. And still holding it down. That first kill onto Les is going to sting to occur. Overstays is welcome. Punished this time, and that's so important. That's the second time that Dirk has been taken out going for something aggressive, but he can't be allowed, from Loud's point of view, to abuse this Viper setup. You need to have that conditioning that there could be people behind the Viper stuff. A fight to be taken. Shots rattled. 
Honestly, if I see Leo on a site at this point, I am running the other direction. You're leaving. That's enough time, though. Slow was there, now you see it. What is the play being made? Rocket, the showstopper. Zero damage. Gains nothing, and Leo just couldn't quite dodge the flash still. The execute continues. Loud looking to try and pincer this one. Poster is under assault from so many different angles. The counter spam, the punish. It's there. Strong round from Loud. Alfie F can go for some kind of exits. Or just keep the weapon online for Durka into the next, but either way, Loud are starting to find some success. This composition is quite attackers sided, I would say. But Fnatic themselves, you know, similar scenes, arguably. Still could be anyone's map. It absolutely could. But it has to be Louds for the series to continue, for them to have any chance at winning that back-to-back -back title. Alfie, yeah, just looking to save the gun here. It's going to start to feel the heat here. A couple of seconds left for him to try and survive. Do not swing out, son. You think about how Dirk has been playing this tournament so far. These kind of plays have always worked. But the frustration on Mini's face tells me that there might be a stern talking to coming. Fnatic have taken a timeout, and both Mini and Boaster will be cautioning Durka not to overheat. You cannot allow the moment to get to you. The crowd to weigh on you and a feeling of immortality to hit. But at the same time, a fine balance must be found. You can't allow that Viper utility to always go uncontested. But picking and choosing your moments more carefully may be the secret there for Durka. Because that's the second time in three rounds that Loud have won where Durka's offered them an opening. Oh, not the kind of team to go out easy. They want this just as much as Fnatic do. Chronicle hunting for that two-time trophy. Boaster hunting for his own when he's been so close yet so far in the past. You saw the historic video, the tears that were shed towards the end from Fnatic. Just another minor character in Sentinel's story at the beginning of Valorant. But now they have firmly made that their own. Looking to do the same as was done to them. On pace right now for an undefeated streak through lock-in. But Loud are there to challenge, and so far it's looking so good. Durka with knives in his hand. Now, Fnatic's defense didn't look like it had as many set plays as their Fracture when we saw it earlier in this tournament. I didn't see them cook up big game plans around Chronicle's Ultimates, for example. A little ping there as they look to see, is there a camera? Is there some kind of trap play? But no, not this time. Louder allowed, mid for free. Joker might be feeling it sometime soon, no. Instead, the players that were creeping and crawling, possibly through ropes, they instead decide to take their presence towards mid still. Crossing, using that Viper wall. This is all still wall. really fluid from Loud, right? Sadak at any point here can call a B split and an A split, just based on what he hears and what, what's delivered to him by the rest of the team. And the key from our point of view is less. He's starting to move over to B, this is gonna be a commitment. Chronicle, smoke in his face, Boombot tags onto a target, and whilst all that's happening, the rotations, the attempt, everything's being thrown into chaos, moving forwards. Leo does not win it out, yet still, look at that! Main can't be contained with time on the clock, bleeding low, Durka with the most to do. Cosmic device splits across, right click does not hit the storm. And he has to back, just a shorty. So close, that could have been everything. Weaponry is not good. Cloud burst forwards, pre fire. But less punishes. Dirk is looking to retrieve a rifle here and still go for it. Or maybe he's required to save with the money on Alpha Yar and Boaster being so low. 
Lauda being given a lot of the map here, and Durka finally calls it off. Feels like, Josh, it's been a long time in this series since we've seen Loud with an ever so slight lead where momentum's been on their side, but making steady strides. I would argue the 6 6 half on a fracture on their defense, it looked promising. I could see really bright spots. Yeah. They just weren't able to do anything on the other half of the map. And that, I've got to admit, does worry me a little bit here. We've already seen Loud's attack side be very good and especially with how passive Fnatic are playing them offering them the whole of mid very safe sage walls from Leo even getting loud into B heaven I would expect loud's attack side to be good here and rack up six maybe even seven rounds <laughs> doesn't mean I'm not concerned about them on the other half this boaster attempting smoke across judge in his hands potent weapon indeed yet a fight taken and a fight lost for Chronicle. The call is made here. Waiting it out, but loud. They don't overstep themselves. Okay, we've got a kill. Let's slow it down. This is tough from Boaster. He was worried someone could have gone a ramp, but now he's in the position to win the round. The smoke will fade at any moment. You've got to be kidding me. What timing was taken there? Just off the smoke. Instinct. At its best, and he's handed a cheap one. He's handed an easy one. Dirk is there as well, bailing them out. Pressure being applied into the corner of the site, but it's Lauda who's struggling to get in. A dodge and a flash up close and personal. That's where the judge is favoured. Boaster, he's going for more. Tap at a spike. Kawazin can start to feel it. Come and in this see situation again. Kawazin's going to get seekers off the back of this. Doesn't seem like he's going to be offered a, a not great opportunity to use them, but maybe two E's can be the playmaker. It's going to have to be. Does he hear any footsteps? I don't think so, and it's not planted for heaven. And he doesn't have any stars to delay. He's dealt with final player known. And what is the play? TP across, and that's that crossfire setup. Boaster happy to be the sacrificial lamb, especially if it secures him that round. What a great round from Fnatic there, and from Boaster especially. Preternatural timing on <laughs> the read with the judge. Exactly as his smoke is about to go down, you saw Kawansin getting ready, I think, to flash through it. And he just spams, grabs a kill, falls off. Good for another as they get into sight. You can tell how much he wants it, Josh. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be. Wait. Yeah, he's playing like a man possessed. A man that can feel and sense his dreams of the last two years becoming manifest. It's been a long journey. But the job is not finished. Oh, crossing through the choke. Fnatic might have got a glimpse of that one. Trailblazer pushes forwards, pushes past. Not sure if it spotted anyone, but look at this. Fnatic eager to contain, eager to take the fight. It's Aspas with the knives, though, and look at this. Seekers push forwards, it's a right click. Won't have any more to throw at him. Pound for pound, anchoring at the back. Boaster, vulnerable. Ultimate online, TP's back to safety. And Leo, he's watching for it. Sadak, maybe just feeling like he has to create a play in that moment, but he overstays his welcome. Less will have screens. ult. And so this is what it comes down to. Alpha, yeah, though. On the heaven position. Yeah, he's getting ready. Here comes the ultimate. They're off theft. Everybody spam. That's the game plan. Poster though. Overshot it a little bit. Didn't quite take the correct timing. Left it at two on two. And this is hard. Leo hoping to spam, hoping to kill, but he will not claim it. He will not get it. Shut down. A major round win. Signs of life here from Loud still. They have not given up hope. And so far, this attacking side has been marvelous. They're finding those moments, both teams with a great game plan, but I love the way that Aspas was already ready to outplay the Neural Theft. He knew it was coming and went for a play right before the first hack came through. Very smart stuff. They look super prepared here on Split.
And they put Fnatic into a difficult situation. Three rifles online. Oh. And it, no is, it is very difficult for Fnatic to control the outskirts of this map. They're pushing forwards in B main, but surely Boaster doesn't get more with the mini judge. Leo repositions. Smoke. Oh my! Shots going wide. He does fall. A difficult task to try and break through and take the side, but nevertheless, it's done. Taken care of. Watching every avenue, Smokes making sure that Fnatic don't try something tricky of their own. The Rifles have to save. And it's loud, they were going for the hunt. They do not want to let anything slip away from them. Any advantage they can get. Hunting, Alfie Dodge Peak, crossfire setup, it's now turning it. Hunter becoming the hunted. Aspas caught with a util in his hands, a bit of a disaster for Loud, hoping to try and do some damage to the economy, but handed a freebie. An overheat, maybe, because all of these kills matter far more to Fnatic than they do to Loud. Confidence for Sadak. And not just that but a bit of damage to keep Fnatic's economy in check as we head into round 11. Final two rounds, Fnatic should still be able to buy even if they lose due to the loss bonus. But maybe, you know, without that full utility, maybe a bit of a scrappy buy towards the end. But yeah, that confidence is so key. The game plan is working and Sadak's finding some moments. He's not lighting the world on fire, but he's doing enough at the moment. Wow, so oh. Durka and Alpha, yeah, both making the play this time. Instead of Durka being on his own, they are together. Alpha is going to bait him! No way! A triple for Durka! He's just supposed to be the bait there, the tasty worm on the end of the string. And they don't expect this. Alpha Year strikes and Alpha Year claims. Fifth round for it. One step closer to that even scoreline. What a response. What a response immediately there. How does Durka manage to get two? That's nasty. That's just nasty. Ridiculous shooting. There's no shot. And yeah, he's just supposed to be the bait. Take a fight, dash away. They don't expect Alpha yet. But sometimes when you have players of this quality, the plan becomes immaterial. Loud forced into a fast play. Double satchel, dash across onto the site. No control of A. Heaven. Same play again. Trying to clear it. Smoke on the edge. Less. No way. Making a bit of noise. Backs away as the orb fades down. Maybe hearing the presence there, but this looks like it's going to be that five on five. Nade at the feet. Less. Bit of chip damage. There's a reflank happening here from Tui's, but he's going to hit a trip unless Alpha Yet dies. It's all about that timing, Durka. Straight bullets, meeting their match, trying to take the fight. Wider swing, and Les is dealt with. All in their face as well. This is starting to get panicky. Trips dealt with, two years. Oh my goodness. Close, very close. More than strain, but still they collapse. Easy sight lines handed. But Alpha Yet with a moment of his own. Let's see what he can make of it. Time running brutally low, and it's Aspas with three. Two-round lead for Loud as they close out that first half. Finally seeing Aspas come alive in the duelist battle, the Jet head-to-head. -head. What a round from this young fellow. Looking so clean out there and powering Loud forwards. That should be their favoured half, though. Seven rounds. Is it enough to fend Fnatic off and give them another map, another shot at continuing the series and winning the second trophy? It's a hell of an attack side for Loud, claiming seven unbelievable scenes. But let's send it down to the desk to break it all down so far.
thank you so much, gents. Loud has come alive here in Sao Paulo. They find themselves a two-round advantage, the best first half they've been able to mount here so far in our best of five. Yeah, to give them something for the crowd to cheer for, because it was looking rough, even at the beginning of this game, too. To see them come back, to see them have a chance is super important. This is a close game. We still might have a series. Yeah, and this is in the game where it matters. They were on the verge of elimination on a 3-0 loss in this grand final, and they have woken up. And the biggest question coming into this is how how does the double duelist composition perform? And thus far, it has fared far better than on Fracture. Sadak as an IGL has been varying up the calls enough to keep Fnatic on the toes, and the individuals are stepping up. And this is the perfect time, right? Because the trophy is on the line. Fnatic are still just a half away. I love where your head's at, Mimi Achilles. We had asked who needed to step up, who needed to be the catalyst for a comeback here for Loud, and it was Sadak that we put the responsibility on. Yeah, we have, and so far it's been looking decent. Satwise still not going to be near the top, but he has been guiding the squad and still putting up some decent numbers. He's entering for them widely. Aspas has been going for a couple more lurk plays and has been able to find some really explosive moments throughout this. You can see he's once again lounging back, trying to maintain some composure as they get ready to go into this next half. Yeah, but I think as well, this second half is going to be where Sadak gets strained the most, where Boaster also gets strained the most. Yeah. Because this game right here, this map, is the first time we're really seeing that battle go head to head. The rest of it, it felt like Boaster has been in control. This time, it looks like there's actually a battle of the minds. This is going to be a half about the IGLs. The crowd is back, Loud is alive, but is it enough to keep them in this series? I'll we'll have to just wait and see. So far, Loud, one in five in pistol rounds. Can they go ahead and put up a second one on the board? We need to see that. A small advantage for Loud, but can they take it over the finish line here in map number three? That's the question as we're getting ready for the second half to get underway. Back over to our casters. The pistol rounds begin. Loud of a chance to extend their play in this tournament, in this series, the Grand Finals. It's going to be a crucial one. You heard Seth talk about it. Loud have not been winning them. And it's previously been such an incredible strength for this team at Champions oh. and at Lock-In. Creeping, crawling! It's Loud who make the first blow to strike. It's an easy claim there as Durka will fall. It's a huge put, first pick to get. Massive. Durka on the defense side when he was falling, opened up gaps. But look at this gap, Boaster all the way through on A. Oh, he's not wasting any time, look no. at this. He's, he's got pushed all the way up. Massively deep here. It all he has to be used to replay. I mean, he he's actually, so fast. He knows that Les is around here too, because he heard the wall being thrown. So that kind of stopped him from going deep into screens. What's and a he's, ball to be made? He's got a bit of a feel now that the defenders have been pulled towards A. I think this is going to get into some very strange mid-round territory. We can see that there is a path from mid to B open, but I don't know how Fnatic would read that. And look at Boaster, attracting all his attention. He's the man of the hour. A lightning rod for it all. And he's pulled these players. Loud are so uncertain of what the play is. It's a reclearance from them through into ramp, and they've got to be aware of this now. But Fnatic, they've been gifted a timing. Can they strike? Can they take it? 25 seconds left. Boaster still in the back lines, behind enemy lines, and still he claims one with Aspas falling. It's that four on four. Sadak has an aid. Can he get it to deny? Plant starting to go through. Pull. Nade has to be stuck. Leo. Oh my goodness. Just a bit off there. Yeah, anti synergy, but it's Loud who want to flood in. No time wasted and no time like the present. Dropping down into hell, waiting for some sort of call. What is it? Sadak. Taking space now, making sure that they're not going to be caught in a really strained position. Loud watching for it. Happened to the fuse already. It's not planned for him. Chronicle struggling. Gets off the spike. Happened to the fuse still. Not all the way through. It almost was shambolic. But we asked Sadak to deliver at the beginning of this map. And he couldn't have found a bigger round to have that level of impact. Boaster, look at the minimap there, was on bind during the middle of all of this. <laughs> and Sadak read the play coming through due to the paranoia. It was all scrambled from Fnatic. And he comes through with an extremely pivotal clutch. Loud have a great chance here of being able to respond, take split down. As long as they can carry this momentum forwards. Their composition is going to thrive by taking aggressive fights, despite the fact they're on defense. Can people like Tuiz and Les hold on in their anchoring oh, positions? No way. no way. What is that timing? 
Tuya's in the astral form. Leaps bound, striking, and that crossfire is just excellent. This is deadly. Loud cannot afford to lose this one. Yes. Takes the fight to them anyway. A push through the smoke will make sure the Fnatic don't get away with too much. Alpha, yeah? Doesn't realize he's getting reflanked here. And the frenzy's good. Eventually traded. Limits it now into that 2 on 2. Weapons in the hands, though, of these Fnatic players. And how do they want to play it? Chronicle low. Smoke to cut across. Poster moves his way into it. A bit of spam. Fire! He falls. Tiniest of margins, tiniest of gaps. Six, with six health and the most to do. Chronicle, it's all about timing. It's all on this. Judge, wait for it, but a flick and a wrist. A bit too close for comfort, perhaps, for Loud there. And it's going to make that bonus round toothless. But man, that, that's going to be a bit of a learning moment for Two E's, I think. I was just asking the question, how were Two E's and Les going to be able to hold on in their anchor positions? And he gets caught in astral form. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, look at the comps. Fnatic are going to be running double duelists. They're going to be in your face, bursting into sight. Yeah, maybe they don't have the same level of flash utility, but they are still going to be quick. Durka and Chronicle are no slouches. Oh. Alfie, yeah, that's an early fight taken, but no appetite on his behalf. Our presence still being showcased into mid, making sure they let themselves be known. And speaking of it, all the way through, they've taken the front sight of B. Nade, you tell you, <laughs> Sadix in the air, and his head's been ripped clean off still. Two years. What is that? Kalat Sheriff kill. The bonus was supposed to have no bite, but when it's in the hands of these young players, anything could happen. Not willing to make it easy, though. Fnatic. Sturka on the high ground off angle. Beautiful kill to find, and still the weapons are not that good. Aspas on a flank. He can updraft over the top of this. Wait, he can jump around. No, can he? Wow, he does. The trip's no good. The roar of the crowd. Might just be hiding all of it! Right from behind, Alfie in on the wiser. A decision is made, a refight, a re-swing, but he no! no way in hell! The bullets go wide and the crowd goes wild! To think that it's Leo that lets that one slip after he's been putting on a masterclass. A genuine greatest of all time performance prior to this in the BO5. Eclipsing tens from original Reykjavik. You'd think he was good for that. But my God, Loud, pull out the bonus round. Oh. The fans are not happy with this. Fnatic, they need to cool off, cool down, and reconstruct exactly how they want to take the rest of this map. The way that Fnatic run their economy, they are still going to be able to buy in round 16. It's not usual. You would normally see teams take an eco here. But because Fnatic don't invest into that heavy armor, they have Durkus Bladestone, Chronicles Ult, it's actually still going to be a dangerous round. And frankly, I shouldn't have counted out the last one for out. If Tuiz is hitting shots like that, anything's winnable. Anything at all. And also, think about Aspas already getting the read that he can go for these flank plays. The Fnatic are going to be grouped up enough and relying on trips on the flank so that he, as a jet, can just run rings around them. Even if that trip had been good, he's going to be able to updraft over it and take a small risk in getting heard. And yeah, the players have got noise isolating headphones, but there's only so much. <laughs> that you can block 7,000 people out. Reverberations and rumbles echoing and out. God, that's cheeky. Durka, was an attempt made. Tried to take Kawazin's head clean off, but... Blade's going wide here. This is loud, that five-round lead. Now looking comfortable. Asmus on this angle. What tools the Fnatic even have to push them away? A cage. 
Might give it away, but no, still holding it. The paranoia is not good. Flick the wrist over to the side. It's a dangerous situation. And Aspas, he tries to skip and hop. He tries to jump to safety, but it's Fnatic who are coming up with all the kills. Massive two entries there from Fnatic. And Durka responding with another. And it's Fnatic filling up the feed. Lauda going to oh. be in a really tough position. Their economy's good. But I don't think there's any chance of them pulling off this retake. Alfie is in such a safe spot. Just and that just shows you the danger. The explosivity of both oh. of these teams. Is that... Possibly is that deliberate? Mistake. I'm not too sure. I mean, time was running so low there that... It felt like they had no chance in hell of being able to save that. Two years could do some proper damage now in this four position. Yeah, no one aware of it. Durka wanting to save the Operator, too. Seems strange to me, actually, because the explosivity of Durka and Chronicle together has been what's caused Loud so many problems, but... Yeah, are they going to go with it for the Operator saving into the next? No. So, yeah, I, I like that decision, because look at the value that Durka's getting by going aggressive, by putting pressure on the sight anchors, yeah. by taking space and collapsing on all sides. Nobody from Loud is being... Nobody on Loud looks comfortable in those spots. They've been able to recover the rounds in different ways, but the actual getting into post plants has been working fairly well for Fnatic. Fake TP from Boaster, threatening some B main control. Is Aspa scared about it? Is he hell? He's ice cold. Not a care in the world. Flash re-clearance, no overstep from Kawazin, but they do take that B-Main control. Good information. It's going to be Gavid here in the mid-round for Loud. Pings on the map from Fnatic. Look at all this space as well. Trailblazer spots out so much. And whereas Loud were prioritizing mid-control, Fnatic are just going for bursts. They've got a four-round deficit right now that they're looking to make up by bullying 2Es and Fnatic. Uh, sorry, 2Es and Sadak on the A side. Eight at the feet, slow walk, Paul Durka. Left, right and centre, the man's just fighting off swarms of the utility. Cute wall play as well for Leo to get an angle, but nobody bites. Contact, they know. Alfie is there, Les strikes back. And will he get the fourth? Yes, indeed. Louder fired up, they can feel it. So difficult to get yourselves back into a series like this when you're 2-0 down and didn't really have a chance on the first couple of maps. But here on split, they are demonstrating a better understanding of what they need to be doing. Stopping the sight hits from coming through. And the Fnatic don't have a second layer to their game. We're already into round 18 here. A push down mid, very aggressive from Loud. Another fight taking place, and I can't see a bloody thing. And it's up to Fnatic to contain, to respond, resurrect, used. Space has to be found. You have to try and weave your way around and look at all that damage. Most have dropped down to just almost nothing. And mid control is just never in favor of Fnatic. Loud are piling so many different things in. But Fnatic do have a player advantage right now. And it looks like Les is going to get pressured. I don't think he's going to have the time, particularly, to ult. All over the place. Ult to the back. Sadak. How did they spot that? Possibly just from being pinged out. Most of his own ultimate giving that, that all that information. It's up to Les. Positioning's known from the neural draft. The spike is going all the way around, but just that much easier. Cosmic Divide splits a side tap, fight's still being taken, and this is no good from Fnatic. They're falling, dropping like flies. Lesser's reposition fantastically here to even try to deal with Leo, but it brings it down to a 2v1. Leo somehow getting three in the mix. Wall, plant, four position, and two years just running. Knife out, not expecting it. Fnatic, not out of this map just yet. A really good response, actually. Fnatic's coordination falling down a little, but I just love this individual decision-making from Leo to go all the way through screens. 
because it creates such a pinch on that player on site. His raw skill on demonstrated there, right? In terms of how he takes that fight. The pull just not quite timed early enough. And Les is going to invest his ultimate early on instead of saving it. I really don't think he's ever going to get a chance to reactively use this Viper's Pit because Durker and Chronicle are playing so quickly. So he removes an additional avenue the Fnatic might have been using. And mid has just never been in control of Fnatic. Loud have dominated that area. Cam spots it. Uh, what is this from Les? I mean, Les could just be overheating. Why on earth is he so determined to take this fight? Wide out in the open, backs away though. Viper's pit, regenerated, and guess what? Gotta clear your corners. Boombot didn't do it for him. Turka, and his match there with a jet head to head. And with Aspas controlling the avenue through to A, Les can continue just looking forwards. Trailblaze is going to spot a couple of people in mail here, and there's still three players ready to collect on B. This round looks very difficult for Fnatic to convert. Tyron and Lodo and a call is made. Commit. That's what they want to do. A rocket lands and finds the target. And louder in control. One more step, one more round, and they'll be on map point. Contacting in, and again, it's the off angles, but he's run out of knives. There's no 15 more ammunition. Seconds. Time running low. Both the TPs. He cuts across. 13 seconds left. Paranoia helps. Unless he's forced to back away. It's all on this. What can Les do? Wading into the util, Poster will get that plant down. How has he managed to concoct that situation? What a great mid-round pivot from Boaster. And they've actually got decent post plants. The problem is, the flank is coming through. Whoa, from Sadak. All good, though. Still giving the information to Alpha Yeah. Still that 3v4, though. Alpha Yeah, do you really want to take that fight? Sadak. None the wiser, and he just didn't have the crosshair placement. Looking dangerous, two years, good response and patience, discipline. Showcased the bait and switch on the ropes. All up to Boaster. 1v3, finds one. No! We're in sight. And no kill to be claimed, it's loud. Approaching map point. Fnatic are forced to scramble in this map and really pull some unique mid-rounding out to have a chance. I mean, you've seen how stressful it is for them to be able to take mid, and, I mean, Leo is rough to die in that position. But Lauda playing so well here. This is what you were looking for on Ascent, honestly. But they are looking primed to make this a series. And we saw in their game against DRX that going up 2-0 does not mean you're guaranteed to win the series. That one went all five maps. Perhaps this could do the same. Wow, we're going to be trying Ed Darnis for that. Aspas, no sound cues. Paranoia, TP across, but this time Boast has managed. Percentage play just bordering from insanity to genius. And of course, it doesn't work out. High ground position. And the clearance isn't there. Fnatic. How did they do it? Another crazy TikTok wall coming out from Leo. And Dirk is going to keep this position for the post plant. Spike planted, Nate. That's troublesome, that's dangerous. Yet somehow Leo survives on 19 health and his crossfire. Good luck containing it. Sadak just wades right into it. How many of these set plays do Fnatic have in their arsenal? We've seen now a couple of different flavors, some very unusual mid rounding. How deep does the strap book go? Do they have other ways of being able to generate rounds without that mid control? Do they have even, enough? Even this, I'm amazed that they get it back with Kawanzin doing so much anchoring A. But they eventually brute force their way in. Lauda gonna take an eco round here. So things are gonna close. The gap getting smaller, but at any moment here, Loud can push it across the edge. Across the finish line of the map. That's and take us hoping for. And take us to Lotus of all places. I know. Two years. Ah, not gifted with it. Not that time around. Maybe one collateral. That's all he's going to be getting in this map. Plant still down. This is looking really odd. 
Fight's being taken all over the bloody place. Still, three players of Loud remain. And we'll take the fight. Not eager to drag the weaker weapons into the next round. Of course, this was the half by. Smoke, though, pushes them away. A while until that one fades. A couple of rifles are going to be salvaged in the middle of all of this. Do they want to play for the retake? Looks like they're going to commit to it. Smoke fades. An open sight line. Snake bite. Off to the side. Alfie watching, though, and it's immaculate. Great crosshair placement. And Boaster, he was a safety net. And so, Josh, it's creeping and crawling ever so closer. The gap certainly closing, but Loud remain one round away from breaking the longest undefeated streak we've ever had at a global tournament. And yeah, we keep making comparisons to Sentinel's run at that first inaugural LAN where they defeated Fnatic. Well, Sentinels went 10-0 there at Masters 2 Reykjavik. Fnatic are currently 11-0 on an absolute dominant run through lock-in. And Lauda poised to challenge them. One round, eyes on the trophy, but still a long journey from that. Focus on the present. Everybody in the arena willing them forwards. One big moment, one superstar play, one good call from Sadak. And we'll be headed to Lotus and make a serious series out of this. Collect the nerves. You've come so far, Loud. You do not want to tumble and fall now, not when you're so close. Getting to that fourth map, it's the sole goal, but you've got to take it one round at a time. Three opportunities. So Loud are taking a timeout here, and I'm curious about the defensive adjustments that they're going to make. Because Fnatic have not been fighting too heavily over mid, but they have still been throwing it in occasionally. And you don't want to allow them mid control. Loud's comp is so good at denying it, you never really want to give it to them for free. Aspas is going to get posted on B main. Big dash forwards from Fnatic. Yep, skipping and jumping all the way over this utility. It's a good call by Loud. They take that space into B main. So an exchange in terms of the territory that's gained in this particular round. Dropping Everything on Aspas. Picks himself out, flash catching, but he TPs across. A hard reclearance, but the spike was planted in the middle of all of this one. Loud. Starting to squeeze, you've got to find these kills. Look at the push. The B main players from Fnatic are wrapping all the way around. There's all flanks the around. on flanks. A pincer play, a pincer maneuver. On top, on the angle, and Aspas, he watches for it. Two remain, make it one. Proving that they've still got what it takes to stand toe to toe with the greatest in the scene here in the grand finals. That resilience, that grit. They pulled it forwards and they've earned themselves that fourth map. It's going to be a strange one coming up. We have not seen Loud on Lotus yet and they're going to need to win it to take us to a fifth. But they're starting to heat up. The individual performance is slightly better, but I think just overall a better game plan, a better understanding of how to work this map. Really solid teamwork. Very nice help for each other too. And I think we're pushed and pulled all the way to the brink, but as I've already mentioned, the series must go on. And so with that, we're going to a short break on the other side of things. The continuation and Lotus will be coming up.
say is incredible. Me and the losers are just not relatable. Don't call my phone because I'm still unavailable. I've been the greatest, it's still undebatable. Breaking the records and make them unbreakable. Mm, blazing the spot, mad clean. Hated it or not, game seven, game tie, vaccine. I'm taking a shot, I'm way up, could never be under you. And I never move like a sucker do. Came out the mud and it wasn't because of you. Look at my stats, I got too many W. W, 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 W. I got way too many W. Came out the mud and it wasn't because of you. W, 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 W. I, uh, yeah. Prices keep on going well. Y'all still need to get you well. Mm. Nothing left to say, I'm well. Fans around the world are out in force today as Loud pushes the series to map number four. We've got watch parties in Buenos Aires, Mumbai, Los Angeles, and London, just to name a few. And their nights will extend just another hour or so at the very least as Loud has handed the very first map loss of the entire tournament to Fnatic here, Bala. Yeah. It's not going to be the undefeated streak that we might have thought after map two, after Fracture. And we're going to map three. I think that was a ridiculously good comeback uh, for them on split. Just the fact that uh, Fnatic even came out on that looking pretty good still. It looked like Alphier was going to start having a game with the anchors. And they adjusted very well in the second half. Yeah, they really did. And for the side of Loud, it really felt like they were just like reinvigorated in this game. The individuals started stepping up a lot more in the second half. We started seeing more of the clutch situations, and it reminded me a lot of some of the previous series that we've seen from Loud. One of their strengths is that when the going gets tough, when the pressure applies, they are fantastic at coming up with these miracle rounds in scrappy situations, like the pistol round here for Sadak. Whereas on the other hand, for Fnatic, I feel like in these situations, they start to crumble a little bit. And in this map, we saw so many moments where Fnatic was making mistakes, not clearing corners, missing out on a trade, all these little moments that are kind of reminiscent of some of the previous issues this team has had. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely some roughness here from the side of Fnatic, who were definitely not looking like themselves from the previous two maps. They finally give up an advantageous half to the side of Loud for the very first time, and then they can't get that bonus round win in the second half. Dropping that gives that major momentum swing over to Loud and really stop Fnatic from getting themselves back into that match. I got to give credit as well to Les, uh, especially on that second half, for him to yeah. maintain composure, oh, yeah. shut down a lot of the rotates that Boaster was calling that made those rounds chaotic like you're talking about, Mimi. He thrived in those situations. That 4K at the top of 
have had been holding ropes push was phenomenal and he has been a rock for this team and he also was the guy who shut down optics little comeback in the last grand finals that we had just in champions 2022 I mean, Les, he owned the leaderboard in this map. Aspas not too far behind him either, though, Mimi, and that's another player that we've been wanting and waiting for something here today. Yeah, the first two maps were a little bit slower for the side of Aspas. Game number one in this series in particular. But here on Split, with this double duelist composition, he really came alive. On their attacking side, this team did a fantastic job, I think, of varying up their executes, making this double duelist composition feel like it has a, a lot more dimensions than maybe we've seen them throw out in the past. And Aspas, as an individual, did great in varying up his Play, going different directions and still finding impact consistently. That's a pretty steady ramp up. Game one to two to three there for Osbos. And so if he starts getting cooking for real here, Seth, uh, now I'm wondering what he can pull out on Lotus. So that's what you want to see. But the big question is, Lotus. Lotus, what, right, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> is it just going to be a similar situation where we have, you know, this raised jet coming through once more, but with Lotus being a three spike, a spike site map, it feels like that really limits the amount of utility that you have. I'm really curious to see what they put together. Yeah, I mean, given what we've seen on Pearl from them, on Icebox from them, and now we're going to see what they go for Lotus here. This is a map that Harbor can work. I think this is a map that we've seen the team try Harbor on at this tournament, and I, I think very much so that Loud is going to maybe try for that. And that's why I was saying, Ice Icebox pushing all the way back towards the map five for Fnatic is kind of staying away from that strength, that rock that has been there for Loud in these Harbor comps. Yeah, and I think that in this composition, I'm wondering if they're going to maybe try and pull out a double controller composition. Omen has had quite a prevalence on this map. The power of those teleports to get across to Rubble, get early space, find those paranoids as well is fantastic. But on the side of Fnatic, they've ran a comp unique from most other teams in this tournament. No Omen, no Breach. Instead, they're playing this double controller composition where they're kind of putting an emphasis on the fade raids and on Durka instead. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see too many adjustments. I mean, Bala was kind of talking about it before. These are two teams that don't really like to shake up their comps too, too much. So expecting to see that Viper raise Astra KJ fade from the side of Fnatic. But Loud is the big one that has to go under the microscope. What do they do? You're talking about liking the harbor on this map. Tuis is going to start with it. Yeah, Prime Gaming Agent Select. We're already getting a look at the harbor. It's an interesting situation where Loud has evidence of what Fnatic wants to play on this map. It's really a question mark what Loud wants to bring out. Yeah, and the game plan looks similar to what they've brought out on their Pearl, where they're playing this double controller with both the Viper and this uh, this harbor in the mix. So they're going to have fantastic stall on that defensive side. Also, good retakes with all of those smokes. On the attack, though, that's where they start. They're investing in the Osboss jet, which I'm a little surprised by. Yeah. I think here, showing this comp from Loud is a sign that they're prepared. It's a sign that they're going to be comfortable on this map. If we saw anything else, I would have been very scared. And for Fnatic, what they need is adaptation. They can't have prepped this map. They don't know what Loud is going to play. So it has to come down to Mini's timeouts and boasters to come up to a plan, come up with a plan. Loud is picking up steam here in our grand final. They've already brought us to four, but the question is, can they bring us to five, Seth? It's all going to come down to this Lotus. It's a scary beast that you're up against, taking a look at the score line that Fnatic posted on this map just a day ago. I mean, like I said two days ago, you're able to stop a reverse sweep from happening versus yourself. You want to hope and believe that Loud can push this further, can take this all the way to a game five, give us that truly just go to five map series here in a grand final. And for Loud now, that momentum is starting to build. The crowd is bringing the energy back. They're getting excited yep. again. Loud, they want so badly to win back to back, to win on this home stage in front of their home crowd. I mean, if there was any conditions for something like that to happen. It would be with Loud. It would be with the crowd. It has not happened. DRX is literally the only team to have even gone the distance to attempt it. So it's a long task ahead, Twice. but it's the conditions. Yeah. <laughs> and Fnatic, I gotta get that in there. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> yeah. And for and Fnatic, this is like their first real test. Like you were mentioning earlier, first map they have lost this tournament. First time that they've been in a position where they're in a series where, sure, they're still in control. They still have a map up, but they're a bit more at risk now. Yeah, I mean, how do you deal with taking a punch, right? That's always the question when you're looking at a fighter. And this is Fnatic taking the first punch of the tournament. I, I think, though, their split is one of those maps that are super more more disorganized than you're used to seeing from the rest of the comps. This one we, we just saw against Na'Vi the day before is a lot slower, it's a lot more coordinated. Well, the sixth man is fully behind Loud here. The question is, can this grand final go the distance? Can we get a map five? Here's Brennan Sideshow with the call. 
will be a dream come true for us, I think, but for the competitors, listen, Fnatic are going to be putting everything on the line to stop Loud in their tracks. The desk was hammering it home, Josh. Momentum is behind them, the crowd's starting to get their energy back, and this is a potential dangerous situation for Fnatic. You need to close it out here. I think part of the danger also comes from you have no idea really what Loud are going to bring to Lotus. You've seen the composition before on Pearl, but it's going to play very differently just because of the map. So where's that utility going to go? It's going to put strain on Boaster to figure this out, put strain on Mini. Prior to them losing on Split, the closest Fnatic had come to losing a map was Furia throwing a weird composition at them on Haven. So definitely, this team being one where they, they like to know what they're going up against. Yeah, the counter strategy and prep. It's a big part of their game plan. And what is that? Might be seeing glimpses of it. Maybe they just knew that Leo was going to be posted up on that angle. Spam brings him down, and now a fast play right into the... Oh, my! Wow, what a play. Snake bite into the pull, and Boaster sprays two down. I the mean, frenzy is so good in those moments. And you ain't surviving that. It's thrown uncertainty into the mix. A tap of the spike. A bait, perhaps, of the positioning they want. Some of these Fnatic players give an opening, a shot, a it, freebie. It's a big post plan, it's very open. We've seen people win 1v3s with the spike planted in this spot. No way! Miscoordination, the wall falling, maybe just not calmed, maybe just not called, but traded down to two. Loud need this pistol, they need it desperately. Running and gunning, that's the name of the game. Beautiful one to land, and Aspas with 21 health. Chip stacked against him. Tap of the spike, Boaster sticks it. Feeling confident. He knows his team's got his back half on it. Don't want to give away anything for free. And a pistol round claimed. Diligent from Fnatic closing it out. It's the opening two kills, though, that really made the difference, right? I mean, it's a 3v5 right from the beginning. And we don't even get a sense of how loud they're going to play this kind of comp necessarily because it, wow. it, it went wrong so early. But I am interested to see where different teams commit their Viper utility. The, the wall that Fnatic throws cuts through that rotating door on A. So it actually allows them, more so than any team I've seen on Lotus, to fight for tree control on defense. But it does also weaken, you know, slightly the BC areas of the map. And Chronicle showcasing there that the snake bite is imperative to holding. <laughs> Another 2K, sure. Boaster blessed by God. Two away from the Cosmic Divide. Farming up these players. Fnatic. So comfortable in this round. Throw a bit of chaos into the mix, the rotating door. It's going to mean that Fnatic are like, okay, well, are they pushing B? Are they still C? Game plan from Loud, though, seems to be claim the alt orbs, build up those big alts. Yeah, playing hungry, hungry hippos in round two. I was in with a contact play here. What is a Q? He's oh, just got right past it. All that util that was otherwise going to dissuade. And crosshair placement's not quite good enough. Boaster spots it out. He knows his position is compromised still. There was a chance, a glimpse at a head or neck shot. Chronicle, though, contains. Doesn't look possible here. Boaster's just going to. Tighten the net. The Sadax just getting swarmed from all angles. Yep. The coordination from Fnatic in these moments is still really good. I love this discipline that we're seeing from them. Prime game is flawless. And now we get to see whether, you know, all of, all of that from Boaster is actually going to result in something interesting this round. He's 5-0 and zero right now, and you called it out. He's one away from a Cosmic Divide. Really useful for retakes. But it just seems like their default setup again on defense side. First round that Loud can really buy rifles. And I'm assuming they're not going to lose two immediately. But you never know. Up to Loud to answer back. Patience. Waiting it out now. It's a slow creep towards B main. Alfie broke the door immediately at the beginning of the round to go and help the A players. They're leaving B just off the turret contact. And this wall is also really interesting in terms of its application for B retakes. The turret's going to be revealing quite a bit. Durka just has to contain here. Cross Doesn't need to peek. 
And he's just not looking. Punished for that one. With him falling, high tide rips its way across. Trailblazer has to clear a lot there of the side connection, but now the Cove lets down the free plan, but Boaster getting that kill has now got his ult online. Yeah, that's pretty huge. Cosmic Divide, now he's going to be using it. Why not throw it into the mix? And alongside it, fight's being taken, and it's all coming up, Fnatic. A kill feed of green, and it's vibrant. It's looking good. Well, if Kawazin and Sadak have got something to say about it. Winnable for Sadak. Instant trade, Sadak repositions here. Is it going to be known? The answer is yes, and that's so well played. Dodging, juking, weaving in and out, using the Cosmic Divide, never giving an easy target. Yeah, really solid movement. Very nicely done. But from Loud, I expect Aspas to be able to win that duel. I expect Aspas to be able to take out Chronicle. And I certainly expect Tui's to be able to get a trade. These are the moments that have been seriously letting Loud down in big rounds. And if you want to start an era in Valorant, if you want to get back-to-back -back titles, lift a second trophy, bring Kawanzin and Tuiz into the fold as, you know, make your mark on the Brazilian scene. You have to see Loud winning those rounds. You have to see Loud winning those moments. And everything has gone the way of Fnatic apart from Split so far. Unconventional miss from Turka. But this is an unconventional, he went for a second peak. <laughs> He's always, <laughs> always aggressive. And that's one of the things that's so exciting about watching Durka and Aspas play, actually. They're really comfortable on both of the duelists that are meta right now. Cascade. Attempt there to push them back, the Nana Swarm at Alvia's feet, knew he was not going to be swarmed. But this is what's different about Fnatic's defense on the map. Every other team just gives tree there. And this team is very happy to fight. It is so difficult for Loud to get through that door. Opened up. Dog moving forwards, but it's exchanged with the Prowler, and I believe Fnatic should know there's nothing behind this one. And while all this was happening, again, it's a slow play. Just the Sheriff's in their hands. What can Sadak do with it? Space gain, spike nowhere near, and with 35 seconds left, this is looking a bit dodgy. The push here, if the Boaster close. isn't ready for it, he is. He, he spots it out. And so aware that they've gave up the side, still, Chronicle, what was that? It's a great shot by Sadak. Plant's gonna go down, Cove. Defensive barrier, yeah. Not pushed away, not punished, but it does pull that spike to a bit more of a favorable position. Moving now onto the site, Leo. Haunt up top, close, spots it out. So now they know, reckoning though is used. That's a great response. Flash as well, this is really awkward and really dangerous. And Aspas is coming on a flank here too. He's getting in behind them, and the plant, because it got pulled, is going to be for him. Oh, the Leo. read on it! How do you manage that? Kill found, but still that time is being bled off the clock. Still a danger. Still a situation! The Fnatic, surely you don't do it. Boaster trying to stick it, does not claim half. Kills flooding in, and no more time. Prior work wasn't put in. And what a huge round for Loud to claim. Kawanzin's death does not go in vain. Rifle still saved. And Loud take a massive thrifty there. Off the back of Sadak too, a player that we've been criticizing and I think fairly for his lack of impact. He's found it difficult to get the read on the game as well, but after split, this guy maybe with a bit more confidence. Found his way into a really tricky angle over a C and then hit a gorgeous shot to take out his Viper counterpart and open the door. Huge round. Puts Loud on the board. And what was otherwise supposed to be looking like a 4-0 lead for Fnatic. But early days yet in the map. Seekers and these things, are online. these things are never safe, are they? No. Never. So Cascade used here from Tui's, just taking a bit of space over at A. The door open, Cascade used again. No responding Viper Wall here, which indicates, I think, that Fnatic don't actually have presence there. Another tap at the door. 
Trying to throw a bit of misinformation into the mix. It's loud though that are steadily gaining that position. Less attempt was made there from him. My goodness. What a kill. Great opener. And look at the rotations drawn. Fnatica giving up all this space. I love the contact play that Sadak has started adding in. He started doing it on split, and it's working so supremely well. Fnatic on defense are always waiting for the cue. And Sadak just isn't giving it to them. Plan drop down, powerful post plan. Position! Leo! What is that? Spray control, finding two. And now it's dangerous. Spannable angle, so Les has done his homework and he's got the lockdown online. Could be the difference maker, and I think it will. Chronicle forced to take his own pace, really run him down. Four seconds remaining. Two to be detained, three bullets, can't get it. And look, a kill in sight. Coming into this game, Brent, coming into the Grand Finals, I had two people in my head in an MVP race, and it was Leo on the side of Fnatic and Les on the side of Loud. I think Les has been the best player for Loud over the course of this tournament, and rounds like that demonstrate why. Finding the opener in a lurk and closing things out on the opposite side, huge level of impact, really intelligent repositioning. And after Leo's been a bit quiet on split, maybe... Maybe Les has a chance here of being able to impose his will upon the series. Take that fight directly to him. Leo was leading the charge on almost all of the prior maps. I mean, the first two maps, he was putting on genuinely the best performance we've ever seen in a grand final. Tough to beat. Present showcase, though. Little <laughs> shot down, dash forwards, but no one's clearing. At least the tree area, door. Now to rotate around and spamming it. Really smart by Les. Good clearance. Yeah. And now it's about just being safe. You know, making sure that the flank coming out from Boaster doesn't catch anybody. It's very claustrophobic post plants here, actually, from Loud. Yeah, all They're all stuck up. on site. All grouped up, and that could cause some difficulties. But the weapons Port just... laid down. Weapons are good, good for enough. it. Spraying it. Here with just the one. Is that 2v4? What is he waiting for? Recall star at his feet as he opens up the door, maybe. Waiting. Pops it up. Up close. That's Boaster's domain, but nevertheless, it's Loud who take the round, draw it even, three to three. And thus far, the actual gun rounds have been going the way of Loud. I mean, that, that one, a bit of an anti-eco as Fnatic take a half by, but I've been liking the way that Loud are working the map. I think they're putting a lot of heavy emphasis into controlling A early, faking towards Tree, using Less as a lurker on the other side of the map. And Fnatic are going to take quite an early timeout. I suppose we're halfway through this, this defensive side for them. But this does feel like coming up, round seven could be a massive turning point. Fnatic are one round away from having to go down onto an eco, and there are huge ultimates online for both sides. You're expecting both teams to invest extremely heavily. And it's tricky. If Lau get into post plants, they have the Viper's Pit to work with. But both teams are loaded with absurdly good ults. I'd say over the course of the tournament, Fnatic have been better at constructing game plans around them. Certainly have. This map on that knife's edge. The advantage that we've been placing in Fnatic's hands, that we've been singing their praises for, could rear its head once more. Just because Fnatic have two maps already does not mean that they are favored in the current map. It's true. Momentum doesn't work like <laughs> an avalanche. Mostly just a mental thing. And Loud look like, from my point of view, it looks like they're back on track after split. Finding that presence in the server. And of course, we hadn't seen Fnatic's Lotus until they demonstrated it against Na'Vi. It looked excellent there. But again, just because Loud have never shown Lotus does not mean they're bad at it. 
We kind of learned that lesson yesterday with Fnatic. <laughs> yeah, not much showcase, but the map pool was deep. So Chronicle uses his Viper's Pit to completely lock down C. They're committing Viper and Killjoy to C, completely controlling that. But Loud could run a fake here into B and pivot A, or just go for some kind of pick. Door broken. They have so much map control. Yeah, it's an opening. A squeeze now into the B site. Looks like that was a solid goal, Durka. Let him rip that showstopper. Nothing to show from it, and now a Viper's Pit of their own. Lays it down. The toxic fog rolling deep. I think Leo's ult is going to be massive here. Nightfall into this and follow the Prowler. You might be able to get inside this pit and still win. And there it is, Nightfall. Tagging onto Aspas. It's going to be a Prowler at his back. Maybe he can't quite hit anything. Wall, everything on this one, Boaster. Good positioning for him, but still. Time starting to be bled away. It's down to this fight that's being taken place. Out for year, dealt with, traded, loud, in control. But for how much longer? The pit's fallen, Chronicle spamming, he will fall. Down to the two, on two. Nana swarms, buying them time, Cosmic Divide. That's forcing the issue. And Leo, he's holding the ground, he's a stalwart defender. But Boaster gets half, waiting for the rebush. No more time, backs away, and that's loud once more. Every round feels safe with less involved. It's a Red Bull clutch for him technically, but I mean, the Nana Swarm has just delayed so much time. And then he's so diligent at being able to trade out Leo there. Very nicely done. He knows it. He knows he's put his team in a position to lead the half now. Loud have won one of the most crucial rounds. I said it was a pivot point, massive ultimates invested. And Les is one away from having another lockdown. They need to navigate this aggression over towards Rubble, though. Fnatic have four players pushing this one through. And there's no eyes on it. It'll be Les who is tasked with containing this. A deeper push. Turret's not even watching for it. Smoked off. Moving back. Off angle held, tap, 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 ADSing, looking like Ye out here. Certainly doing the damage. So much done. I mean, the round already over, the big gambit from Fnatic fails. But it was only an Antaiko that Loud have managed to repel. Having said that, Fnatic have only really won pistol round, the follow up, and then the bonus. So Fnatic have demonstrated one round, essentially, round three, where they had some form of rifles in hand and were able to put a stop to Loud. Other than that, this composition that Loud have showcased, that Loud have invented to apply to Pearl, also is working wonderfully as an ace in the hole here on Lotus. Maybe evidence of just how reliant Fnatic are on that preparation, the counter striding play. But when it's taken to the limits, map number four of Lotus, the unknown quantity. Loud, steadily but surely, claiming that lead. And maybe, maybe even running away with it. It's another really important one for Nadek to get on the board in order to halt this. I was talking earlier about momentum not, you know, really mattering too much over the course of a series like this, just being in the players' heads, something that true competitors are able to shake off. But within the game, momentum is massive, and the economy's blooming, the ults are cycling. Louder, firmly in control. Durka goes for aggression off Hard the back fight. with Alpha, yeah. Sadak does not look like he's ready for it, but he still it. picks up one. Getting the one kill there when he was really just being assailed from every angle is just magnificent. Still they do all that. Bullets flying through, not enough to claim the kill through into Kawazin. But he takes a forward position. Dog clearing through, spots the one. Cove, a safe plan offered. And this was such an important round for Lau to win. It's going to put a strain on the economy once more for Fnatic. Poster, desperation. But what options is he afforded? They have to respect the lockdown, they have to back away. This round looks like it's over already. You just got to save.
when both of these teams are so good at their fundamentals that they're trading, rounds can be over based on such a small thing. And I said at the beginning there, Salak didn't actually seem prepared to deal with the aggression coming out from Durka. But Salak has woken up in this game. And the, the shot that he hit, startled, reacted, took out the star player. I mean, look at it from his point of view. He's able to deal with Alphier instead. And that, because of the trading from Les, from Kawansin there, just leads to an eventual 3v2. And Fnatic can't hold on. Lauda so quick to trade, whichever team ends up getting the early footing, it often just flows that way. Fnatic not gaining any ground. His rifle, V-rifle rounds have not been going their way. Loud, taking charge, taking position. Maybe even taking names off the back of this. Look at all this control. So Althea has been breaking this door frequently. Not every round, but frequently. And this time, Lauda taking it and using it for themselves, threatening that they could be going into B. The turret removes so much information from Fnatic's defense. And look at how they've isolated Durka on A. Completely separated. He's gonna have to perform a miracle, a magic trick. And he's been up at a task in the past. Reckoning though, that'll push him back. Can't withstand that one. The water burst, the water sprouts, just making it incredibly difficult to stand your ground and take the fight to them. Cove, unconventional. Plays this one down, and Kawazin's offered an opportunity to collect this one. But it's counterplay. Lockdown used, pushes them all the way back. Lauda forced to just really vacate the premises. And this is where you've got to control the breakable door. Boaster's the key player here. And he's going to be trying to do that damage. Thorn in the side, smoke, crossed up. Leo, before it even bursts, it was a recall. Oh, my! The IGL making the most of it. And Leo's there as well, a helping hand for surviving and the retake looking sublime. There's Fnatic leaning on their strengths, getting the ultimate rounds working for them. Is it too little too late? Perhaps not. If they can make this a 6-6 half, there's definitely all the chances in the world for Fnatic. We have no idea how good Loud are at the defense of this map. Your guess is as good as mine at home. Such insane parity. And these teams are pushed to the brink. Les has picked up the operator here. Expecting some kind of peak early on. And certainly, Boaster has been jiggling this. Smoke's going to be a bit delayed, though. Orb gained. And space. Cascade as well, going to be threatening that there could be a push coming through onto B, but I think the turret, deep in his position by Alphier, will be making sure they've got a full knowledge in the back of their minds as to where these players are holding. Great opener. We're both the falling. Fnatic no choice now but to run their way out of there. And this post plan now, the louder getting set up into, it's a brutal one, still counter spam, a faster play indeed. With Aspas falling, there's a possibility, a chance. Possibly an overheat there from Aspas, looking to take the fight a bit too early. This is going to be a standard Pearl C post plan. Everybody playing off site, just spamming from Sand. This could be nigh unwinnable if you are trying to retake into this one. Sanak holds his ground, stands his ground. Kill found, Leonardi off angle, unconventional. But all they gotta do is hold the sight line. And it should just be gifted to them. Alvier, so much to do. Time still running, taps it, forced the fight, can't hit the shot, seven bullets. And he knows he has to stick it. It's the only percentage play, but it's shut down nevertheless. It's a great post plan. It's really difficult. I don't think we've seen any team properly dismantle this. You know, from a theorycrafting point of view, I think teams will eventually be looking to do big flanks through the attackers spawn to try and deal with that setup and put pressure on those players. But at the moment, the map is so new. Teams are still figuring out how to respond and whether they have the time and the space to go for elaborate stuff like that. Final round of the half. Loud on the precipice of making this an exceptionally good Lotus attack. They're so quick at applying pressure around the map. 
There's 125 still left on the clock, and they're pressuring C, they're pressuring B. And it's got Fnatic a bit discombobulated. Players rotating this way, that way. Push, pulled. Player spotted though. It's up to Boaster again. Pull. That's good. Locks Aspas and pulls him right back into the crosshair. And that's really stunted this attack now. Out. What do they do without the spearhead? Calls made once more. Wall goes up, but a snake bite. Just to push them away, just to push them back in case that contact play is there. Cosmic Divide. It's a cacophony of ultimates being used, and that really does invite moments like that. Chaos. Nightfall now. All the senses dulled and deafened. Very close from Chronicle. Does the spike get down? Tapping of it. Raw spam. Satchel pushing him back. Fight needs to be taken. Sadak needs to win it. He does not. Pit down. Dropped. Rocket to the side. No one is capable of standing up to that. And so it's down to less. But even he can't withstand it. Five to seven. Fnatic making it just that much more respectable. And they have battled back in this half to make it feasible that this could still be the final map in the series. They could get crowned here on Lotus as the top team from lock-in, the top team to start the 2023 season. But it's gonna put so much emphasis on this pistol to draw them back level in the, in the map. So much emphasis indeed, but before we get into that, let's send it down to the desk to break it all down. Thank you so much, Bren. Loud find themselves yet another two-round advantage going into halftime here. All round, already mounting more rounds than we saw Navi able to put up in an entire map on Lotus against Fnatic just yes. yesterday. Yesterday was domination. This one is a different story. This is what I was talking about. This Harbor stuff for Loud has been crucial for them throughout this entire tournament run. And they finally bring it out. For the first time we see their Lotus, it's quite good. Yeah, it really is. And similar to what we saw from them on that Pearl composition, they have been really really good at playing into some of these retakes. But the way it started out for the squad actually was with Fnatic being really incredible in some of these retakes, right? They they uh, are able to get back into this A site. This was the case from their game versus Na'Vi as well. But later into this half, it became a story of Loud and how they were playing in their posts. Yeah, the real amazing thing about both sides is they were really working their strengths. The C retakes were really good for Fnatic. They went four for six. The A post plants, with less the way he was playing, they went three for four. So as soon as you started seeing that, both coaches were saying, let's lean into that. This guy right here, Achilleos, 300 ACS on less. He topped the leaderboards on split, and he's looking to do the same here. Yeah, he is. I mean, he put up a strong performance while he was feeling under the weather versus DRX. Now he is right back up into tip shop shape. We saw him on the walkout popping off, really just reveling in the crowd. A little bit of a slow start, much like the rest of Loud, but in this map, he is looking incredible. But we still need to see these incredible performances. Uh, this Harbor finding value as they get ready to swap sides. Prior to coming into this map of Lotus, 61% win rate for the attackers. Fnatic are definitely not out of this despite that two round deficit. Yeah, in the first half it was about Les's lurks. Now it has to be about him anchoring because Fnatic is very good on these side executes. They are not out of this game yet. Do you believe in magic? Because Loud is pulling out all the tricks here in map number four. Let's get the second half underway back over to our casters this pistol round gonna have that vital importance for a team like loud a reverse sweep that magic that is necessary you're gonna need more than tricks maybe even just a blessing some divine intervention it looks like loud is set up to try and contest sand here three of their players cascade and a trailblazer stops you from being able to shoot that so easily and they get a lot of information out of it and start loading alt orbs early. No, they didn't go for it, actually. I thought, thought that was going to be the game plan there, but they're just clearing the area out and Whoa. starting very quick rotates towards A. Already predicting where Boaster's going to be taking his team as a reaction. Second guess themselves, though. All picked up for good measure. Drag those rotations so loud. Trying to put a stop to this. And Fnatic on their attack side were loading orbs into Durka. You'll see this all across the map. Durka is their focus for getting his ultimate online on the attack side. And then they use the showstopper to create space on B and on C. I don't see why they would deviate from that plan when it worked so well against Na'Vi. 
But now Kawanzin is really going to get tested. They cleared sand at the beginning of this round. How quick does the help come? There's still four players defending A. Yep. It's Alpha here. He's really pulled the brunt of that all the way over. The defenders just swarming to position, and it's given over that free sight. Leo set up for the plant. Nothing to dissuade him, nothing to push him back. And this is a call to be made. Look at this from Fnatic. Three players. Look like they want to fight two for nail. Up close here. What have they got to play off of? Jump peak. Wide a swing. And the guns rain, but oh my god! The heads fall and tumble. Twisting off the necks. That's ridiculous shooting from Fnatic. And in a 4v1, less just is not going to be afforded any opportunity. Poster weaving in and out, no easy fight. What a play. And that is massive, the call to be made, but also how collected Fnatic were to be able to withstand that. Look at the shooting here. I and mean, that's ridiculous. Oh. I think that's a collat headshot yeah, that like Durka it. hits. That's nasty. That's oh, nasty. And then immediately follows up. Everybody on Fnatic is disgustingly, sickeningly skilled. But Loud have demonstrated in this series already that they have mental resilience. That they can take a hit and bounce back. We've seen it from them in prior series too. They're off balance for now. Play made over towards the C section. Look at that. Warp gained as well. Counter spam. Goes in, you're lucky to get out. Even for health, but it's holding the flash. Pop flash play around the side, and readjustment is there. Fnatic are going to be swarming into the A site here by the look of things. Less only with a frenzy to hold them off. But for loud, this round is not the one that they're playing for by any means. A couple of guns out of hands would be useful, I suppose, but loud are going to be firmly thinking about the future of this map. No clearance at the back of the site, Less. Oh my. Reaction. Alfie majestic with it. Alfie wants to be a bit more of a presence as well. It's a flank play by him with the Marshal, but he's going to have to aim for the Cranium. <laughs> if he manages to pull this one off, be most the most absurd play I've ever seen. Won't be allowed. 7-7 seven to seven for Fnatic. Drawing even. And a back and forth game. The dance has been played by Loud and Fnatic. Draw so much more closer. Putting serious pressure on the Loud squad that's playing in front of their hometown here. Sao Paulo, where these teams have been based for a long time in Brazilian Valorant. Lifting the back-to-back -back trophy here would be everything, but they need to convert on Lotus. And remember, Loud have only ever lost to two squads in the history of this team. They've only ever lost four series ever. They barely know what it's like to lose. It's the first time playing against Fnatic and the heat is on. Turned all the way up. Pistol out. Deals with that one. Got to respect the util though, so Sadak backing away. Loud also going for that reclearance today, main. They've got a lot of information with this one. Trailblazer. And it's a really heavy defensive hold over B. I mean, you've got a cascade in your face, a viper wall that you take damage, as, or decay rather, as you go through. And alarm bar, nano swarms. B looks really difficult, but I told you they were going to load alt orbs into Durka. And here's where it pays off. Showstopper in hand. Some kind of strategy is going to be crafted here, most likely around Durka's entry. B looks very difficult, though. Even oh, if Durka himself difficult. gets through, I don't know how everybody else would. And it looks like they're heading back to Aspas. Holding the off ankle. No heads to be found, backs away. Bit bloodied, a bit bruised. That space is all going to be gained. This is really getting quite pressured in terms of time. Spike's going to be landing and rotating its way over towards C in the midst of all of this one, and it feels like just smoke and mirrors all over the, all over the map. A regrouping here. Are they waiting for Durka, or do they want to try and use the timing off the A distraction? Looks like they wait, pause for a moment, and Durka's going to walt in. 20 seconds left, it's everything! Showstopper exchange, but look at that! Snake bite, Nano Swarm, reset, let's with four! Just magnificent! And Sadak finding value from the grave as well. Don't forget that. Great shutdown, but really, Fnatic being their own worst enemies by playing the clock out for so long. 
They had Dirkus Alt online way earlier in the round. But yeah, it's the Nana Swarm alongside with the Vulnerable that the Snake Bite applies. Just shreds those players and sets less up. No withstanding it. And that's the entire game plan from Fnatic. All of those alt orbs that they harvested in the previous rounds, that's designed for that exact round to work. For that play, for Durka to entry, for space to be made, and a path card for the rest of the team to enter. And now Fnatic, they're going to be pushed. They're going to be pushed. Lado taking the lead, and Fnatic are forced to take a timeout. There aren't really big alts to make a game plan around. And so far, both B and C look off limits. I mean, when I'm looking at the setups here, the Viper combined with the Harbor and the, um, the, the Killjoy utility, Looks it's almost very fun. difficult to get through on B, unless you've already taken rubble control and broken the door. Yeah. Almost impenetrable. The defensive setup of Loud really paying off. Forcing Fnatic to take their timeout. Second one of the map. When Fnatic played against Furia, there was a timeout taken. And Boaster said in the post-match interview that he just had a quiet moment to sit and think about how to break down his opponent and he eventually came up with the plan, with the game plan that worked. And they were able to win that one in OT. The longer you allow Fnatic to ponder on it, they've got some good minds there, experience too. But Loud currently winning the prep battle, I would say. Shoes on the other foot, Fnatic. Again, footsteps all around Sand, making sure that they just pump a bit of noise into it, and it causes Loud to use a bit of that util in response. Still, it's a deep A main push, and Loud with these two players, you can see Aspas and Kawazin are disrespecting it for now, holding these angles. Prowl around the sides. In the faking. middle of this, yeah, faking that presence. It looks like B was their goal, but this is going to be such a tough sight to break through. Dog broken, and now they're alerted to it. Let's will pick. fall. Major, major pick. And none of that util is going to be helping them out to push them back. It's a fast pivot, a call made straight into C. Sadak has to be the man. The man of the hour. Prowler latches on still, but again, Fnatic, they waited out. This is such a strange move. Fnatic under time pressure again. They're grasping. They wanted to get back into C, knowing that there was no Nana Swarms there, and now they have to re-hit 25 seconds. It's so uncertain, but it's giving a hop over and away! Shut down! Spray down! It's all sad hack. Angle watch for pure reflexes, pure precision! And the ace is denied, but I think he's okay with it. What a potential turning point in this series split was. I feel like the first couple of maps, Sadak was completely mentally overwhelmed with trying to deal with what Fnatic were throwing at him. But after split, the preparation is all there. Sadak doesn't have to worry as much about countering his opponent's game plan and instead can just get back to fragging as we expect from this guy. His individual form has improved so much compared to the first couple of maps. The team captain for Loud has truly woken up and answered the call. Stalwart defender. Prowler misses from Leo. Maybe a sign of a bit of a blunder there, but... So after Durka was having his alt orbs loaded up, he had that you know, fateful failure into the seaside with his ult. Since then, they've been loading ult orbs onto Leo. So there's going to be a play off the nightfall in this round. A delicate dance yet to have. Pressure now being applied straight into tree. Fnatic not messing around. Nightfall cleaves its way, scatters across, latches onto one. And look at how they leave a couple of players back. Chronicle and Alpha yeah, playing very reserved post plan positions. That's what I would have wanted to see Loud do in the first half. After the retake. Durga's position here is common to be pre-fired. He has to play this on an off angle as the smoke fades. It's only one for one. But is it going to be enough? Damage certainly being done. Lockdown still in play. 
and this has to be respected. Far back enough that there's still going to be options availability. And again, the important player here to deal with is Sadak. Bound. And Sadak, anchor on the side, two! Spike though, not being defused, but Angle's watched for Leo. He's still a threat into the 1v1 and no more time, surely, whatsoever. The top of it, and he is just far too clean. Leo once again delivers them another round, but it's the time pressure. Loud having to wait for so long as Les's lockdown was triggered. Whenever there's a lockdown retake happening, you've got to clear that breakable door position. Sadak almost gave them an opening to be able to win. But look at Leo, look at how unfazed he seems. This guy's 19. He was not worried. Playing in his first grand finals against the defending champions of Valorant. And I've not seen a flicker of doubt on his face. With 7,000 fans against you. Feels like he's been born molded for this kind of battleground. I do like that Fnatic have adapted to try and take Rubble early. It pulls people away from B and C and allows maybe a pivot back there later on in the round. Now, I mean, we can see that Aspas is set up on a really dangerous line with the Operator. So Fnatic's best bet might just be to try and shove this into three defenders on A. Layers of utility. That dog is spotting the most. And that's all the info gained. Wow. Viper's pit. Off How the do you the get around this one? They pop the Viper's Pit and rotate players to B, anticipating the pivot from Fnatic. It doesn't look like it's coming. Locked down, close into the corner. Anything to break this one, it will clear that Viper's Pit. Sadak really forced to respect this one. Has to back away. Rejoins the rest of his team, but the pit will fall off the back of that one. Nana swarms, buying time. Seeker broken up close, that's Durka, who wanted to take the fight to them. One round is ahead, Cosmic Divide. It splits them up, but Les has dropped down into the back of the site, into the pit. In the midst of all of this one, it's a pop flash play, and fully blinded up, Durka can't manage it! Loud with two. Making a way across now, the scale is in action. The running gun between the wall, back and forth. In the 2v3, Aspas wins his fight. And Chronicle, is it planted for you? It is, but it matters not. Loud had to fend off a reverse sweep against them, an attempt at one at the very least. So recently. They know it's doable. And they're in control here on Lotus. Barring a response from Fnatic, it looks like we're heading to map five. Fnatic are going to be forced to take an eco. Loud on the precipice of getting to 11 on the board. That would be huge. Deep angle. Horn reveals Aspas. The disrespect shown, though, he still wants the angle. In fact, he wants a bit more. Look at him pushing deep up through C as Fnatic look to threaten the rest of A. But this gives good knowledge. Lau can force one of their players to rotate around, containing towards B and A. <laughs> I mean, what, what is going to happen here if the rotating door between B and C opens? Aspas retreats just a little bit. But I think the game plan for Fnatic is more so about getting alts online, to be honest, more so than anything else. Door broken. Kawazina hold. Lovely shot from Alpha. Pushing, lurking, wading their way in now. Plants. Love to push this back, so it's going to get that extra money in the bank. If Fnatic wants to secure this round, they need plays to be made. Alfie has got himself tucked into an advanced position. Spraying two down with the Spectre would be surely more than they can hope for, but Boaster's ready to help. Time clears. Holds his ground, and the angle walks for. No funny business. 
two walls in Chronicle's face. It's not planted for him. And the fuse just being stuck. Full peace of mind for Loud, and that 11th round is theirs. Louder two rounds away from taking us to a fifth map. We said earlier their history was guaranteed to be made today. It was absolutely guaranteed. Chronicle either lifts a trophy as the second, you know, the first time ever that a player has lifted two trophies, or Loud get the back-to-back. -back. However, I did not see it potentially happening in also a reverse sweep. Hopefully there's enough pages to record that kind of narration. Fnatic is still going to have something to say about it. Their attack sides have been slow and ponderous so far. Boaster needs to increase the pace. It's all well and good having a meticulous game plan, picking every ult orb up, stressing the defenders out. But there needs to be time on the clock to actually get the spike down, get into comfortable territory. Flash round aside, positions known, and a cascade will push back Fnatic further. Four players ready to collect on C. Sadak. Getting away with it there, spots it out. But a spike grouping up. Bodies there. Fnatic trying to keep their options open, of course. They've got players lurking through into B main, but now the util used. Flash, Boombot. 30 seconds, Bren, again. It's just running too low. And, and, and they've not put pressure anywhere else other than C. It's looking like Lau for the slam dunk to get that 12th round, to get map point. But now the pressure's applied, and now the call gets made. Move forwards with the rest of the team, spamming those common angles. But guess what? Ultimate's waiting, and Kawasi, no stranger to it. Running all the way around, running rings around them. Everyone drops, and everyone falls. Over here just to survive with bated breath, but he is being collapsed upon. <laughs> Unbelievable. Loud. Push to their limits. Bloodied and bruised throughout this entire locking tournament. They find themselves up against a very demonic Fnatic squad. Claiming the first two maps, it was looking almost over, but they have wrangled it back into control. And one step removed from bringing us to that fifth and final map. Dash said, what do you do? What do Fnatic do once they first get hit? Once that first punch lands, do Fnatic have what it takes to be able to rally back? At the moment, Loud are swinging. Pure desperation. Two players fall, containment, flick to the side, Aspas. Might be good for two. Jiggling the movement, everything to play for, and every player falling. Loud do it! Allowed to bring it all the way. And I was asking the veteran presences from Loud to step up, to set an example, to show to the rest of the team that comebacks like this are possible. That the match is never over unless you believe it to be so. And Les and Sadak have answered the call. They put up an unbelievable performance there on Lotus, both in terms of the calling, the fragging, the lurking, the anchoring, the shutdown. And this is going to five. This is going to Icebox. The territory that I have no clue where this is going to end up. A great map for both sides. And form swinging 
like a chaotic pendulum currently, oscillating wildly back and forth on the knife's edge. Loud respond to the call. They've well earned that fifth map. Push to the brink here in the grand finals. Both teams fighting all the way to carve out that page in the history books. And my God, has it been brilliant to watch. Don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. Even more coming up. And you know you're not going to want to miss this. Welcome back to Sao Paulo, where just two days ago, Loud shot down the reverse sweep attempt. Today, they find themselves trying to complete it, and they are now just one map away from doing so. Mimi, they've taken us the distance. That they have. What a fantastic rally from Loud. And from the side of Fnatic, they were asked a question in this map. We've seen what they can do. We know that they are a good team on Lotus. We had no expectation of what would be brought out by the side of Loud. And for Fnatic, they failed to adapt. They failed to find the solution to that game plan. And now they're headed the full distance, and the reverse sweep is very possible. Two hours ago, Fnatic was looking at the flawless tournament run to end this. And it looked so good. It looked like it was a damn near possibility when we went to split. It looked like a surefire thing. Now, <laughs> now, they're looking like they might be the first team to get reverse swept in history. 
That would go back to the original narrative about this team a little bit, though, would it not? But yeah, I mean... The very identity they've been trying yes, to shake exactly, this tournament. Exactly, exactly. They still have an out, though. They just need to be able to rebound from this Lotus loss. They elect to go there. They fall flat on it. Loud able to look very strong on both sides of that map. Follow once again. It's Les leading the charge here for this Loud squad on map number four. Yeah, and honestly, he was the engine to this reverse sweep getting started, right? He was the guy on split who brought rounds like this back into it. Then on Lotus as well, he continued that same momentum forward. And I honestly think a major reason why Loud is still in this game is him alone. Absolutely it is. And if you think back to Champions 2022, it was Les who helped get this team over the line to help them win their first championship and here again when they're up against the wall he is performing to a level that he's absolutely incredible and keeping them in this series his lurks on the attacking side were excellent the way that he was anchoring on the defense was perfect and for Fnatic they were really struggling in that map it, it felt like consistently on that attacking side they were letting that clock run down they were kind of folding a little bit under the pressure and then running into these strong setups and getting mowed down by loud it just feels like everything for less is just firing at all cylinders, his decision making, his crosshair placement, his reaction times, everything is incredibly on point for him right now. And Fnatic need to find a way to shut this guy down if they want to walk away victorious and hold that trophy. So Les, the consistent top performer for Loud, but we had also put some onus on Sodok to pick it up here in this map on Lotus. And he did exactly that. He picks up our HyperX Reflex moment for the day. In the grand final highlight, it belongs to him and him only. Yeah, I think the, the casters, Brennan and Josh were talking about it really well. This guy was asked a monumental question. Can he bounce back from the week two maps that he started off? The first two maps, very weak for him, especially Fracture where he was asked to play the raise. And then Split, he starts going back a little bit. The mind games start going. He looks like he has answers to Boaster. And then on Lotus, he looks like a completely new man. He's back yeah. to him, normal roles, and he's calling like a beast. Yeah, that he is. Sidok, he managed to answer that question. But now that same onus is being put on to Boaster, heading into map number five. He was the guy in charge. He was making the perfect calls in the first two maps. And now he struggled to find that solution. And here on Icebox, which is where we're headed next, a map that used to be Fnatic's absolute bread and butter, there is that big question. Is it enough? Will Boaster be able to come up with a plan to win this series? And I, I have to continue to bring back up Icebox for Fnatic against 100 Thieves, yeah. right? It was a amazingly solid start. And then it fumbled, and then it looked like 100 Thieves was going to bring back the entire map. And they had a miracle round to save it, but there was still the question, is there actually going to be Fnatic succumbing to the pressure? And I think right now, with this pressure of the reverse sweep happening, uh, Icebox, the decider, I think, again, both teams should feel confident on the map. It's more a question of the confidence they're feeling in the moment because it's the pressure moment. It's the biggest stage you've played on. We're heading into our prime gaming agent select, Achilleos. This is it. All cards on the table here. You're making your final run. You're bringing out those strategies. If you got something special, this is the time to show it. I mean, there's so much pressure on both of these teams right now. For the side of Loud, you've got being able to pull off that reverse sweep for the first time here in front of the home crowd, getting that back the back trophy for Fnatic. It's about not losing out in this series when you had such a strong, consistent start. Not falling back into the trap of just being able to drop these series and not being able to win championships. There's pressure on both sides. They go back to the composition that I think kind of defined this team in 2022. This was their best map then. They played fantastically on this map of Icebox. And now here, with a new roster, with the same expectation of winning a tournament, they have to prevent this reverse sweep, or Loud is about to make history. Yeah, this one's really interesting. I think, yes, they started to lose that lead against 100 Thieves, but what we saw in that was a lot of strategy. It was a lot of attempts from Boaster, from Mini, from the team, to work on the executes that they had, and it was a lot of new stuff. Not just what was happening in that old composition that maybe you're referencing. So I think there's still a lot left in the tank, but they have to find a way to siphon it out. History will be made here today either way. This is it, the grand final, map five. The winner brings their region an extra spot at Masters Tokyo in June. Let's send it back to our casters. Here's Bren and Sideshow. What a way this series has gone backwards and forwards. It's been on a nice edge at times, but ultimately history will be made here today. Yeah, and this crowd has got every penny of what they paid for. I mean, an absurd match so far that can only end in an absurd outcome. It really doesn't matter which way this map goes. Like the desk was talking about, something historic is bound to occur. You either get 
the back-to-back -back winners in front of the home crowd, pulling off the first reverse sweep in VCT history. Or you get Fnatic defying the choking narrative, hoisting their trophy, and Chronicle becoming the most decorated player that we have in the game. And so here we go. Icebox is the staging ground. And it will be one final fight between both of these teams. You couldn't find a better map for it. You really couldn't. Both of these teams have such great ideas here. Home ground for Fnatic, but it's been loud that impressed me the most. The decision's I mean, made. Pushing all the way deep, they want to take Snowman control. And a kill found for them. We're both to falling. None of that Viper utility is going to be useful or used. How do Fnatic respond? Rival, oh my goodness, Sheriff shots ringing. No kills claimed, Dart. Late to be broken, but it is that pivot, and a wedge is being driven, is it the Sadak? What a containment, and what a kill to claim. Lau taking the pistol. And what a time to get a flawless pistol as well. Lau have been able to answer back with some of these in, towards the end of the series. At one point, only one out of five pistol rounds won. But they look absolutely immaculate there. And that's a demonstration of why I think their attack rounds have looked so clean. The way they use the Harbor and the Viper adds so many different layers into this. Sometimes they flash through the Viper wall. Sometimes they take deep control on the site. Many different layers. Surely Dirk does get out of that. I mean, they're, they're just going for something aggressive early, but Durka is not going to get away with it. Not a single misstep. Lauda hoping to have a clean closeout, but Boaster has something to say about it. Running and gunning, moving his way forward, still alive in a fight, and doing significant damage. Flash play into the back, though, and it's corralled him. Lauda of all the control. All the weapons. Fnatic mentally have got to hold on in this series. Playing into the crowd is not that difficult at the start, when things are even or when you're winning. There's some satisfaction the players get out of silencing them. But at this point, when you in your own mind know you're letting the series slip, the crowd's response just serves to heighten that. It's not an external pressure, it's the amplification of that internal pressure that everyone on Fnatic already feels. That nervousness. And this round has to be a big one. Fnatic, there to prove that they can stand and go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, not crumble under those expectations and that pressure. This is the one to win, Turka. That's no a wide wasted. swing. Really wide, and he doesn't give up his space. He's looking for information because the turret went down. Less already finding value in the Killjoy head-to-head, -head, winning a bit of the info game, forcing the drone to come out from Leo and pulling people away from A. Can Sadak find the timing to pull the trigger here? Trailblazer held. Kawazin moves forwards. Sage Wall, a bit of a gap in the play, but a head taken clean off. Durka holding that high ground position now, a bit of maneuvering. Great dart, pushes them back once more. What? And you've got to be kidding me! An overheat in the moment, but still maybe Chronicle can salvage it. There was a flash play to set that one up, but running out of ammunition, running out of bullets, it matters not. Three in the round, two years to remain. And what a round from Chronicle that is. The play from Durka set up with his swing. And then Chronicle claims another. Already, though, I think you're witnessing the level of confidence and swagger that Durka is going to bring. He considers this map his playground. And as the time ticks down on two E's, Fnatic claim their first. And getting that round on the board, so damn important. Persuade those narratives. Fraud Natic, Choke Natic, whatever you want to call them, whatever you want to label this team. 
Getting that one on the board is going to do a lot for the mental. It definitely is. Look at this play, though, using the distraction of Durkin to be able to collect one, and then that spray wow. control is immaculate. Immaculate from Chronicle. Everybody else on Fnatic is hunting for their first trophy. Chronicle looks hungrier than <laughs> almost everybody going for the second. And if Fnatic can do it, if they can deny the reverse sweep, they can claim that title. It's Chronicle who's making the history books. It's him that's going to be the first player to lift two titles. Durka left on his own. A little bit of a flash bay. Durka is going to find it very difficult to get aggressive in the early round because of this cascade. Always, always going to be up in his face. We saw Buzz struggle with it too. But Durka not so easily dissuaded. And when he open, my goodness. Shot connects, but that's an instant reply. Insane confidence though, isn't it? Loud need to look to punish him early so that Durka starts to play a little more passive. With Kawanzeen falling, the threat of a flash through the smoke, flash, a flash through the Viper wall, is not there over towards B. But the pivot called by Sadak, everyone returns to him over on the A side. Presence shown, Util dropped down. Loud are making it more than aware that they are scaling into it. Aspas is so far away from this hit. Yeah. All the way back on B. He's going to be that last final piece of the puzzle. But a spike denied. There's no time left. Good 12 spam. seconds. Spike in their hands. And it is Aspas who has to do the most. And he does. Distraction in the play. And the pieces get picked up. The round gets salvaged with the spike down. It's a post plan. Chronicle move forwards. Can't quite take the fight and win it. Alpi has still got a chance here. Sadak and Les are very weak. Does the lockdown get invested? It yes, does. it does. Huge investment from Sadak. Alphia, he's got half, sticking. Nothing afforded, no time. Half under the fuse. You've got to be kidding. <laughs> what is that? What an absurd round. Ha how Aspas got that much value on the flank, I'll never know. And how on earth does Alpha yeah, get that and bring things down to milliseconds, the difference? That's how close that was. Hair's breath away. I'm but you got to You got to put full focus forwards. Dirk is looking for an early fight again. He's got a hero rifle in the round. Fnatic normally are unassailable on their defense side. Sometimes their attacks don't look as solid, but defense side of Icebox, they are usually immaculate. And so far, already getting tested. Everything to play for. Fiber Orb stopping the approach, no one watching top nest. No kills on either side, but the Cove gets brought down, and Durka, he finds one. Great opener. Dash disengage. Asmas tries to play his life here. The weaponry's not ideal. Util now to try and buy some time. A bit of spam as well. Chronicle was aiming to get two, but Durka, Boaster, running what? guns. It's pure, pure chaos. RNG in the moment. And what can be done from this? Durka with three. Another tap, though. It's on a nice edge. So tenuous. War broken. Players falling. And Asmus, he has to back away. He cannot afford to fight it. He knows he's lost the battle. What an absurdly... <laughs> I mean, back-to-back -back rounds that are just bonkers. Durka is a maniac. He's an animal. How is he getting three kills in that round? He was, How? He was the only player with a big rifle in the round. I mean, Leo had a bulldog as well, but the opener is ludicrous. The kill on Sadak is pretty clean too. And he's just peeking with all the rest of Fnatic as they swarm. You see how fast they were on the retake there? As soon as the spike got planted, Sadak didn't even have enough time to throw his nano swarms before Chronicle was trying to defuse. Disrespect showcased. All the way through into B main. No one from Fnatic gonna be meeting this one, but they've got the util. It 
so deep from oh Sadak. My. Push all the way up, Knives. Surely positioning's known, Sadak. Does this get cleared? It has to, surely. Leo, half clearance, off angle. And he's doing enough damage, he's buying enough time. Reckoning, that's gonna assist. Plant will fall. Will this go down? Dart in the back. Great to supplement, Durka. This guy's unleashed. Nothing to tether him back. Dash, still active. And he wants to make the most of it. Rez gonna be committed, brings it back up. Player advantage for them. A dodge, a skip around wall, up in their faces, in the cloud burst. It's getting dangerous and it's getting more than that. Looking like the round win. Every time you feel like one of these teams should have the advantage based on the economy or the early picks that they're generating, it can turn in a moment. Les once again proving his stability on this roster. He has stepped up along with Aspas. Aspas has been so quiet in this series and now bringing it to Durka. It's Durka putting out that challenge. The title of the King of Icebox. He wants to hold it down. Of course, Loud happy to contend, happy to bring the fight to them. Poster, close angle here, held with the Viper's Pit. Might be looking to use it. Kawanzin taps the plant, waiting for a reaction. Bates in Alpha, yeah, and they punish. Updraft, dash, Dirk against nothing. It was a great idea, but he just can't land the shots. And in the meantime, Les has taken everything from them. He's the pickpocketed them from A. The back of the side, Turka. One more blade in his hands. How does he contain? Fires wide. And the call is made already. Spike steadily making his way now over towards A. Alarm bar close, broken, and Turka spammed. Where does the weaponry hold? How did they win this? High ground angle, Aspas. He sees everything. And you can smell the Fnatic crumble happening in this first quarter of Icebox. And for these fans in the arena, they are fully, fully feeling it for loud. It's the, it's the manner in which these peaks are happening. Rushed from Fnatic, opening up space on the other side of the map. Louder one step ahead, the pressure being applied. The individual ability too. At this point in the series, no more questioning of Loud's resilience, of their grit, determination to take it all away. They want to carve out their spot. They want to be that back-to-back -back team to take a title. And so far, it feels like map five in Loud DRX, where Loud were able to summon something extra, another gear when their team needed it the most. And they put the pressure on their opponents who crumbled. Fnatic are taking a timeout as Mini tries to reinforce the squad, Boaster, speaking words of confidence to the rest of the team too. They have been within a fingertips distance of this trophy all day. To see it snatched from their hands on Icebox of all maps, where Fnatic are definitely the greatest team of all time on this map. There is no one else that comes close. This is Fnatic's playground. Durka's playground. And so far, they're getting destroyed. If I taken, that's confidence. The kind of response you need, Bazanek. Oh, not willing to let it go for free. And it's a great trade. Is immediate with the Seekers. Spamming it down, Durka getting so much done, but maybe overstays himself. That welcome, no longer. Look how much value they're getting out of the high tide. It becomes impossible for players at Snowman to swing and help. Durka tries to make a play, but he's completely on his own. There is no one there that can help. This harbor is getting so much value. And a regroup. 3v3, rifles in the hands of everyone. Could come down to just singular moments. 
glimpse in time to turn the tide. Louder not afraid to call a rotate sometimes in rounds like this. Oh my god, Fnatic Buster. is going for an info push. Boaster, wow, what a way to shut that down. Kill found, still no one's watching the angle of Sadak. The IGL with the most to do. Dift in the end and a doubled up position. Fnatic, it's calm. It enters their camp off the back of the timeout. Massive improvement from Fnatic in terms of how they dealt with that. The three players didn't rush things. They still allowed Durka to do Durka stuff at the beginning of the round. But when things got tense, they grouped up together and went for a coordinated play, re-pushing towards yellow. Catching Loud off guard and creating an advantage for themselves where the pressure was on Loud to plant. There are so many ults in play here. Lockdown for both sides, Viper's Pit. Natural counters to each other, you could argue. There's no way. What is he spotting? He's Straight just prodding them. Oh my goodness. And this is an ankle watch spot. Durka, where are you looking, son? What's going on? Out in the open. He's trapped. It's amazing that he didn't end up falling. Chronicle's got his back, though. Util there, back against the wall. Durka somehow comes up with the kill. How did Fnatic go two and two there? Leo, Hunter's Fury rips its way through. Ask Bass and Les. Fnatic have answered back. We will not go down easily. Not into that distance, Knight. And we will not let this opportunity slip away from us. Viper's pit, though. Les. Does oh. Alpha yet really have time to invest his ult here? I don't think so. Okay, they go for it anyway. The lockdown. But surely you can't wait another six seconds before you even start getting into the pit. Try and clear this. Pressure. On them, lockdown destroyed, counter spam, is it there? No! And the pit remains up, Boaster falls, Lurk plays, Leo moves forwards, but he just doesn't have the right angle. Less than Asmas pulling this one back from the brink. Can you expect anything less? Rookies turn veterans. All of these crucial rounds are going the way of Loud. Amazing play. So stable from them. The way that they navigate that pit, get the spam on the lockdown. And so many dangerous situations where Fnatic, you know, maybe even get away with too much, and Loud still come out on top. I think the massive difference maker so far, though, not that he's closing the rounds out, but Aspas is really delivering. He has been so quiet in this series so far. And it, all it takes is one player to step up, and suddenly, massive shift. Imagine the kind of performance that Durka loves to put on in a regular basis. 14 to 4. And as long as Aspas and Durka are having a similar performance each, the rest of Loud looks like Look they've got it. Forced into the angle by Durka. Shots going stray. Lovely bit of util though, Leo. Look at the claim that one. That was a shot dart straight at the feet of Les. I think it hit him in the eye. Yeah. Even as the fight goes, they still don't have the weapons, so Fnatic are going to be struggling. To make the most of this one, what's the call to be made? Loud. They push forwards, they push deep. Cove used. Locks up one of the angles, one of the avenues, and Boaster, uh, well, I should say Chronicle. Almost going down, Tar going wide, maybe that panic again, settling in. An extension to the round, though, as time goes their way. Fnatic, though, danger. returning fire. Major danger here, the pistols. Lighting these players up, Reckoning has to be pulled out, has to be used to contain, has to be used to shut down, and it's all slam dunk. Loud 7-3 up. Getting huge value out of the harbor pick. This new innovation in the meta. 
And on the maps where they've won, I'm thinking back to Split, where they're playing almost a revamped version of Fnatic's composition. Perhaps here it's the same. Loud have had a great read on the meta this entire tournament. Their compositional picks, the harbor usage, the sky from Kawanzin, it's all fired them forwards to this spot, this moment. Less on the lurk up tube as the rest of the players put pressure towards A. Malik left wondering, where do we find that advantage? Where do we find that edge? And it's certainly not here. Asmus moves forwards, but a denial. Looks like of the plan. There was a spike being used. Durka has to respect it. Dash back. But Asmus is causing chaos. Carnage right in the back line. Les was trying to lurk up and, well, dealt with. But Asmus, oh my goodness! Down to Alpha here. It's scrappy. It's all over the place. But it's all in Loud's favor. Eighth round claimed. Fnatic dominated the first two maps. Loud looked like they were completely out. But this battle back has been supreme. And they are now in commanding control of the fifth and final map, the decider in the grand finals. Fnatic have had so many heartbreaking moments over the course of this team's history with Boaster and Durka together. For them to lose this, it might shatter them. A risk by Durka. A swing up in their faces, but he's met with a lockdown. Respect has to be shown. Still, he overstays it. Gets the one before eventually traded. Cove, a safe plant and an ult online. Kawazin has the Seekers, and it's time to let them loose. Corralling, finding their targets, pushing forwards. Kawazin, nothing left unsaid, nothing left untold. Just a collapse. Inexorable is the feeling. Loud with a 9-3 lead. I have never seen an attack side like this on Icebox. Loud are reinventing the map. It's gorgeous to watch. They are in control writing their own destinies with both eyes firmly on that trophy in center stage. What a difference. Loud, this commanding lead, crowd all on their side. Let's send it down to the desk to break it all down. Thank you so much, Bren. Loud have brought this series back from the brink of defeat to a 9-3 scoreline. First half, Icebox Mimi, it's all but one. It is truly incredible what Loud has been able to achieve here. In front of their home crowd, they have made a run back that no one else has been able to do. And for Fnatic, under that pressure, we were waiting. Will Fnatic choke? Will they have that moment where they crumble? And under Loud's pressure, it's happening. This is such a potentially legendary moment for Brazil, for esports, for Valorant here that we're witnessing. And I think it comes down to Aspas really having a game. He's come alive in this final map, in this final attempt to take the trophy here. And against Durka too, this has been a head-to-head -head that we've been waiting for the entire series. It finally comes alive, and honestly, Dirk is having a couple of fumbles. Fnatic entirely are having a couple of fumbles, and Aspas is thriving in it. I mean, some of the decision-making that we're seeing right now from Fnatic, from Dirk in particular, have just been baffling, to be honest. They don't have somebody that can flash him in to really help escort him and get these aggressive picks, to, you know, to be pushing through these smokes, pushing through these walls, but he's trying to go for it anyway, and oftentimes he's getting punished. I mean, look at that push out on, you know, by Yellow. He doesn't have any updrafts, he's walled in, and then you just get picked apart one by one. Right now, the fundamentals are falling apart for Fnatic, and they need to gather the pieces together and glue them back together one by one during this halftime. But for Loud, what a moment this is. They look down and out, 2-0 in the series, split.
could have maybe gone a different way, but they come back. They rally back. Now they're on Icebox 9-3, to three, one of their opponent's strongest maps, and they might just be able to make this reverse sweep happen in front of their home crowd. And for Fnatic, this is potential tragedy. This arena right now is a pressure cooker, and Loud are thriving in it. We're heading into the second half. History will be made. Bren, Sideshow, take it away. History looks firmly on the side of Loud, and a tragic tale is being weaved. This Fnatic, so close yet so far. It's been 643 days since they had that last chance in a grand final to lift a trophy. They've been to five global lands since then. 68 matches. Oh. And this has been their best chance. Durka and Boaster's lifelong quest it does seem to be ending in that poetic tragedy. Everything is in favor of Loud to pull off our first BO5 reverse sweep in VCT history. To think that no one's pulled it off in almost two years of international play. Less overwhelmed, though, as Boaster responds. That creates that 4v4. It's up to Fnatic not to drop the ball now. Spike going to be planted, down over the top, relieving it. Still, Sadak, lucky to escape. Snake at his feet, Kawazin with the heel. Still a wall in their face. And two years coming through. Cascade breaks it up, flash play, poster fully blind, and with every shot rattle, it feels like the nail in the coffin. Kills found, bodies fall. Elfia and Leo, they've been amazing. They've been immaculate. But this might just be too much. Aspas, three in the round, sticking the spike, pistol is theirs. The difference of the feel of this series, from opening to close, there could not be a bigger contrast. Loud look on fire, Aspas 21 and 5. Lesson Sadak right there as well. But Aspas and Sadak have woken up. They've remembered why they're here and what they need to do for their team. Fnatic are forced to force. They must invest into this one. Seven round deficit. They need a miracle. They can feel it, kind of pressure The most players will only experience maybe once in their life. And if you start doubting yourself, it can self-spiral. Spiral into a self-fulfilling prophecy here. And it may be too late for Fnatic. Loud are applying the pressure. And a full rotation. Happy to commit the bodies to it. Spectre bullets going wild, going wide. Kawazin, an opener with Boaster falling. It's a scramble, a mad dash to make the most of the round, but they are being collapsed, they are being swarmed. And Loud in control of their own destinies. The second iteration of this Brazilian super team is on track to be just as good as the first. For this core of Aspas Les and Sadak, I said it before, I'll say it again, they've only ever lost to two squads. And it does not look like Fnatic are gonna join that elite group. Loud have only lost four series ever all time in the history of this team. 34 and four, looking to make it 35 and four. Three grand finals in the last 12 months. And the slight shake of the head from Boaster says everything you could possibly need to know. The roar of the crowd, the reverberations and echoes and vibrations, they take a heavy toll, even amongst the best in the world. This Fnatic super team is definitely going to have other chances. 
but Lockin was looking primed to be theirs. And in a manner that we have never seen before, at the global VCT event, on the eve of the 2023 season, Loud looked to have ripped it from their hands. Possibly paved their way brick by brick to the start of a dynasty. What a way to begin 2023. Claiming accolade after accolade. And with every player that falls, it just feels so damn difficult for Fnatic. A flash play. Less getting confident, has to be punished, he gets out alive! He's gonna receive the heal as well, Cowan Zine taking a bit of damage for it. War forwards, close, fight taken, trades are there! Alfie Air, so much to do, reset of the Spectre! Down to that 2v2, can Fnatic survive? Pop flash is good, Cowan Zine low. Taking a fight out in the open, this is unconventional. Usually, I'd be talking about how, you know, the newer players like Cowan Seen to the team need to be slowing down in those moments and not allowing the weight and the gravitas of everything to get to them. But with the eight round lead that they have, I think they can throw that one away. Aspas with a Guardian and 7,000 Brazilian people behind him. Spike planted, extends the round out, adds a couple of stray seconds. Fast up draft play, triggers the alarm bot, doesn't know where the players are. It's that crossfire, looking to clear as much as possible. Dash fade, still high ground, taken. He's given a hop across and just guesses incorrectly. So, it's Fnatic that survive. If they are going to pull off the impossible, it has to be one round at a time. Usually, we would ask the question, right, Brent? At what point do we start to believe in the comeback? But I think the more important question really here is, at what point do Fnatic start to believe in any form of comeback? There's such an uphill battle for them to get back in the game. And when you look at them down on the stage, such a battle for them to get back into it mentally as well, I think. Lauda gonna go for this buy. A Spectre on Cowan's and everybody else with rifles in hand. Dart will push him away from that forward approach. Drone on Fnatic. We're going to claim some space for the entirety of their team group. Done! Unless winning out a fight once more, taking it straight to Alpha here. Wall in their faces. Time to think, time to brood. The emphasis is going to be on Fnatic. Wall beginning to be broken. Plant push back now to Seekers. It's every single element included into this game plan. Up top, angles watched for. Chronicle, stand up. Wider swing, Leo's good. Half on the health, but still can't claim the kill. Down to that two on two. The spike still not planted. Same players left alive for loud. One falling, Turka. Disengages, spiking his clutches, and everything to play for. Turka's going to be able to get a free plant, and the question is where he repositions to. He's got his pick of the litter. He's never quite had a task like this ahead of him, Josh. No. It's been a long time since Turka's been outplayed like this as well normally dominates the Jet matchup. Aspas, 21 kills to his name. Looking to make it 22. Looking to put it on map point. Looking to put it on series point. Damage done though, Turka, that's good. Biding his time, Aspas, a bit of spam will do it. Trying to reset the aim, wide swing, flicking a wrist, Turka shuts it down.
Huge round for Durka to win. Another lifeline tossed to Fnatic. And Durka needs to be doing so much for this team if they have a hope. Because the team play is showing cracks. The mental is showing cracks. Fnatic still have a six round deficit to make up. Loud take a timeout, push down to the eco. They have six more attempts to be able to get a tournament point on the line. I'm not ready. Now you here, Josh. I'm not ready for a comeback, Brent. <laughs> I'm not ready. I don't think my voice is either, but I'll do my best. 11 to 5, such a massive lead. Timeout maybe just being used to cool down. Hard work getting a bit panicked there, forcing into it, just trying to end it early. Going for a lot of those early fights, yeah. yeah. And I think also possibly over rotating. Stacking four players onto the A site, and then Aspas also joined, leaving that rotate back through for Durka late. Though at that point, it's a 1v1. And it's not like you can really cover the map. Four players down here towards B. I've seen so many potential comebacks ruined by a gamble on a thrifty. And it could happen here. Loud move forward, steadily, slowly. But a rifle spam. It's Fnatic looking to try and contain it. Lovely. Alpha, yeah. Making the most of this one and the coverage. Every single angle watched for, spammed. Any sort of threat of this getting out of hand looks like it's basically done and dusted. Less. He's short to find, but he is being squeezed. And yeah, he's, he's low enough that slight breeze will put an end to that. Sadak with a kill or a death is going to be able to get his ult online. And Loud taking the timeout, probably for mental reasons, like you said, Brent, just to keep themselves collected. But if it was for strategic reasons, it's going to be looking forwards here towards round 18. There's major ults to play with here. And Fnatic are normally going to build an attack side strategy that revolves around them. A lockdown push, maybe a deep Hunter's Fury onto the site. Either way, honestly, A or B. That's the style of Boaster's calling. He tends to build around the tools he has at his disposal. Can Sadak come up with an answer? We saw him pushed in the match against NRG and he came out on top, but my God, did he give it everything. Aspas caught on to the tricks of the trade. He knew Durka was playing for that up draft plate. No bullets exchanged, no blades really being fired. Close drone, broken. And I think we'll know part of B main. They'll be evacuating. And at this point, I'm wondering whether Les is going to reactively use his ultimate on A. Because currently, Louder in full control of the B side. High tide goes down. Boaster doing a similar kind of lurk as we saw from Les in the previous half. Goes up, removes the turret. And here it is, a reaction. They know it's heading towards A. Alfie looking like he wants to use this lockdown. Clear that space out. That's in a deep position. No threat of any util, any ultimates to clear this one but out. Boaster watching the flank. Watching for it, and he needs to get out alive. He needs to he's cause that extra level of threat. But right now, he is being squeezed. And also less detained. Attempt of the punish inside the pit. Will we see it happen? It's a war being fought on multiple fronts. And water falling into the back of the side. It's loud, looking to reclaim that space. Tap on the spike. Hiding their position though, planted up into a top angle. Fnatic performing surgery with the way that they are executing these players. It's precise in nature. Beautifully orchestrated. They have not given Loud any opportunity here. Boaster getting great value watching the flank. And then Alpha, yeah, tucking himself underneath, using the lockdown that he had invested to get into such a great spot. 
I asked the question earlier, Brent. At what point do Fnatic start to believe in the comeback? I think if they win the next round, the next rifle round, that is, I could definitely see it happening. Confidence getting back up. Alpha year. Trying to keep the spirits high. There's only a four-round deficit right now. Already, Fnatic have clawed their way back. And as long as they can dodge this thrifty, the next rifle round could be everything. Push to the limits. Aspas has been such a demon, and he's got the blade storm. What damage can he do? Sadak in the tube. Doubled up position, Fnatic. Looking to not give away any errors. Anything at all that will shift and turn that tiny, tiny buffer that they've got to work with against them. Diligent there. Snake bite, shock dart, used to clear the close cubby. High tide, though, threatens a reposition. Fnatic are taking quite a while dealing with B. They still haven't cleared yellow. And nobody's taking space on the opposite sides in response to this. They've met resistance. On top of the tube, though, looks like Dirk is setting up for it. Dash forwards. It's going to be that pincer. Another level to it, making sure that he attracts the attention. And all eyes are on him. Got to deal with this guy currently. Watching Juking, waiting around these players, but as the util gets used, it's just giving Dirk a, a target rich environment. Everyone crumbling, everyone falling. And that short ass pass dropped down to 10 health. Disengages, dashes away, but the reactions are all in the hands of Turka, not to be outdone. We talked about that jet dip, we talked about Aspas having the map of his career. Seems like Turka was not happy with all the attention. The, the way that Fnatic are using mid is showing why they're considered the best team in the world on this map. The greatest team that we've seen on Icebox. The flanks on flanks that they've got, the way that they're prodding and backstabbing, it's all been excellent. And I can tell you, there is a ripple of doubt, a ripple of unease circulating in this arena. It all comes down to round 20, I think, as to whether or not Fnatic's comeback will become a reality. And a big investment. Operator. For Aspas to hold this angle. Team going to be holding his back, making sure that he doesn't get pressured from that left approach in B main. And Fnatic going to be diligent enough with the jump peak, making sure that every single corner is cleared. They have to win this round to try and make the most of it. Barely ahead, barely ahead, but the shot misses and goes wide. Aspas, not to be deterred, will still push and take that angle, still holding it, but it's a fast rotation. The call is made. They don't actually have any space over towards A. Althea has been playing very passively, just controlling if there was a push. So they have to go and take this space. Leo has kept his drone alive, though. They're going to be able to put pressure on. What a timing for that lockdown. And the lurk. It stopped in its tracks. Most are not getting away with murder, not this time. And Fnatic forced into a corner. This is tough. The time pressure. It feels like Lotus all over again. 25 seconds. Wall's not going to be broken, so it should be that plan. Now starting to come through, reckoning. Hunter's Fury, everything at their disposal, and Turka pushes forwards, making the most of it. Pandemonium that strikes back. Close position, flank. Kawazin might be earning that kill, but Turka is doing so much, goes down. Oh my goodness! Down to the 2v3. Cove in play, gives him a bit of covering fire, but that's going to get spammed down two years. Half on it. A dodge and skip. Alpha, yeah, making sure to adjust the angles. And it's Fnatic who close in. A steady improvement round after round. That's six in a row right now. Pulling the gap close, forcing Loud onto another eco, and the game is on. The comeback's afoot. Look at that play. Gorgeous space found by Durka as he picks up two before falling to the snake bite. And slip ups here. Loud cannot hold on their defense. The denial on the plant, despite the fact there was 25 seconds left, did not come through. Did not matter. Wall burnt early. Sorry, drone burnt early, I should say. 
And that was a tool that Leo had late into the round for the prior. But I think not out of that danger zone just yet, but my God, are they making a decent effort of it. They were and looking I dejected in the timeout. And I think at this point, the players will truly believe. They've crossed that pivotal threshold where now you can see the horizon and it all becomes doable again. You battle through the darkest times. And now just a hair's breath away. Both teams going to be keeping an eye on center stage with that trophy, the title, to try and lay claim to it. Both teams giving it all they've got. It's a great high tide there from Tui's. You can see how much time he's put into this agent. Got some really solid ideas. Could this one get sticky? Does Loud have enough players around here stacking five on that even with bad weaponry, they could cause problems? Pushing forwards, it's a deeper play. Wall across, but still the fight. It rips through with bullets landing. Poster, he has to plant. In the middle of all of this, he does. Extend the play, extend the round, but he gets his team in a much more winnable scenario. 4v3, there's always the safety of the pit if he chooses to invest it, but he would love to save that for round 22. Durka in a really precarious spot. As the walls fade away, Loud now make it even. Three on three, Viper's pit dropped down, off to the side, Leo! Right into the smoke. Blessed by RNG, it's divine intervention, and it might just come down to it or not. Fnatic. One round will stand between them, pulling off the impossible. It's an expensive one, though. The fact that Boaster felt pressured enough to have to invest the Viper's Pit takes away a pretty crucial win condition for them in the next pivotal rifle round. We talked earlier about how important some of these eco swing rounds were, but now it feels like Loud are in their last chance. This map has been a mirrored microcosm of the series overall. Loud in absolute commanding form in the first half. Never a doubt that they were going to be able to win this. And Fnatic have clawed it back. In these players' careers, you're never quite going to be tested like this. It's a rarity. Pushed to the limit. Map five in a best of five. Everything to play for. Aspas spoke earlier in the interview, saying that he wanted to set an example, wanted to become a legend. For all of these players, that opportunity is now. One big play, one clutch. One crucial entry could be all it takes. All the way here, round 22. The Jet battle that head-to-head, -head. Durka. He's not willing to give up that title. Look at the stack from Sadak here. The call to put four players on A early. And then pivots away, puts an alarm bot in mid, looking to limit Boaster on his lurk. But everything about this round makes it look like a clash in A. Now Fnatic move back. Have they somehow sensed the stack on the A site, despite everything being quiet on the Held. Eastern Front. Breaths, drone to clear, respect shown, Aspas has to do that. No, from Boaster, it's merely a feint back to B. This battle is going to be fought on A. And Loud, by virtue of either some crazy read or sheer luck, have got their players in the right position to fend it off. This could be it for the tournament, for the title, for the trophy. Flash for info. Shot dart to clear. Lockdown, close. No tools in the back pocket of Loud to try and break this one. Players have to respect it. Let's walk back away here. Nana Swarms. Laying the inevitable as the plant will start to go down now, but still, something's got them in a tizzy. Can't quite get the spike down. Chronicle now starting to stick it because time is running low. 12 seconds. Wall breaking! 
Now making the most of it tonight. It's less. Comes down to it. Him and Asmas. What can they do? Time running so damn low. But just enough milliseconds. And, and all put into it. All put into the hands of Aspas. Leo with a falling phantom shot as well. But Aspas with the world on his shoulders. The mantle and responsibility. Can he turn the tide of this? Turret clear doesn't know the positioning. So much to do. So much to watch for. Durka leaves his feet hanging. An easy target. But time running low. And Fnatic know all they have to do is wait. All they have to do is buy that extra time. And as the spike ticks down, Alfayet, comfortable in his mind, comfortable in the presence, knowing that they have drawn even. One of the greatest comebacks that I have seen on Icebox. Fnatic normally dominate their defense side. Loud barreled them over, but Fnatic's Ability to work the map, run these backstabs, and set up post plants for each other has been immaculate. And also, little moments like that don't hurt whatsoever, do they? Loud are now forced to take an eco and play for overtime. What an insane shift in this series. Fnatic are in the driver's seat. Thought it wasn't possible, yet here we are. Fnatic silencing the doubters, silencing the naysayers, but it's not over yet. Couple more hurdles left. You know that Fnatic are going to be raring for it. Their story is one of tragic moments over and over again. The last two years, players like Boaster hunting for that trophy, coming so close to the first ever LAN event that we held in Valorant. And now we can taste it. The stack is set up oh. Sadak finds the first, and there is no lurk play. No return back. That was in. If they go for this pivot, Cowan Zin oversteps himself. Wide angle gets out with his life. And gets all the information, but Boaster knows that, and they're going to go for a re-hit on B. He's anticipating these rotates to have moved, and Loud have. They've relinquished a little bit of that pressure. Trailblazer sees nothing on A, though, and these players return to B. Wolf Falls, though, was it con properly? Resetting through. Rifles carries them forwards, but it doesn't win them around, not just yet. Two on two. Aspas and Kawanzin again for the third time in this map to try and convert a 2v2. Tags him. Aspas low. Nana Swarm almost taking him out, but 10 seconds ticking down. The spike will be planted. An extension once more. Updraft. Aspas hunting for information, hunting for a glimpse, a glimmer. Anything to make this doable. A tap on the spike, Aspas! Jet force, it's all down to Alpha yet. Noise everywhere, the double swing! Spray down! Unbelievable! And a groan of absolute disbelief from everybody in the building. As Alfayette pulls off an absurd 1v2 to take his team to the very brink. This round should not have been close, though. Loud on an eco. And Loud have one shot, one chance at stopping the magic like that. Look what it means to these guys. Durka telling the crowd to shut up. You can feel it. It's palpable. It's in the air. Fnatic taking destiny into their own hands, wrestling it away from Loud. Tepid is the approach on Belt. Leo just backs away, taking a bit of a tickle of damage. Loud with so much to play for. This round deciding so much to decide whether they're capable. Bringing it all the way if they've earned the right to get that back-to-back -back title. Fnatic looking to stop them. Attack side, dash, active from Turkey. This guy has been a maniac. Psychotic at times with the way he's been playing. The confidence, 
in this moment. It's the same kind of round, actually. The loud run against them. Boaster's positioning. They're... Surely this is too late. Surely it is. Everything on less. Alambo spotted. Right down the middle, Les is lined up and set up, yet still Chronicle lands the shot, Sadak stunned, and he's still, no one watches. Spike to the side, Louder doing it! Fnatic respond though, 10 seconds on the clock, and do they have time? Can Spike off to the side, picks it up, there's a gap in the play, and with the wall down, he gets the plant. Can't be denied, breaks a portion, and still it's down to boast of the IGL, can he do it? All up to him, all down to this, and it's not going to be the case. Boaster giving his shot to earn that trophy there with a 1v2. And Loud used the advantage that they had generated to pull themselves to overtime. Truly, could it have ended any other way? Stretch to the distance. The crowd on their feet. A lifeline has been purchased as we head into OT. Loud looked absolutely impeccable on their attack side. That's where we're going to start things. Durka pushed away by the Cascade early. Fnatic had tried to generate early picks all throughout their defense half. None of them really worked. High Tide used though, and it's not an aggressive one. Does not purchase very much space on site. So Fnatic already offered a bit more space on the defense than they had in those first 12 rounds. To Gavarin. Less is to be the backstab down mid. But the rest allowed. Make sure that they can creep and crawl and right into the line of sight. Turka will not let that go unpunished. Big flash play through and it's a collateral. Turka runs Icebox. If you want to win this trophy, you've got to go through him. What a difference this round. An absolute shut down, surely. No Aspas way. cannot be allowed to do this one. 25, 25 health. health. Dashes to the side, revealed. Positioning known, spike out of reach. Moving forwards, you tell out, but the shot dart does it. A one for one trade that Leo will be perfectly happy with. Oh my god. Fnatic get their second tournament point. Last time they made it to a grand finals, they were nowhere near any tournament points. A 0-3 loss to Sentinels, a Masters 2 Reykjavik all the way back. The dawn of time, essentially, in Valorant history. Well, here they are, they stand once more on the precipice, on the brink. One round. It's all it'll take, it stands between Fnatic and lifting that trophy. Long time coming for a lot of the players on this EMEA super team. And with that singular round, it'll be Chronicle who makes history. The first player to claim two titles. And Loud look to deny, look to scrap, scrape, push their way into the limits of OT. It's another well-timed cascade, actually, and Sadak's called a good rotation. In terms of getting the defenders in the right spot, Sadak has been doing his job as the IGL on defense but they actually can't stop these backstab plays from coming through. And the post plants, that's where the nightmare's been had for Loud. Grouping up. A fight is inevitable. And so are Fnatic. Dash forwards to the side, slow warp, supplements. Durka able to take this fight, but it's a little bit labored, a little bit strained. Dart lining them up, re-swing, swings down, spray down! And everyone falling, everyone collapsing. It's deafening. A gloom enters the arena. As Fnatic, they can feel it. Inexorable, inevitable, however you want to call it. 
with one player left to go. Fnatic have essentially got this one all tied up. One round away, and the fight is over. 14 12, denying the reverse sweep. Fnatic, they pull off the impossible. What insane mental resilience from this squad to be able to battle back, deny the trophy in front of the home crowd. And as Boaster said earlier, a trophy was taken by Loud on Turkish soil, and so Alpha will respond. Boaster and Durka complete their long, winding journey towards a trophy. And Chronicle becomes the first player in the history of Valorant to have two titles. What a squad. What a story. And what limits they were pushed to. 32 teams whittled down to just these two and Loud. He sent home. Respectable effort. Fnatic. They had to work for it. I think that might be an understatement. Loud had so many chances. And they will they will be horribly disappointed that they let a lead. 11-3 was it? Slip through their fingers. Absurd situation. An unreal comeback from Fnatic. But we will see Loud return. Perhaps not in Brazil. But this squad has certainly got more to give in the future. The winners today, though, much deserved. It's been 643 days since that loss to Sentinels. 68 matches, their fifth global LAN. And finally, Boaster and Durka can put their hands on a trophy. Overwhelming emotions, not just in the crowd as they were denied that trophy, but Fnatic, the pride, they lift that trophy high above their heads. The goal that they set out for, for so long, Durka Boaster, it's finally theirs, obtained. And all of that working out at the gym, finally paying off. Magnificent. And I'm sure it tastes just as sweet the second time for Chronicle. What an insane addition those two new players have been. Leo and Chronicle have added so much to this squad. For both of these teams, I was not expecting them to be at this spot. With only a couple of months of practice heading into lock-in, both teams look so refined. The ideas, the teamwork, the individual talent. They're in droves. Truly pushed to the absolute limit. As he said once before, we'll say it again, Chronicle, defining history, defining that moment for him. The only player to ever lift two trophies. And what a player to do it. Last year was a disaster for him. He lost out by two milliseconds to Fnatic and failed to make land. Left as a free agent in the offseason too. A player that at one point, at the end of 2021, had an argument for best player in the world. I don't, I don't know who the MVP of this tournament ends up being from the Fnatic side. I think Les had an insane game. Leo started out, the first two maps were completely dominated. It was just incredible. I've never seen a man possess more than Durka. Took matters into his own hands. Destiny. It was right for the taking for a team like Loud, but Durka, oh man, not to be outdone. And I think too, you have to give such credit to Boaster for finally overcoming those demons. You saw on his face the the heartbreak 
and the feeling of inevitability that he had let another opportunity slip him by. You could see that written on his face during the timeout. And look at what they were able to achieve. His attack side calling was sublime. Sure, there were some moments where the clock ended up being his worst na nightmare. But in general, that attack side was a masterclass. Imie granted that additional spot at Masters Tokyo. Well, Fnatic to cheer for for that. The energy, look at that. The watch party, got to be getting late. <laughs> And remember that this is only the beginning. This isn't really, truly, part of the Partnership League system that Valorant set up. This is a one-off spectacle, an unbelievable single elimination tournament from which Fnatic emerged victorious, not undefeated, though it looked like that in terms of their maps. But my God, they come out on top and set up for a wonderful series of stories to follow over the course of 2023. Yeah, I mean, the amazing. future is so bright for Valorant. It really is. If this is the stepping stone, my God, what does 2023 have in store for us? <laughs> if we're treated to this as the beginning here of a long, hopefully quite cool circuit. Yeah, yeah. I am so looking forward to seeing Tokyo and champs. I think Absolutely. this tournament has given us all of the tastes, the new super teams from Brazil, from Fnatic. It's been so good. Yeah, well, enough about us as well. I'm sure you're sick of hearing it. Let's send it down to the floor to hear directly from the winners. Salve, salve, Mirapuera! Olha onde eu tô. Tô aqui no palco ao lado dos nossos campeões. Mas antes da gente trocar aquela palavrinha com eles, eu quero apresentar meus dois convidados que tem um recadinho muito legal pra você. Primeiro a Ana, que é, exe é, é produtora executiva do Valorant, e o Léo, que é chefe global de esportes do Valorant também. Hello everyone, I'm here on the stage alongside with the champions from Fnatic. But before we talk to them, I want to introduce two special guests. Ana, executive producer at Riot Games from Valorant, and Leo, the global head of esports for Valorant 2. They have a quick message to share with you guys. Hey everybody, I really just wanted to say what an amazing day of Valorant, what an amazing month of lock-in. I want to thank the entire Brazilian community for being such amazing hosts. The energy in here today was incredible. You've treated all of our rioters and all of our teams so great. So great, in fact, we're thinking of coming back. We're already making plans, so more on that soon. Aí, então primeiro ela gostaria de agradecer, né, todo mundo que recebeu aí, né, é, esse lock-in, foi um evento maravilhoso, agradeceu toda a comunidade brasileira e toda a comunidade de Valorant no mundo e deu um spoiler, falou que foi tão legal que vai voltar, então temos aí uma esperança de ter mais eventos internacionais aqui. Léo, seu recado. Hello, everyone. So, uh, lock-in was all about celebrating the new era of the VCT, it was all about bringing 32 teams from around the world to come here for a big fest. But right now, it's about one team. The one team that made no mistake. The one team that defeated the best teams in the world, including the 2022 world champion. It's all about you on behalf of all of us at Riot Games. Congratulations on your championship. And if you don't mind, I'll switch to Portuguese. Pessoal, o Lockin foi sobre celebrar a próxima era do VCT. Foi sobre trazer os melhores 32 times do mundo inteiro para competir aqui no Brasil em uma festa incrível, mas agora a gente vai reconhecer o time campeão, o time que não fez feio, o time que ganhou dos melhores times do mundo, inclusive do campeão em 2022. Então, é, um grande parabéns de todos nós da Riot Games para a Fnatic. Congratulations on the championship. É isso. Muito obrigado. Thank you so much, Ana. Thank you so much, Léo. Eles vão cumprimentar agora os nossos campeões e agora sim a gente vai trocar uma palavrinha com eles. Stay here, Alfer. I'm coming. Oh, ok. Eles vão só cumprimentar aí. E aí a gente vai trocar aquela palavrinha com os nossos campeões. Ele foi abraçar o Bolster. Então. Now we can talk with you guys. Oh my god, what is an, an amazing series. I believe you guys must be exhausted. Alfer. Last year, Brazil took the trophy in Turkey. What? Last year, Brazil took the trophy in, in Turkey. Now you got the trophy here. Yes. Is your revenge done? Yes. <laughs> I, I take my revenge from Brazil. Like, I'm so happy because we win with this team. We won all the time win with this team. Like, Weavers didn't support us, but thank you for everyone, guys. 
because we are here because of, for you. É, é isso, galera. Ele, ele, ele falou que sim, teve a revanche dele, né? É, mas agradeceu bastante o time da Feneric e agradeceu todo o público que mesmo não torcendo para eles, é por vocês e é por vocês que eles estão aqui também. Now I want to talk with you, Dirk. Man, how did you guys manage to come back from a two map losses in a row and then an 11-3 in Icy Box? What happened? Uh, I think it's because Icebox is one of my favorite maps and uh, our favorite maps. And then when we got that uh, bad defense half, I said to the boys, like, yo, we got this. If these guys got nine, we can get ten. And then we proceeded to come back, uh, got to the overtimes, and then finished the job. But I think everyone did super well. Uh, everyone's amazing today, even though uh, it was hard, but I think it was super good for us. Thank you. Congratulations again. Bom, eu perguntei para ele, né, como eles conseguiram voltar de uma série de que eles tinham perdido dois mapas na sequência, depois de um 11 a 3, ele falou que a Icebox é o mapa preferido dele, e ele falou pro pessoal, se a gente fizer 9, a gente pode fazer 10, e ele conseguiu realmente, foram atrás, ele quer agradecer o time, todo mundo que jogou bem. Uf, que emoção pro lado do time da Fnatic. Now with you, Chronicle. Man, you're... I missed you in 2022, in the international stage, now you're back, you're playing super well, how does it feel to come back and to lift and make history, to lift your second trophy? I mean, it's definitely unbelievable feelings. I can say that we put, as a team, a lot of work to be here on the stage uh, holding the trophy. And uh, I can say that even though I didn't perform in this Grand Finals very well, uh, for me, it's important that my light, my team, uh, will stay alive and I will be their shadow. And also, I want to dedicate this victory to my wife Angelina, or Angelina. She is celebrating her, celebrating her, uh, her birthday today. And uh, as I said before to her, I wish her all the best and uh, I hope we will meet uh, soon again. É isso, tá? Então, perguntei pra ele, né, que eu falei que senti falta dele no palco internacional de 2022, é, que foi bom ver ele jogando de volta aqui, ele falou um pouco sobre esse sentimento, falou que ele não jogou tão bem, né, no dia de hoje, ele não achou que ele jogou tão bem nessa grande final e ele quis dedicar essa vitória pra esposa dele, Angelina, que tá fazendo aniversário também, né, então, muito bacana a dedicação do Chronicle. Leo, now is your time. Man, for me, you are the MVP of the tournament. You played really, really well. You're... Now in this final, what, what a hell, man! I want to talk to you about. Do you did you ever imagine to be at the top of the world so early in your career? Uh, early in my career, uh, been competing for three years, <laughs> uh, but I guess uh, I've been ready to compete in uh, the international stage. I think for a couple of years, and I'm glad uh, I get the opportunity with this team. Uh, we have full confidence playing with each other. Uh, it's a great start, and I mean. We're gonna enjoy this victory tonight and then uh, we're gonna go for the next one. Oh, tá aí, então eu perguntei pra ele né, como é que foi chegar no topo aí da, do mundo, né? Tão cedo também. Ele falou que já compete há três anos, né? Que não achou tão cedo assim, mas tá dedicando a vitória pra todo mundo. Falou que hoje vai comemorar e depois amanhã já pensar no próximo jogo. Bolster. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Man. <laughs> the crowd. You have been a fanatic since the beginning. Mm. You keep trying to get that trophy, yep. and now you finally got the international trophy. What does this moment represent to you, man? <laughs> uh, well, just uh, half an hour ago, we were 11 2 down or something. <laughs> and I was thinking, oh no, I'm going to go second again. But um, my teammates are really good, and we, we somehow pulled rounds out of the back. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. <laughs> I don't know why I'm crying. Little baby. No, I'm fine. Yeah, we, uh, it was just a really uh, good series. Uh, yeah, love Valorant, mate. <laughs> I'm gonna get grey hair in like one year, I think. Uh, yeah. Aí então o Bolster chorou bastante, né? Falou que há 30 minutos atrás estava com aquele sentimento de ia perder de novo, né? Mas eles conseguiram virar. Ele ainda brincou falando que ia ficar com o cabelo cinza aí, né? Após esse jogo, antes não for ficar careca. Mini, now we have to talk with Hello. you. You have been a fanatic so long as well. How did you manage to pull up this new team to come here to lose only two maps and do this amazing tournament? And what can we expect from you and from Fnatic in the rest of 2023? I mean. I have no idea how we went on the run we went on. Um, I mean, scrims went well, but 
that was kind of ridiculous. Um, so I did get a bit nervous in that, <laughs> in that game. <laughs> um, some grey hairs like usual. We got a meme in Fnatic that we do it for the viewership, so I think that was a, a five month oh, yeah. viewership game. Uh, for the rest of the year, um, this is the first one, and we're going for the second one and the third one. Hey, thank you so much. É isso. Ah, eu perguntei para ele, né, como é que foi chegar aqui, perder só dois mapas e ter um campeonato praticamente perfeito. É, ele falou que não esperava, né, que os screens não estavam indo tão bem assim, mas eles acabaram indo muito bem. E sobre o resto do ano de 2023, ele falou que a ideia é ir um após o outro e conseguir mais títulos ainda para Fnatic. Can I just say one more thing? Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm more composed now. Um, I'd like to thank everyone in the audience today. Uh, even though, like, we're the villains, uh, I really appreciate everyone cheering and like I don't know shouting and stuff that was really hype it was a really memorable experience for me when we are 11 2 down and I'm looking at the audience everyone up there I was like honestly it feels like an anime or something and then I'd like to thank everyone at home who supported us and our journey and I'd like to thank my family uh, for watching my games even though I'm giving them anxiety and I'd like to thank Yinsu for all the support as well uh, much love and yeah thank you everyone Tá aí, ele agradeceu a torcida, né? Ele falou que quando estava 11 a 2 lá, que ele via a galera vibrando e parecia uma cena de anime também, né? E conseguiu agradecer todo mundo, agradeceu a Inso, agradeceu todo o pessoal e a torcida brasileira, principalente. Alfred, eu vou Uh, can I add that to Turkish? One sec. Okay. I, we, I'd also like to thank our assistant coaches that are at home and can be with us today, uh, SRK and Anders, so thank you very much for the support. And all the people behind us that aren't on camera, uh, team manager Colin, uh, performance coach Ewan, and substitute Kamek. Ele agradeceu todo o staff né, do time da Feneric, todos os coaches, toda a galera que trabalha por trás do time aí para fazer o time dar certo. Tava muito legal aí o agradecimento do Mini. You wanna say uh, Turkish? Can I talk Turkish? Yeah, I cannot translate, but yeah. yeah okay, okay. <laughs> Ee, arkadaşlar ilk önce hepinize merhaba. Ee, şimdi şöyle söylemek istiyorum. Ben buraya depremden geldim bir deprem redi olarak. Benim depremden gelmeme rağmen beni e, momentum olarak güçlü tutan, hype tutan aileme çok teşekkür ederim. Ve arkadaşlarıma çok teşekkür ederim. Bu süreçte benim çok yanımda oldular. Onlar olmasa büyük bir ihtimal ben bugün hiç oynayamazdım genel olarak. Teşekkür ediyorum onlara. Buradan da izleyicilere teşekkür ediyorum. Então é isso, pessoal do Ibira, barulho mais uma vez para os seus campeões. Once again, make some noise from Fnatic. Thank you so much, guys. Congratulations on your win. I hope to see you guys in more events. It was nearly two years in the making, but Fnatic, they make the most of their second chance in a grand final. Five full maps, overtime in the decider, but they can rightfully call themselves champions. It felt like this series was two years in the making. It's been <laughs> on and on and on and on. I, I aged two years, yeah. definitely, during the for course sure. of that series, without a doubt. And I mean, what an incredible moment for Fnatic. It looked like they were going to fall into the same storylines that we've seen before. Choke Natic, Fraud Natic, they get to the final hurdle, they trip over it, but it didn't happen. The, the most insane comeback that I think we've ever seen in a single map in the VCT, in map five after almost being reverse swept, it, it's unbelievable. I mean, at this point, call him Clutch Natic, call him Comeback Natic, because that was insane. And I think it led to the best series all time in Valorant history, in my opinion. I agree. Easily. I think right, oh, go ahead. I was, I was just gonna say, you definitely put it right up there. It's, it's definitely within the top two. Rewriting their own narrative, one yep. series at a time. Here they take the first one. You already heard Minnie talking about the second and the <laughs> third. But while he's talking about the second and the third, let's recognize the first player to ever achieve two titles in Chronicle. He gets it done. I mean, the stage has been set for this to happen ever since Loud made it in. We knew that we were going to be guaranteed a repeat champion. Chronicle overtook that. FPX core and Navi shut them down and then shuts down to the loud core as well. So our first player now to get two trophies under his belt. And it has been more than a year in the making. 2022, this guy did not make a single appearance at an international event in Valorant. It felt like he fell off. It felt like he wasn't going to be Don't able to come sure. back and do it again. Don't he was sure. good as an individual, <laughs> but he wasn't making way. it here. Follow, will take this slander. <laughs> Still, I mean, he, he said it himself in the interview after winning their last best of five. People thought he was out. People thought he was a bad player, but he is still a good player. He is still a guy who can win trophies, and he's just made history. Yeah, I mean, his third finals appearance, he was also the one of the first people to make two finals in a row with Gambit all the way back then. So this guy's already made history, and he's doing it again. 
first to win too. We've been hunting for that for so long. Yeah, I would say he undersold himself in the interview saying he didn't have a great series. I think he forgot the first two maps where uh, so much of it was about him and Leo being the carries for the squad to set them out on the right foot. I mean, it's just that that humbleness coming through, not looking to say, you know, <laughs> I'm the one who dominated, but he was so instrumental to the victory here. But I mean, what a just completely and utterly wild map. I mean, compare the stats from where Durka was at the half, com you know, versus Aspas. Sure, he still finishes a little bit lower as far as kills are concerned, but he overtook an ACS in those first kills. Durka absolutely leveled up after that 3 9 half. And he was one of the guys who was a reason for why that 3 9 half happened in the first place. Yes. It was sloppy for him. For the King of Icebox to have that sort of performance in the first one, that was sh shocking to us. But then he comes out and they regroup. Are you kidding me? How do they have the composure to regroup like that? That's, That's ridiculous. I mean, this is incredible, too. You, you saw that one woman in the crowd. She came all the way out from Europe to root for these teams and gets <laughs> to witness an EMEA team winning here in Brazil. It's wild. But, I mean, for this team absolutely incredible and I, I feel like we have to talk about like who do you even assign the MVP of the series for me I probably have to lean towards Leo he's had an incredible tournament he's had an incredible series but everyone from F Fnatic was really stepping up in that last moment hold up Ooh. hold up before we talk about the MVP we put a poll up asking the audience to vote for the grand final MVP and Twitter has spoken the honor goes to none other than Leo Okay, I mean, this isn't shocking given his performance in those initial couple maps, but for me, by the end, I would have to go with Boaster, and I'm happy to see that he's at least the second highest option. Being able to get the team to rally back after that 3-9 half, and then lead them to a nine consecutive round streak, for me, it's all about him. I see the argument. You're looking for the person who sparked the comeback, right? Yeah. And I, I get it for Leo as well. I completely agree. I think Leo had a stellar performance. But if you're looking for that guy who sparked the comeback, I look at Alfier. Mm. This sure. guy, yeah. sure, he didn't have the most electric series. But if you look at him on the stage, this is one of the few guys who is constantly stepping up, constantly saying, we got this, we got this, over and over and over. And the reason why we all have a different take on this discussion is because this is truly a super team. Every one of these players showed up performed on this international stage. And for Leo to pull back the tournament as a whole, I think he really was making history here, ma putting up one of the absolute best individual performances that we've seen from an initiator player. Yeah, take a look at that. Only eclipsed by his current teammate in Chronicle by two ACS. But what a performance this kid has had. Yeah. Such a youngster displaying everything that he has in his arsenal here on the walk-in stage. Yeah, I mean, we were expecting, waiting, hoping that Leo would end up on a championship caliber team because we've known for a while how good this guy is, but it's been hidden. And we've seen it all the entire time before this, right? His shock darts are insane. His utility is insane. His discipline is insane. And he just had an all-time insane performance as well. Yeah. I was just flawless in those first couple maps. I mean, the utility usage, the way that he was just piloting those rounds was just gorgeous. So, I mean, still well-deserved. Marathon of a day, an incredible tournament. <laughs> Remember we had a show match today? Fi <laughs> we a new agent. Yeah, that again, <laughs> felt like two years ago. Final thoughts down the desk, though, as we conclude the first international tournament here in 2023. Remember, this is just the beginning. I think the, the biggest thing for me is that single elimination is so incredibly fun. We had... Every single team here from each of the international leagues, two Chinese teams, and being able to run this gauntlet for Fnatic and yeah. win out all of out of through of all of that single elimination against all odds, not losing any upset, it's incredible. It was 31 matches total, right? Ooh, 31 wow. matches, and we got not only a Brazilian team in the finals, we got an insane series with Fnatic, who was the team heralded, the super team, the only super team they needed to lift a trophy this year. They did it right off the bat in 31 matches overall for the tournament. You couldn't write a better story than this in front of the Brazilian crowd. I mean, two of the, the best of five matches going all the way to five maps as well, both attempts at reverse sweeps. It was just so incredibly hyped this whole way through. I, for one, I'm, I'm excited that this is just the beginning. We've got the regional leagues getting ready to kick off pretty damn soon, and then Tokyo is on the horizon, and I just can't wait to see what the, the landscape looks like, who's going to be on top of each single region when we get to that event later. Well, there you have it, friends. That is going to do it for us here. Once again, congratulations to Fnatic for winning the first ever lock-in and making this such a historic event. It's a heck of a way to start off the 2023 VCT season. A big thank you to everyone here in Sao Paulo as well for welcoming us and making this such an incredible experience. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe, and be good to each other. Good night. Ladies and gentlemen, Valorant is back, and we are kicking off the year with a bang. 32 teams will debut on the world stage and make their first steps towards
towards a champion's run. This is single elimination, do or die, and only one team can make a perfect run. Lock-in starts right here, right now. Let's go, baby! It's like a particular point of pride seeing our friend Potter take the stage and do the fist bump. That was pretty cool. Anything can happen in this format. You can get upset, and if that happens, you're going home. Rez comes in, do they get the punish? Huge from Soft! Giving NRG the finest amount of hope. What a game. I bloody missed Valorant. We might be in for, dare I say, some hair-raising performances. <laughs> what is that? An absolute banger alert. Just sound the alarms. Reset of the aim test. Absolute demonic performance. NRG sending Koi home on day one here in Sao Paulo. And it was a valiant effort from BBL. Make no mistake about that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that is me in my hotel wow. room in the morning. We have a new segment. What were they cooking? Bonjour and merci beaucoup for having me on the show. Yeah, it's going to be a shutdown. Lovely. Come on, Corp. Light work. Oh, a heartbreak for FBX, who, in my eyes, exceeded expectations. It is going to be the Rez instead, but he's going to go swing it on it. What is that from Zappa? He just eliminates everyone. C9 have destroyed Paper X. Instead, the entree, I think I'm going to go hang out with Giants and have some Burger King instead. Oh, no, that is everything. not acceptable. Uh-uh. Virginia, though, Nuki backing them up, and now it's down to Artis. Baiting the angle once more, and it's found the fight. Nuki takes it. We got a winning OT? All right, fine. Have it your way. Come on, boys. Hey, step up, boys. Every round is a joy. It's so fun. And he's caught another one. Oh. I need a replay of that immediately. EG has done it. And Team Heretics are going home. MIBR sent home. Gen G, man. That is heartbreak. What? What? You can't be pulling that out, Victor. Not again. But he rips it around. Someone check his PC. He's got a horseshoe stuck up his ass. Yes. <laughs> the Cloud9 Colossus has crumbled. EG denied it and never come back. Completed. We'll call this round done because Tui's got three. Guys. I thought that the hair was going to raise on the top of my arm, but it ended up growing on my head. It's a miracle. Tom has hair. Buzz does so well to get two. Oh. And he'll even snipe Garnets out of the sky. The Korean Conquerors no. come out once again and take themselves that 2-1 victory. DRX are going all the way. We saw the Alpha Bracket deliver last week, but this week it's all about the Omega Bracket. If this doesn't get the blood pumping, you might need to check your pulse because you could be dead. This is what it's all about, baby. Oh, Jesse Bash, goodness. you cannot oh, do God, this God, to God, the God, man! God, so God, Unbelievable! Ash Eddie trying to dash around the utility in. He can't find much. You get two shots are clean. I don't know, guys. It was too easy. And Liquid evaporating under the pressure. The European hope finally shows up and take down crew very quickly. Who is that? This is kind of a vibe, though. Hold <laughs> up. Yo, shoo. You guys are looking handsome up there. You are so sexy, guys. And again, oh, once oh, more, oh, King just back and forth around Generator, and that will seal the deal. And Zeta Division have been sent home. What's going on right here? Acting in. Sees into the back, double swings there. It's beautiful. And the Seas catches on to two, just lined up. Yes! Vitality safe hands for them. They have sent Global Esports home. And RRQ are left broken hearted. Now Cryo pushing forward. They've got him pinched. They've got him slimy. They've got him suffocated. And they've got him done. 100 Thieves avoid disaster. They take down EDG. I didn't know I could have this much fun watching Icebox. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to that crowd. That's what we call a home advantage here. The alarm got triggered. Ben has to turn back, but DG's in for backside. He's able to clear him up. He gets four. Fury take down T1. And a good buyout from Secret, who won over our hearts for a while. I wasn't listening. You've ruined my bracket. It's, no, this is my bracket. It's bracketology with Brent, okay? The bracketologist. Multi picks up two, but there's King. If he taps the spike, let's see if he can dodge it. He just takes the fight, and King wins it out. Vitality fall! Foot just didn't quite have it there in that final map in the final half. I think Valorant will be the winner today. But this crowd is going wild, and there hasn't even been a single bullet shot so far, man! Poster playing up close. Do There's you expect him here? Do you expect him here? No! DJ Zinza falls, his Poster gets another! Poster gets three! Fnatic beat the crowd, they beat Furia, and they advance!
They've just made a lot of people mad. <laughs> gonna be hopping and skipping, doing a little dance. Winner dance, guys. Winner dance. It's up to Sagetsu. 1v3 first shot found. One, two, three! So one tops, one tops, one tops. Navi look like an unstoppable force right now. Finally, they get back to the point, but it's a 2v2. Durka gets it down. He's already got the shot. He's a hard alpha. Find Asuna. Bang! Lead in! Oh! <laughs> That's how it ends. The comeback is crushed. Fnatic move forward, and there is no tomorrow for 100 Thieves. The Alpha Bracket started off with 16 of the world's best teams, and now we're down to our final two. Someone goes down today, Achilleos. They do. It's gonna, it's gonna be loud. Smokes off one of the angles, but a crossfire is too potent, too powerful, and it is just that hammer strike one after another. Surely Alvi's got the clutch. Yeah, he hears the timing for it. Two years. Gambled incorrectly. DRX are not done yet. Amaka will not be denied that fifth map. Letting loose, drop to his knees. Reposition is not there. And now have done it. And it's such a bitter feeling for DRX once more, reliving the nightmares, reliving the history books. They will be exiting much sooner than they hoped. We started with 32 teams, and after today, we will be down to only two. Fnatic on one side, Na'Vi on the other. Only one gets to make the trip to the finals tomorrow to challenge Loud for that international title. The flash, the dark. He's in the cubby, though. He's in the cubby, and he's patient. Oh, oh no. dear. Oh, that's OK. They saved the day. They saved the round. That could have been disaster. Let's get freaky. <laughs> Chronicle with two massive ones. He drops down, and he gets a third. Nice. Poster immediately up on his feet. Asking the crowd to start thinking about sending Navi home. Ciao. No crash, bro. Come on. Bro, I'm trying. What do Navi do here? Actually, that's the thing about this Fnatic roster right now, man, is that you think, all right, how do Navi respond? Fnatic don't even give him a chance to consider the approach. <laughs> Valorant has shown us that many aspire, but few attain. And the pursuit of greatness persists for Fnatic. Navi, they looked like the best team in the tournament. But Fnatic say, hell no. We're about to reveal a brand new agent. So without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce Gecko. I got Doug. <laughs> I got the, the guest casters here. I got, I got Bala. How you guys doing, man? Good, man. I'm glad we're your guests. Thank you for inviting yeah, us. Thank you for letting us join you on this desk. The best of the best only. <laughs> so now here, they're, they're protecting Wingman with a couple things. Smoke yeah. here. Dizzy to kind of protect the planet. Yeah. Here it is. He did it! Let's go! Oh, oh, oh. Paul's got some room, though. Paul's got some room. Here we go. Uh-oh. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, there you go. That was so awesome. That was so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was a warm-up. It was a good warm-up. It was an appetizer. Loud looking for the back-to-back. -back. Fnatic with a second chance. It all comes down to this. Three map wins stand between our teams and being crowned king here on the stage. No util in his hand. Down to two years. Has to stick it. It's the percentage play, but the running gun forwards. Incredible stuff there from Leo from Chronicle. Fnatic off to a fantastic lead. Chronicle, this angle is so goddamn cheeky. Stumbling, crumbling, faltering. And that is just brutal. Second map claimed here in his grand finals. Alfie is there. Less strikes back. And will he get the fourth? Yes, indeed. Loud proving that they've still got what it takes to stand toe to toe. The greatest in the scene here in the grand finals. He's holding the ground. He's a stalwart defender. Gonna repush. No more time. Backs away. And that's loud once more. Outstanding stuff for Loud to bring it all the way. Has to be used to contain, has to be used to shut down, and it's all slam dunk. Noise everywhere, the double swing! Spray down! Let's go! Let's go! And the fight is over. 14 12, denying the reverse sweep. Fnatic, they pull off the impossible. It's been 643 days since that loss to Sentinels. 68 matches, their fifth global LAN. And finally, Boaster and Durka can put their hands on a trophy.